Long Road to Friendship, Chapter 1, Penance Sunset Shimmer fell. She didn't know how long she had been falling, nor did she care. She was too lost in her own thoughts to pay much attention to it. Had she taken things too far? Kidnapping a dog, brainwashing the students of Canterlot High, attempted murder. Part of her wanted to say yes, she had gone too far with that last one. She wasn't a murderer. She had also said she wasn't a monster, but the demon she had been just moments before proved otherwise. Did she feel any regret for her actions? <laughs> Why should she? The crown should have been hers in the first place. She should have ruled Equestria. She should have been a princess, not perfect twilight sparkle. Besides, she, Sunset Shimmer, had lost, hadn't she? Why should she feel any regret? The only thing she regretted was losing. Sunset wanted to scream, it wasn't fair, it wasn't fair! She had taken the element of magic and wielded its tremendous power. Yes, she had turned into a demon, a part that still unnerved her when she thought about it and the pain she had endured during her transformation, but she had gained ultimate power. And she had still managed to lose, beaten by Twilight Sparkle and her miserable friends and shot down by the elements of harmony. Now she was falling through a white limbo. It was bright and surprisingly warm, and around her she could hear almost a heavenly hum, like the most talented singer in existence was warming up their voice. Hearing it strengthened the small piece of regret sitting deep in her heart. Had she been wrong? Was there really some worth behind friendship? Some unknown majesty she couldn't see? <laughs> Nonsense. Who needed friends when you could have power? <sighs> Sunset finally hit something solid, but could see nothing beyond the radiant light. It was as if the light itself had solidified and become an invisible floor beneath her. Uh, hello? Sunset called. It echoed around her, and Sunset clenched her fists at how feeble it sounded. It faded away, and Sunset was left alone in the ominous humming. She had no idea where she was, but she was getting a horrible feeling that she could very well be dead. Can the elements do that? Can they kill someone, she thought. As the humming grew louder, the memories of cruel words spoken and actions taken began to drift through Sunset's mind, making her heart heavy with, un with unwanted regret. Amidst the hum, she thought she could hear a faint beating noise, like a drum. Realizing the drum beat was getting closer, Sunset spun around and nearly screamed at what she saw. In front of her was a black and feeble heart. Not the kind that beat in her chest and kept her alive, but the one so often used to symbolize love. It pulsed at such a slow rate, Sunset thought it might stop at any moment. Red cracks ran across the surface, looking like rivers of magma across an ash-covered field. It was one of the ugliest things Sunset had ever seen. And it is yours. A voice, or rather several voices, said. They surrounded the sunset from every angle and sounded like a heavenly choir. She now knew the source of the humming. What do you mean it's mine? Sunset asked warily. Sunset's shimmer, we have seen your heart, and this is it. You've rejected friendship for so long and instead held on, held on to hate. You've been cruel, arrogant, selfish, and power-hungry. This is what your heart has turned into. Sunset took a step back from the blackened heart. S so <clears throat> She cleared her throat, trying to hang on to her false bravado. But standing in front of her heart, even that was fading. I don't need friendship. I've gotten by on my own. Sunset Shimmer, your rejection of friendship and drive for power has nearly destroyed the balance of two worlds. Do you honestly feel nothing? I... Sunset crossed her arms and turned her nose up, ignoring the tears forming at the corner of her eyes. Why should I? I lost, didn't I? What does it matter what I feel? She uncrossed her arms and pointed into the air. And who are you to judge me anyway? In essence, we are the spirits of the elements of harmony. We have every right to judge you, Sunset Shimmer. You who abused the element of magic and threatened a coup of Equestria. Sunset swallowed a lump in her throat. That's where she was, some limbo where the elements could put her on trial. She, d she dug her nails into her palm to stop herself from shaking. All right, so maybe I stepped out of line a bit. What are you going to do with me? 
Your heart is one of the bleakest we have ever seen, and you show little remorse for your actions. Even more so, you continue to reject friendship. Well, what do I need friends for anyway? Sunset shouted. They've never done anything for me. They don't serve any purpose. The only thing they're good for is when I need something from them. There was a drawn-out moment of silence before the voices spoke again. Very well, Sunset Shimmer. If that is how you feel, then our punishment stands as thus. Sunset yelped and grabbed the sides of her head as every memory of her acts of cruelty came flooding in at once. Every time she had used someone, every time she had abused someone, all of her cruel deeds and betrayals came rushing in at once, bringing her to her knees. An image of the demon she had become flashed between each memory, burning itself into the back of her eyelids. She fell onto the unseen floor and began to sob, the pain she had caused so many crushing her black heart into dust. In between the noise of the memories and her sobbing, Sunset could barely hear the spirits speaking. You shall live with our penance until the last shard of hatred leaves your heart and you learn to truly accept friendship with no thought of self-gain. Until you can learn to love others above yourself, you shall be at their whim and mercy, aiding them whenever they ask for it and telling them only the truth. The words sounded distant in Sunset's ears, fading away, just like the light they had previously surrounded her. She found herself no longer in the realm of elements. Instead, she was laying face first in the dirt, her clothes tattered and her body covered in scratches and bruises. Raising her head, she saw she had ended up in a large crater. Twilight sparkle stood over her on the edge, looking more disappointed than angry. You will never rule Equestria. Any power you may have had in this world is gone. Tonight, you've shown everyone who you really are, You've shown them what is in your heart. Sunset began climbing out of the hole, her stomach rebelling at the sudden movement. Perhaps it was another after-effect of being hit with the elements of harmony. She collapsed at Twilight's feet, vision blurred by tears. She had never felt so horrible in her entire life. Being forced to relive her past actions had left Sunset with one feeling she thought she would never experience. Remorse. I I'm sorry, she cried. I'm so sorry, I didn't know there was another way! The magic of friendship doesn't just exist in Equestria. It's everywhere. You can seek it out. Twilight sighed and turned away. Or you can forever be alone. The choice is yours. But, but all I've ever done since being here is drive everyone apart. I don't know the first thing about friendship. Twilight knelt down and took Sunset's hand, helping her out of the hole and to her feet. She pointed at the five girls standing off to the side. I bet they can teach you. Applejack, Rarity, Pinkie Pie, Fluttershy, and Rainbow Dash all gave her various degrees of smiles, with Pinkies being the largest. Really? They want to be my friends after everything I've done? She didn't get a chance to ask Twilight. Everyone had moved along to watch Principal Celestia return the element of magic to Twilight before they all went back to the gym to finish their dance, leaving Sunset alone. Even snips and snails seemed to have vanished. Skirting around the crater, Sunset made her way to the demolished entrance of the school building. Part of her was amazed she'd been able to do that. She hadn't casted magic like that since she had been a, been a pony. She leaned against the crumbling stones and sighed. What was she supposed to do now? She looked up at the statue that had secretly housed the portal to Equestria. She could run away, escape back home and live out her life in, in exile there. No. If she went back, she would chance facing Celestia's wrath. Sunset had completely disobeyed her by jumping through the mirror, not to mention stealing Twilight's crown. There was nothing left for her there. But there wasn't much left here, either. Behind her, she could hear the steady beats of the music vinyl scratch blasted out of her stereo system. She could hear the students laughing and talking and enjoying their fall formal. I almost robbed them of that just to further my own plans. Sunset groaned and pressed her head against the concrete. Now she knew why she never felt regret before. It was the worst feeling in the world! From one of the hallways came footsteps and the sound of squeaking wheels. Sunset turned and saw Vice Principal Luna escorting snips and snails. They pushed a wheelbarrow filled with bricks, mortar, and push brooms in front of them. Luna stopped and handed Sunset a spade. Well, Miss Shimmer, it looks like you have a long night ahead of you. Sunset gaped at her. You can't seriously expect me to fill all of this. Luna just waved the spade in front of her. 
Sunset snatched it and growled. Her feelings of regret were slowly eroded away by feelings of annoyance and anger. She watched Luna walk pat bleh. She watched Luna walk back towards the gymnasium while snips and snails began to sweep the steps clean of rubble. <sighs> Trading the spade for the third push broom, Sunset began to sweep as well, deciding to do the easy work first. She had only been working for a few minutes when the sound of giggling reached her. Twilight Sparkle and her five friends filed out of the gym and headed for the statue. They stopped at the base to trade hugs and exchange one last goodbye. <sighs> this is my last chance, Sunset looked at the pale moon. I could run in after her, or... When she looked back, Twilight and her dog Spike had already slipped through the granite surface of the statue, making their transition back to Equestria. Pinky ran to try and catch up, but she was met with a solid surface instead. The portal was closed. Oh, bummer! Pinky pouted. Sunset shared in some of Pinky's disappointment. Part of her had wanted to go home. Now she was stuck here for the, at least another thirty moons. Well, I must say that was certainly an experience, Sunset heard Rarity say. Yeah, I reckon something like that was once in a lifetime, Applejack said. Do you think we'll ever see her again? Fluttershy asked. Applejack put a hand on Fluttershy's shoulder. Don't worry, Sugar Cube. I'm sure some day she'll come back and visit. If not, we could always go looking for Twilight Sparkle from this world, Pinky said, bouncing on her toes. Rarity ran a hand through her purple, ro purple royal locks. Well, maybe that's not such a good idea. We can't go looking for her and expect her to be exactly the same. That would be like we're trying to replace her. Pinky stood still and said in a downcast voice, Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. That would be kind of mean. But hey, if we run into Twilight Sparkle, we can still try and be her friend, Applejack reassured. We should just let her come to us. Though, if it's meant to be, it'll happen on its own. There was a long pause before Rainbow Dash said, So, what should we do about Sunset Shimmer? Well, Applejack said slowly, We did promise to try and help her, and I don't go back on my promises. Rarity nodded. Rarity nodded. Neither do I, but I can't just pretend none of the things she did to us ever happened. I need some time to settle my feelings, especially after tonight. Rarity is right. I don't want to try and be her friend, but... I, Rarity is right, I want to try and be her friend, but she still scares me, Fluttershy mumbled. Well, I guess it's a good thing school's canceled next week, seeing they've got some construction to do. Gives us all a little time to settle down, Applejack said. Aw, oh, yeah, Rainbow cheered. No school for a whole week! Who's down to hang? Oh, oh, me! Pinky frankly wh fr bleh, bleh. Pinky frantically, frantically waved her hand in front of Rainbow's face. We can hang out just like we used to! It'll be so much fun! Sunset watched them walk away, their voices growing fainter as they disappeared into the dark. She leaned against her broom, mulling over her thoughts. They were really going to try and make friends with her? Sunset wasn't sure if they were admirable or just stupid. <laughs> she gripped her broom tighter as her feelings of regret finally died away. Her old feelings of contempt and superiority returned. Who said she wanted to be friends with them anyway? It was their fault she was in this situation. If they hadn't inter interfered, she'd be in Equestria right now. And besides, they didn't actually want to be her friend. They were just doing a favor for Twilight Sparkle. <sighs> Twilight Sparkle. Since it squeezed the broom so hard, her knuckles turned white. In the end, it all came down to her, Little Miss Perfect Princess, taking the crown that should have been Sunset's in the first place and leaving her behind in this world to rot. <sighs> Sunset hated her. With every fiber of her being, Sunset hated her. Hey, Sunset! Snip's voice dragged Sunset out of her thoughts. Could you stop standing there and help us? This is gonna take all night. Sunset was about to deliver a sharp retort when she felt a jolt like lightning run down her spine. Almost as if acting on their own, her arms began to move the broom, resuming her sweep up of the rubble. That was... weird. Sunset shrugged it off and continued working. Snips was right. This would take all night. Chapter 2 Chance Meeting Sunset Shimmer was grateful Vice Principal Luna had been half-joking about the reconstruction of the school's front wall and the large crater in the ground. While she, Snips and Snails, were forced to work until well after the dance was over, 
Luna and Celestia had claimed that professional manpower would be needed to fix everything, and the three had been allowed to go. Of course, Sunset now had to spend the next week helping the construction workers repair the wall. Her punishment also included a month of detention and academic probation. That last one didn't worry Sunset at all, as she only received A's in all her classes. Snips and Snails, on the other hand? Well, she hoped they knew a good tutor. Sunset now trudged her way back to her home. Celestia had offered her a ride, but Sunset had refused, wanting to brood over her failure, and because she couldn't let Celestia know where she really lived. The night air was cool, the autumn wind caressing Sunset's face as she moved against it. The drafts would occasionally pick up and make Sunset shiver in want of a pair of pants instead of her skirt. Her legs were tired, as was the rest of her body, as a result of getting blasted by pure magic. She was beginning to regret not taking the ride she had been offered. Since her own ride was at the shop, she had no method of transportation. She had only gotten to the dance thanks to Snail's mom dropping them off. Sunset sighed. Snips and Snails had given her the cold shoulder the entire night. She guessed turning them into demons only to have them change back and punished alongside with her had crossed some sort of line. She had lost her two stooges. Oh well, I can find more. Sunset frowned. No, she couldn't. No one would have the right mind to do anything for her after tonight. She wouldn't be able to get enough dirt on anyone in school to compare to what she had done. Even if she could, what purpose would it serve? In two days, Twilight Spark led single-handedly stormed the school, united the students, and shown them all they had one common enemy. Sunset Shimmer. She had been dethroned in less than a week, her dictatorship completely crushed and replaced by the magic of friendship. Sunset's nails bit into her palm. Whatever feelings the elements of harmony had forced her to feel were gone now, replaced by a cold resentment and the bitter sting of defeat. She almost had everything. Now she had absolutely nothing. Something wet snaked down her cheek, and she wiped it away with the back of her hand. This is no time for a pity party. I already broke down in front of the whole school, which I will never live down, so no more crying. It's time to plan. There has to be some way for me to get back on top. Sunset stopped and leaned against a light post. She felt cold and exhausted, and judging by the area she was in, she was only a little over halfway home. Who am I kidding? I can't do anything here. The only thing I can do is wait for the portal to open and go back to Equestria. Maybe there I can try to find something that'll help me get back at Twilight Sparkle. She thought the idea of getting revenge on her mortal enemy would cheer her up. Instead, it only left a bitter taste in her mouth and her stomach churning. She pushed herself off the pole and kept walking. I need a bath and a long nap. She examined her favorite leather jacket and groaned. It had been horribly scuffed up and torn in a few places. She made a mental note to buy a new one. Since it pulled her phone out of her jacket pocket and checked the time, reading just after midnight. Putting it away, she, looked a cl she took a closer look at her surroundings. She had left behind the nicer neighborhoods and slew off family-owned businesses, and was nearing one of the seedier parts of Canterlot City. Old, dirty shops lined the streets along with ridiculous amounts of trash and cigarette butts. Taking a shortcut through an abandoned playground, Sunset heard a loud scream tear through the night. She stopped and stared into the darkness, the only light source coming from a dying lamppost across the street. A girl quickly ran into view, and time slowed to a crawl while Sunset stared at her mouth agape. She was wearing a simple navy blue shirt and jeans with purple boots and a matching jacket. A, famili a familiar starburst was stitched in the corner, a starburst that made Sunset's eye twitch with fury. Twilight's sparkle ran down the street, fear written on her face as she screamed, Help! Someone please help me! Close behind her, two shady men chased after her, whistling and prompted to do things that made Sunset's skin crawl. A jolt ran down her spine, and Sunset found herself chasing after the three of them. What the... the hell am I doing? She tried to stop, but found that she was almost in no control of her motor functions. She sprinted after the men, following them around the corner and into a wide alley, where they had Twilight qu cornered against the back wall. Don't worry, sweetie, we promise to go easy on ya, one of them snickered. Sunset scooped up a rock and threw it at them, hitting one square in the head. Hey, grease balls! Why don't you pick on someone your own size? They spun around, both of them with greasy black hair and pale skin. Piercings lined their mouths and eyebrows. 
One of them was pretty thin, trying to hide it with his baggy jacket. The other man looked like he had actually had some muscle. Hey, girl, are you trying to pick a fight with one us? The muscular one asked. Because it looks like you already lost one. Both of them laughed. Hey, she's kind of cute, though, the skinny one observed. How about one for each of us? Sunset settled into a fighting stance, putting her arms up in front of her. She still wasn't sure why she was doing this. It was like an unknown force had taken control of her action and forced her to come to Twilight's aid. Still, if it meant she got to beat two losers up and vent some frustration, she was all for it. How about you both forget her and come take me on, Sunset said coolly. Seriously, kid, you want to fight us? The skinny one asked. That would imply you two being e an even match for me. I'm just going to beat you into the ground. All right, you asked for it. The skinny one pulled out a switchblade and charged at Sunset, who sidestepped and ducked out of the way to avoid his wide swing. She then brought her fist upwards in a powerful uppercut, catching him in the draw. Before he could stumble back, Sunset grabbed him by his arm and twisted his wrist, forcing him to drop the knife. She spun around and closed the distance between them, planting her feet firmly into the ground before lifting with all her might and flipping the gangster over her shoulder. He landed hard against the cement, groaning in pain and holding his bleeding mouth. Sunset turned and gestured with her hand to the remaining goon, who had watched with open-mouthed open fascination. It quickly turned into rage, and he barreled at Sunset with only his fists. Sunset jumped back, dodging the first wing and catching the second one with the back of her wrist, knocking it away. She followed up by delivering a boot to his stomach, pushing him back some ways. He recovered and charged again like a raging bull, aiming a fist for Sunset's face. Sunset planted her feet again, grabbed it with both hands, and before the goon could catch her with his other fist, Sunset gave a sharp twist, elicit eliciting a horrible crack from within his arm and drawing a cry of pain from the man. She released him and turned her body to the side, putting her hands together and bringing her elbow against his chest. The gangster wheezed and dropped to his knees before falling flat on his face, groaning in pain like his partner. Wiping her hands on her skirt, Sunset stepped over the man's body, exited the alley, casting one last glare back at Twilight, who was still huddled against the wall. <laughs> Sunset rolled her eyes and turned the corner, continuing down the road like nothing had happened. Eh, that was fun, I guess. Got a little anger out, at least. Wait! Twilight's voice called after her, dampening Sunset's mood again. Sunset ignored her and picked up the pace. Where are you going? Twilight shouted to her, having finally left the alley. Home, Sunset said automatically. Wait, please come back for a second. Sunset immediately stopped and did an about face, her legs betraying her desire to walk away. What the heck is going on? She found herself marching back and stopping in front of Twilight, who, Sunset noticed, was a few inches shorter than the other Twilight. What? Sunset growled. Well, um, I just... Twilight wrung her hands, looking embarrassed. Why did you save me? She finally asked. Sunset shrugged. I don't know. Oh! Twilight moved her hands behind her back. Well, it was pretty cool to watch. I'm so glad you enjoyed the show. With that, Sunset was finally able to pull herself away from the purple-held nuisance and resumed her trek home. Wait! Twilight jogged to catch up to Sunset's fast pace. Can I at least know your name, please? Sunset Shimmer. Sunset responded before she could even think about it. Why would I tell her my name? Whatever. Not like it matters. Well, Sunset Shimmer, I'm pretty sure you saved my life. whoop de doo for me, Sunset said, twirling a finger in the air. Twilight cocked her head. You don't sound too happy about it. Oh no, trust me, I'm absolutely thrilled. <sighs> Twilight sighed. Anyway, I just wanted to say... Sunset rolled around and jabbed a finger at her. Listen, Twilight, I don't care. How do you know my name? Because I already know who you are. Sunset clapped a hand over her mouth, her eyes wide with realization. Smooth move, Sunset. You, you know who I am? Sunset's hand flew from her mouth. Well, technically, I know the other you that came from the mirror, so I know you by proxy. She slapped both hands over her mouth this time. Something is wrong. Something is very, very wrong. Twilight was looking absolutely mystified. Mirror? What are you talking about? Sunset tried her hardest not to say anything, to just keep silent and keep walking, but it was like a force similar to the one that made her chase after Twilight's assailant was now making her speak words she would have normally never said. 
The mirror that leads to Equestria only opens every thirty moons, she blurted before covering her mouth again. Twilight, now looking concerned, took a few sips back. Are you okay? No, I'm not okay! Sunset yelled. Okay! Twilight held her hands up. Please, just take a deep breath! Sunset found she didn't have a choice in the matter, her lungs and mouth operating on their own accord. She took in a long, steady breath and exhaled slowly. Feeling better? No! If anything, Sunset felt even more unnerved now. These actions, these responses, they weren't done by choice. As Twilight opened her mouth again, Sunset flew forward and covered it. Stop it! No more questions! Just stop talking! Listen to me, it doesn't matter how I know you, okay? Yes, I saved your life, but it doesn't mean anything. Just go home and pretend this never happened and never, ever talk to me again. Not waiting for a response, Sunset broke into a run, getting away from Twilight as fast as she could. Luckily, Twilight did not call after her. What the hell was that? Why would I say any of that to her? Why would I do any of that for her? Okay, fine, maybe I would have stopped those thugs without whatever that was making me do it. <laughs> not even Twilight. Sparkle deserves what they wanted to do to her. Ugh, why is she even around here anyway? Sunset didn't stop running until she was almost home. Her lungs burned and her legs and feet ached horribly. She stopped and doubled over, panting for breath. <sighs> D damn it! <sighs> that stupid girl! <sighs> it's like the universe is content to torture me with her. <sighs> Standing up straight, she took a deep breath and walked the last leg of her journey. She was now on the edge of the industrial district of Canterlot's eastern side. Most were run-down buildings signed for demolitions, but the city had never gotten around to actually doing it. Sunset slipped down a narrow alley and stopped at a blue door built into the side of one of the abandoned factories. She twisted the knob and gave the door a heavy shove with her shoulder, unsticking it and granting her access. She reached for the light switch she knew was on the wall next to her, and a series of dim bulbs sprung to life, illuminating the black and white checkered hallway. After closing the door tight behind her, Sunset made her way down the hall, turning at the first set of staircases to her left. At the top of the door, with employees only scratched to it, and just beyond, was Sunset's room, or what had previously been the foreman's office. She stepped inside and flicked another switch, awakening the single naked bulb that hung from the middle of the ceiling. The room had been modified to resemble something closer to a bedroom. An old wardrobe sat in, a co in the corner closest to the door, and a cracked full-body-sized mirror leaned against the wall next to it. Her bed, or mattress, really, was tucked into the opposite corner. The wall right across from her was mostly a glass screen that looked down at the manufacturing plant, which had long since been emptied, leaving just a large, vacant room. Sunset had kept the foreman's desk that had been left over, leaving it in its spot in front of the glass. A small window was placed on the adjacent wall, just big enough to let sun sunlight through in the early morning. Sunset hadn't bothered to decorate her room with much of anything else. The only thing that gave the room a touch of personality were the previous crowns she had worn from past dances. They sat on her desk, neatly arranged in an orderly fashion. The spring fling crown she had won in her freshman year when she had pretended she was a second semester transfer student, followed by the sophomore and junior year editions. Then came the two winter ball crowns and the two fall formal crowns, leaving a space for the crown she should have won tonight. Exhausted, Sunset fell onto her bed, too tired to think about crowns or her lack thereof. She wanted to know why she had intervened for Twilight like she did. It was like she had no control over her body and was made to do someone else's will. It had to be magic. <sighs> she let out a loud yawn, her eyes growing heavy. But what kind of magic could do something like that? Her eyes fluttered close as sleep began to overtake her. Before it could claim her properly, her eyes snapped open and she, sought up, she shot up into a sitting position, a faint harmonic voice playing in her head. Until you can learn to love others above yourself, you shall be at their whim and mercy, aiding them whenever they ask for it, and telling them only the truth. Sunset's eyes contracted to pinpoints as the words were played in her head, a lump of cold dread settled in, like a rock in her stomach. Oh no... Sunset was surprised at the amount of sleep she had gotten last night. Pulling out her phone from her discarded jacket, she checked the time as well past one in the afternoon. 
She rubbed the sleep out of her eyes and moved herself to a sitting position, noticing she had fallen asleep in the clothes she had worn yesterday, save for her leather jacket which was laid at the foot of her bed. She sat in the dimness of her room, light weakly falling in from the window above her. The only other source of light came from the high windows on the manufacturing floor, but like Sunset's personal window, they were small and let in meager amounts of sun. Sighing, Sunset fell back against her pillow, her arms splayed out at her sides. The events of last night played in her head like a movie. A really bad movie, at least from her perspective. Sunset rolled onto her side, drawing her blanket closer to her neck. She thought she would be up all night dreading over what the elements had done to her. Instead, she had instantly clocked out. She guessed her overly exhausted body overrode her mental fears. Now that she was awake, she had all the time in the world to worry over her new predicament. Oh, with a loud groan, Sunset forced herself out of bed, steadying herself against the wall as the world spun for a moment. After she had regained her bearing, she dragged herself over to her wardrobe and flung it open, grabbing some undergarments and a pair of pajamas. Today was Saturday, meaning Sunset had no obligations whatsoever! With her change of clothes in hand, Sunset tracked down the stairs and further down the checkered hallway. Fortunately, the factory she had picked as her home came with a small worker's quarters that included a kitchen and a bathroom with a working shower. Unfortunately for her, the, sh the water was always cold. Stepping into the small bathroom, Sunset turned the shower handle, starting the spray of cold water. She placed her spare change of clothes on the table next to the sink and undressed herself, dropping her filthy garments unceremoniously unceres onto the floor. <sighs> After taking a few deep breaths, Sunset stepped into the shower, feeling the icy sting of freezing water biting against her bare skin. She instantly began to shiver and hugged her chest out of instinct, trying to keep some of her body heat. Cold, 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 she said through chattering teeth, feeling goosebumps coat her entire body. She decided to make the unpleasant experience as quick as possible. She grabbed the bar of soap sitting in its dish and furiously began scrubbing at the dirt that covered her hair, easing up around the bruises she had received. When she finished, she took the bottle of shampoo and squeezed a giant glob out of it, making quick work of washing her hair. When all the soap, set had soap suds had vanished down the drain, Sunset shut off the shower and hopped out onto the mat. Snatching her towel off the rack and racking it around her body, she was still shivering, but the fluffy towel was helping to restore warmth to her body. When was the last time I took a hot shower? She couldn't remember. Perhaps it hadn't been since she left Equestria. She frowned, hoping it really hadn't been that long. Securing the towel around herself, Sunset stepped over to the sink and opened the pantry behind the mirror, pulling out her toothbrush and toothpaste. Her body went into autopilot as she went through the mundane task of brushing her teeth. All right, what do I do now? The question from last night pushed itself to the front of her mind. What could she do now? She was trapped in a foreign world, forced to go to a school where she was hated by everyone. And now the feeling was mutual. Simply put, she was banished. Oh, but wait, there's more. Now I'm cursed. She spat into the sink and glared at her reflection, which only glared back. So, the only reason I helped Twilight Sparkle was because she asked me to help her, which is also why I said all of those things to her. So, if I've got this straight, anytime someone asks me to do something, I have to do it, and if they ask me a question, I have to answer it. She resumed brushing her teeth at furious speeds, ignoring the pain she was inflicting on her gums. That's just great! Fan-freaking-tastic! So this is my penance, is it? Yeah, that's real harmonious of you elements! Force me to help someone when they ask for it! <sighs> she spat again, scowling before a grin split her face. Wait, <laughs> who in their right mind is going to ask anything from me? No one at the school even likes me! Ha! <laughs> After rinsing her mouth, Sunset finished drying off and slipped into her warm pajamas. Exiting the bathroom, she walked across the hall to the kitchen to fill her growling stomach. On the other hand, she opened the refrigerator door and grabbed the carton of milk. I might have to live with this for the rest of my life, or at least until I love someone more than myself, or something stupid like that. She frowned again, no longer feeling so confident. Grabbing a box of cereal and a bowl from the cabinet, Sunset seated herself to a simple breakfast. Hmm, she said in between spoonfuls. I'm probably going to need more food soon. And some new clothes. 
Since her favorite ensemble was trash, Sunset was down one pair of clothes in her already small selection. But buying items was something that required money, something she knew she was running out of. She didn't have Flash Sentry to buy her things anymore, and the savings she had accumulated from bullying the lower classmen out of their lunch money was starting to dwindle. The way things were going, Sunset would be forced to get... Ugh, she gagged on the next word. A job. Ugh, she gave a groan of frustration. She couldn't believe how fast things were going downhill. Finishing her cereal and dumping the bowl in the sink, she made a mental note to wash the growing pile later. She stomped her way back to her room, slamming the door as hard as she could to vent some frustration. There had to be some simple solution that could fix all of her problems. But unless magic suddenly sprung up in this world, Sunset couldn't see it. She took a seat at her desk and pressed the palms of her uh, hands against her eyes. Come on, Sunset, think of something! You've always got a plan! She sat there for hours, scheming ideas and theories, each one more ridiculous and desperate than the last. With each one she discarded, she became more frustrated, shouting and pounding her fist against the wooden desk. She felt like a wild animal caught in a hunter's trap, unable to escape. She had told the spirits residing in the elements of harmony that she knew she had lost. She just didn't know how bad her defeat really was until now. Maybe I should stay in here for the rest of my life. She put her arms up on the desk and rested her head on them, feeling dismayed and hopeless. Even that plan had its flaws. If she didn't show up to school, people would ask questions, and if they asked questions, they would go looking for answers. And if they went looking for answers, they would find things that could get Sunset in trouble with this world's law enforcement. Despite her feelings of resentment, she was glad Celestia had decided not to turn Sunset over to the police for what had happened last night. She wondered how the school was going to spin the events when the reporters came snooping. Closing her eyes, Sunset focused on the heart of the matter. Her penance. There was no way she could go through the rest of her life without people asking things of her. Her run-in with Twilight had been proof of that. Something, 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 until I make friends and care about other pe pe people more than me. Sunset mumbled into her arm. They were really going to force her to play this game. Force her to make friends. She dug her nails into the sleeves of her pajama top. Who says I want any friends? I've gotten by on my own just fine. I don't need friends. I don't need family. I only need myself. Sunday found Sunset at her desk, having sulked there until she had fallen asleep. She groaned, sitting up and rolling out a crick in her neck. Her mood had not improved in the slightest, but she knew she couldn't hide away in a room forever. Why should she cower from the world? She was Sunset Shimmer, former student of Princess Celestia! She wouldn't let a stupid enchantment stop her from realizing greatness. She'd find a way to outsmart or remove the curse, and she would do it without the help of anyone else. Hmm. <clears throat> With her newfound confidence, Sunset got up and selected a pair of casual clothes from her wardrobe. She decided today was as good as any to go shopping. After repeating yesterday's ritual of showering and getting dressed, Sunset grabbed her wallet and stuffed it into her jacket pocket. Finding a suitable replacement for her leather jacket was priority number one. After picking an apple from the kitchen, Sunset headed out the door, slamming it shut behind her. She shielded her eyes from the sudden burst of sunlight that greeted her face upon exiting the slender alley. After taking a moment to adjust, Sunset headed for the nearest bus stop a block away. While she hated public transportation, it beat walking all the way to the other side of town. I can't wait until my motorcycle is fixed, Sunset said under her breath. She finished her apple and tossed the core into a nearby yard. Eh, it'll decompose eventually, she thought. There was only one other man upon Sunset's arrival at the bus stop. He had a nice suit on and was holding a briefcase in one hand. <laughs> Sunset snickered to herself, still feeling sorry for the saps that had to work on Sunday. Oh, uh, excuse me, miss? The man addressed Sunset as she drew near. Could you tell me the time? Sunset wanted to tell him to invest in a watch instead, but found her hand reaching into her pocket to grab her phone. It's 12.23, she said, trying to keep the snark out of her voice. And do you know how often the bus comes through here? About every 15 minutes. The man smiled. Thanks, you've been a big help. Sunset grunted and turned away. It had only been two days, and she was already thoroughly annoyed by her curse. Oh, come on, he just wanted to know the time, a small voice said. Sunset rolled her eyes in response. It's a beautiful day out, isn't it? The man continued. 
Sunset looked up at the clear blue sky. A calm wind tousled her hair. Yeah, it is, she said softly. She couldn't have been more relieved when the bus arrived a minute later. She paid her fare and picked a seat near the back, getting as far away from the man and the rest of the scattered passengers on board as possible. Lucky for her, the bus ride passed without incident. Thirty minutes later, she was on Canterlot's nicer side, disembarking in front of the Canterlot Mall. It was a large monstrosity of a thing, with its front being made mostly of polished glass, giving it the nickname the Crystal Mall. Though it was only two stories high, bleh, though it was only two story, bleh, bleh, though it was only two stories high, it could fill the space of two football stadiums. She crossed through the large sliding doors and pulled out her list of things to buy, seeing leather jacket at the top. Having been here several times prior, Sunset knew exactly where to buy one. She stepped across the glittering tiled floors, heading for the cl closest escalator. Despite the flaws of this world, Sunset had been greatly impressed by the technology here. She had been blown away by the concept of moving stairs upon seeing them the first time. Why didn't Equestria have something like that? Or leather jackets! Groups of teens and families moved about the hall, enjoying their weekend outing and filling the place with echoes of talk and laughter. To Sunset, it was almost infectious. Almost. She found the store she had been looking for after a few minutes of walking and stepped inside, a wide grin on her face. Afternoon, the store clerk said with a cheery disposition, until she saw who it was that walked through the door. Her, her face instantly fell. Oh, it's you, Sunset. Sunset paused and looked at the pale blue girl across the counter. A bright pink bow sat in her aqua-colored hair. It took a moment, but Sunset finally recalled the girl's name. Good afternoon, Flitter, she said coolly, approaching the counter with a smirk. With a smirk. I didn't know you worked here. Yeah, well, unlike some people, I have to work for the things I want. Oh, boo-hoo, life is just so hard and unfair. Sunset couldn't resist taunting her. Old habits seem to die hard. For your information, I have worked for the things I wanted. Flitter narrowed her eyes. No, you haven't. You've lied, cheated, and blackmailed. And that isn't work? Flitter grumbled a few unkind words to herself before readdressing Sunset with as much contempt as she could muster. What do you want? A leather jacket. Sunset wasn't sure whether she said it or if it was the elements making her. Flitter pointed to the back corner where a, rack of, uh, where a small rack of black and brown jackets sat. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to help you, she said, her voice heavy with sarcasm. Sunset smiled and made her way over to the rack. She picked out a large, large brown one and pretended to examine it closely. Hmm, no. She dropped it to the floor and moved down the row, picking out another one. Mm, no, she said, tossing it on top of the previous one. From the corner of her eye, she saw Flitter grind her teeth together. Sunset, continuing her mischief until she pulled out a jacket she actually liked, it looked exactly like the one she was wearing, only had a longer trim and silver-pointed spikes along the cuffs. Oh, yes, you'll make a great replacement! She took the jacket over and laid it on the counter in front of Flitter, who let out a long sigh. <sighs> Will that be all, ma'am? Yes. Flitter clicked a few buttons on the cash register before taking the scanner and scanning the tag on the jacket. Her face brightened up when she spoke. Her original cheeriness had returned. That'll be $322, please! <coughs> Sunset nearly choked. What? You've gotta be kidding me! It didn't cost that much last time! Well, Flitter explained with a large smile, leather happens to be very in season right now, and this particular jacket is imported. She leaned in towards Sunset and added it in an overjoyed whisper. From France. It was Sunset's turn to grit her teeth. I don't have three hundred bucks. Hmm. Flitter shrugged, taking the jacket and moving towards the mess Sunset had made. Too bad. No money, no jacket. Maybe you should come join us commoners in the working world and, oh, I don't know, actually work for it? Sunset opened her mouth, but Flitter beat her to it. Oh, and if you threaten me, I will call security. Mm. With a stomp and a clench of her fist, Sunset marched out of the store, swearing profusely. Stupid flitter. Three hundred dollars. Just a jacket. A really nice jacket. Where the hell am I supposed to get three hundred extra dollars to pay for that? <sighs> Keeping her head down and muttering darkly to herself, Sunset didn't see where she was going and smacked straight into another person, sending them to the floor. Sunset glared down at them. Why don't you watch where you're going? Ah, ah, Twilight Sparkle! Twilight got up and dusted herself off, giving Sunset a curious stare. Sunset Shimmer? 
What are you doing here? And why did you bump into me? Instead of a scathing retort, Sunset said, I was here trying to buy a, a new jacket along with a few other things, but I found out the jacket I wanted was too expensive and I got mad and wasn't looking where I was going. Ugh, she face palmed. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sorry about the jacket, Twilight said sincerely. Maybe you can ask for it for Christmas? I don't have anyone to ask for anything for Christmas. Sunset crossed her arms and looked away. You don't? No, I don't, and I like it that way. Sunset snapped her head back at Twilight and held up a hand. Wait a minute, do you not remember what I told you two nights ago? Twilight rubbed a hand against the back of her neck. Her expression caught between guilty and sad. To not talk to you? Yes. And what are you doing right now? Well, technically, you bumped into me and initiated the conversation. She fell silent on, at the look on Sunset's face. Sunset was enjoying this dominion over Twilight. She only wished it had been this easy to put down the other one. I'll say it again. Leave me alone! She turned on her heel and started to storm off. Can I at least say thank you? Sunset stopped and looked over her shoulder. For what? Twilight clasped her hands behind her back and nervously kicked at the floor, a move that reminded Sunset of Fluttershy. For saving my life, I never got a chance to say thanks. Yeah, well... Sunset found she couldn't think of a good comeback and instead just said, You're welcome. She turned to walk away again, but Twilight's voice stopped her. What were you talking about Friday night? About the mirror to Equestria, was it? And something about another me? It's none of your business! Sunset snapped. Ha! Technically that's true! None of that is any of her business! Twilight put her hands on her hips and scowled. Why isn't it? You said there was another Twilight Sparkle! Sunset found herself forced to answer. Uh, forced her, bleh, Sunset found herself forced to turn around and answer. Yes, there's another Twilight Sparkle, but you'll never meet her, so it doesn't matter. With frustrated growls, Sunset broke into a run, pushing past other mall goers in her attempt to flee. Wait, come back here! You owe me an explanation. I owe you nothing. Ignoring the stares of everyone she passed, Sunset continued running until she was sure Twilight hadn't followed her. She sopped, catching her breath at a water fountain and taking a long drink, wiping her mouth on her sleeve afterwards. Wait, Sunset looked back at the way she had run. Twilight asked me for an explanation, but I wasn't forced to give her one. Sunset leaned against the wall, pressing a palm against her head. Well, no, she demanded one. Guess that isn't the same as just asking. She gritted her teeth and pounded a fist against the wall. Stupid girl! Stupid curse! Is this how I'm going to spend the rest of my life? Running away from questions? No, it was just Twilight Sparkle she had to avoid. She was the only problem. She was always the problem. Chapter 4, The Canterlot High Five Sunset walked back home from Canterlot High Campus, her arms and legs sore from another day of manual labor. Never so much did she wish she had her magic powers back. Laying concrete and bricks. That's earth pony work, she grumbled. Her hands were filthy and crusted with dried cement matching her clothes. She looked down at the gray splatter that snails had accidentally spilt over her shirt, but Sunset had a feeling it was on purpose. Unfortunately, there had been no witnesses around, so Sunset couldn't threaten to severely hurt him later. She was too tired to do it anyway. For the past four days, Sunset had gotten up early and dragged herself down to the school to help repair the damage she had done. It had occurred to her to simply skip out on her punishment and let the professional constructor construction workers do all the work, but she had decided she was in enough trouble as it were. Besides, if she didn't do this, Celestia might ask her to do something even more unpleasant. Then she'd have no choice. During her work, Sunset had found time to ponder more of the nature of her penance and what exactly triggered it. The first time she had run into the world's twilight sparkle, she had been practically trapped by the constant assault of questions, but when Sunset had met her in the mall, she had been able to escape even though Twilight had demanded a response. She had compiled all of the instanced, instance, she had compiled all of the instances together, adding in all the times one of the workers had asked her for something and concluded that her curse was mostly favor-based. If someone asked for something, she had to comply, but if it was in order, she wasn't obligated, obligated to say yes. Apparently, the word please also triggered it. Sunset, Sunset took small comfort knowing she couldn't be ordered around by technicality, but having to do what others asked of her still stung and aggravated her like a nasty bug bite. One more day, Sunset, just one more day. By tomorrow, all of the repairs would be finished, and school could resume the following Monday. 
Then all Sunset would have to worry about was a month of detention. <sighs> she huffed. It wasn't like she had anything better to do. There was a low rumble from her stomach, and Sunset decided she had a craving for something sweet. She still had some cash after going grocery shopping earlier this week, so she decided to stop by the Sugar Cube Corner pastry shop. She paused and zipped up her jacket, covering the ugly stain on her shirt. People already thought she was a monster. She didn't want them to think she was a dirty street urchin, too. She found the shop, true to its name, sitting on the corner of the Sugar Cube Street. Once she pushed the door open and stepped inside, all the conversation stopped. Sunset recognized almost all the customers as students from the school. They all looked at her with mixtures of surprise, interest, and fear. Or maybe that was anger. Sunset couldn't tell, nor did she particularly care. Sunset quickly grew agitated with the silent pause. What are you all looking at? She demanded, stomping her boot against the floor. The students stared at her for a few more seconds before going back to their conversations, now spoken in hushed tones. She balled her fists and marched over to the counter. It wasn't like her usual haughty and assertive walk. It was a march of shame, further burdened by the judgmental eyes of her peers weighing down on her conscience. How can I help you? Mrs. Cake asked in a rather cool tone. Sunset knew for a fact she wasn't in good graces with the cakes. I'll just have a strawberry cupcake and a scone, Sunset sighed. Mrs. Cake pulled the two objects from their respective trays and placed them in a bag before rigging Sunset up. Sunset paid the amount, and as she turned to leave, her eyes ran over five horribly familiar faces sitting in a booth near the front. Just ignore them, Sunset. Just keep walking. She started a brisk pace towards the door. Hey, Sunset, Applejack called. Could you come here for a sec? Damn it! Sunset felt a jolt run down her spine, and her legs brought her over to the five girls. What? She, sa she asked curtly. Applejack pointed to an empty chair nearby. Sit down with us for a minute. Sunset really didn't want to, but since they were probably going to ask her again, she saved herself the trouble and took a seat. All right, what do you want? Well, uh... <clears throat> Applejack coughed into her hand, looking around at her friends. No one else said anything, so she continued. We just wanted to see how you were doing. Really? Sunset crossed her arms, looking at each of them in turn. She measured her disdain for all of them. Applejack and her annoying southern accent and ridiculous hat. Rainbow Dash, Rainbow Dash glared back at her while she sipped on a smoothie. As much as Sunset hated her, she had to admit she admired Rainbow's guts the occasional time she stood up to her. Fluttershy fiddled with her hair, looking nervous. Spineless coward. Pinkie bounced in her seat, the only one looking excited to be here. Her constant optimistic demeanor and happy-go-lucky attitude made Sunset want to tear her hair out. How can one person be so annoying? Then there was Rarity, the prima donna, wannabe cheerleader who wanted the whole school to look up to her. Sunset would have hated her more if they didn't have that in common. Yes, really, Applejack insisted. Look, I know we've all had our differences in the past, but I was thinking now would be a good time to put them behind us and start fresh. Start fresh. Sunset honestly couldn't believe this was happening. You girls seriously want to be my friends? <laughs> she asked with a laugh. Pinkie Pie nodded her head fervently. Uh-huh! Maybe if you had some friends, you wouldn't be such a meanie! And I mean, come on! You can never have too many friends! Sunset furrowed her brow. These girls must think I'm stupid. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you girls really want to be my friend, or are you just doing this as a favor to Twilight Sparkle? Three of the five faces changed from warm and inviting to looks of guilt. Pinkie Pie still wore her smile and said, BOTH! Flutter Fluttershy sunk into her seat, trying to look as small as possible. Oh, it's not that. Well, it is kind of that, but we kind of do want to be your friends. Well, um... She grew quiet and hid behind her pink cascade of hair. Applejack rubbed the back of her neck. All right, yes, we did make a promise to Twilight, but I honestly want to try and help you, Sunset. Sunset raised a brow at the sincere look in her eyes. These weren't exactly the answers she was expecting. She turned and looked at Rainbow Dash, whose face remained as impassive as when Sunset first approached them. Rainbow caught her eye and said, I'm just doing this as a favor. I still don't like you, and if it weren't for them, I wouldn't have agreed to this. Let me remind you that over the past three years, you've torn our friendship apart, bullied everyone beneath you, humiliated practically everyone in the school at least once. 
Her, grown, her voice had grown more intense as she spoke, and by this point, Rainbow was standing up, her face red with anger. And, oh yeah, let's not forget the best part! You turned into a demon and tried to kill us! The shop went quiet again, all eyes on Rainbow this time as she stood in her seat, breathing like she had just ran a lap around the track at top speed. <sighs> she fell back into the cushion, crossed her arms, and stared out the window. So forgive me if I don't feel like exchanging warm fuzzies with you. That was the answer Sunset had been expecting, though she hated to admit that it stung a bit more than she thought it would have. And what about you, Rarity? Sunset faced the last member who hadn't given, given their opinion. The noise level in the shop had risen back to a low murmur as Rarity sat in quiet contemplation. Her eyes were closed and she held her head in her hand. Well, Sunset Rainbow is right. Ever since you first showed up freshman year, you've been nothing but trouble, slowly getting worse and becoming downright evil as time went by. She opened her eyes and stared right into sunsets with an expression that was neither judgmental nor angry, but seemed to pierce, our, pierce all the same. She continued, You've lied, blackmailed, cheated, stolen, ridiculed, threatened, and hurt everyone around you. You've done nothing for the sake of anyone other than yourself, and last Friday we all saw you for what you truly were. Sunset found herself sliding down in her own seat. Rainbow's words had stung, but the way Rarity delivered them seemed to just cut at her. She didn't yell at them. She didn't yell them. She just laid them out as plain as day. It was almost like listening to the element, the element spirits again. However, Rarity's gaze softened, you also showed great remorse that night. Yes, I made a promise to a friend, but I know that we can't force you to do anything you don't want to. Why not? Rainbow interrupted. She forced everyone else to do things they didn't want to do. <laughs> Applejack smacked her with her hat. Hush, Rainbow, and let Rarity finish. Rarity cleared her throat. <clears throat> as I was saying, if you don't want to be our friend, then fine, that's your decision. But if you honestly meant what you said, that you were sorry you didn't know any other way, then I'm willing to help show you how wonderful it is to make friends instead of driving people apart. Sunset was silent, a turbulent storm of thoughts and feelings rolling through her. Most of them genuinely wanted to be her friends despite what she had done to them in the past, especially Rarity, even after what had happened at the sp spring fling. Did I actually mean it when I said I was sorry? Sorry I failed, yes. But the rest of it? Was that me or just the elements talking? Sunset definitely felt something when Rarity had thrown all of her actions back in her face. Perhaps she really did feel remorse. Sunset scrunched her face. This was going against everything she believed in. She didn't need friends, and she hated everyone at this table. Still... At this point, they were the only ones who would even consider being friends with her. Anyone else would laugh in her face. Then Sunset would have to knock their teeth out. They were the only people who could help her lift the curse set on her. As much as she loathed to admit it, she needed them. Just until the curse is gone. Then I'm back on my own. She raised her head and looked back at their expectant faces. With a deep breath, she said, Fine. I guess I would like... She clenched her teeth and said with a strained voice, I would like to try and be friends. Pinky lunged across the table and tackled Sunset into a tight hug, nearly knocking her to the floor. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so amazing! You can come and hang out with us and we'll have sleepovers and parties and go to the movies and the mall together. It's going to be so much fun, I can't stand it! We can be the counter lot high five! Oh wait, there's six of us now! Mm, oh, oh, I know, we can be the main six! You know, like M-A-N-E! Cause we're the one! Pinky, if you do not let go of me, I will be forced to hurt you. Pinky unwrapped her arms from Sunset and scooted back across the table, looking sheepish. Rarity reached over and patted her shoulder. Baby steps, dear. Baby steps. She smiled back at Sunset. Still, I'm glad you decided to accept our offer. Yeah, well, it's not like I had much of a choice, Sunset muttered, dusting herself off. First rule, don't touch me. It was mostly directed at Pinky and her love of hugs. Pinky slumped in her chair. Aww. Sunset crossed her arms. So, what now? Well, Fluttershy spoke, having lifted herself back up in her seat. She pressed her fingertips together in a nervous manner. Since we're friends, why don't you tell us something about yourself? I'm a magical unicorn from another dimension, and I used to be Prince Celestia's best student, Sunset, autom Sunset said automatically. Wait, you're from that other place too? Applejack asked. Yes, didn't Twilight tell you that? They all shook their heads. 
Rainbow Dash leaned forward. And did you say you were Princess Celestia, student? I thought Twilight was a princess. <sighs> Sunset sighed. She was regretting this friendship thing already. Yes, I was Celestia, student. She's a princess in the world, a super powerful one at that. But yeah, Twilight's a princess too. The right of ascension has to be earned, and I guess she earned it. Sunset added bitterly. Did you know Twilight? <clears throat> did you know Twilight back then? Pinky asked. No, I didn't. I didn't learn about her until sometime later when I was inspecting the portal again. On full moons, if you concentrate really hard, you can see back into Equestria. I saw some of the study sessions she and Celestia had together in the throne room. There was a pang of sadness in Sunset's heart, and she quickly stood up to leave. Second rule, don't ask me any more questions about Equestria or Twilight Sparkle. She turned on her heel and began to walk out when Pinky called her. Wait, Sunset, we're going to the street fair on Saturday. Do you want to come, come with us? No. Oh, come on, please. It's something friends do. All right, I'll go. Damn it. Pinky cheered, and Sunset rolled her eyes, heading out the front door. She was halfway through when she realized she was missing something. She turned around and marched back to the table, smacking Pinky's hand as she reached for the bag of treats Sunset had almost left. Rule three. Touch my stuff, and I will hurt you. <laughs> Pinky gave her another sheepish grin. Chapter five. If you're gonna come around... There was a thud as Sunset dropped the last can of paint in the back of the truck. She rubbed her fingers on her jeans, smearing the leftover paint across them and making a face of disgust. She turned from the curbside and admired a week's worth of hard work that had resulted in the new front wall of the school. It more or less looked the same. Principal Celestia said the school budget couldn't allow them to spring for anything fancy. Still, Sunset felt some satisfaction knowing that she had helped rebuild it with her own blood, sweat, and tears. And she vowed never to do it again. She had almost been able to sneak away the second they had put in the front door, but one of the workers had politely asked her to help stay and clean everything up, and Sunset just couldn't say no. Clean-up had taken another hour of Sunset's time. Not that she had much to do, but still, anything beat working longer than she had to. The sun was beginning to dip below the horizon when the construction workers finally left, leaving Snip, Snails, and Sunset alone in front of the school. The two boys were talking to one another while Sunset rested against the statue, her arms tired from another day of manual labor. Just as the two boys were, began to walk away, Sunset called out to them. She had something she needed to get off her chest and had taken days to finally work up the nerve to say it. Snips! Snails! she barked. It hadn't meant to come out that way. She was just so used to addressing them as nothing more than servants. They both flinched before slowly turning around, like two children who had been caught stealing sweets from the kitchen. Their large puppy dog eyes made Sunset purse her lips and cross her arms out of habit. That was usually the expression they gave her when they had bad news to deliver, and they knew she hated bad news. Snips rubbed the back of his neck, trying to avoid Sunset's gaze. Uh, listen, Sunset, we can't, well, we don't want to hang out with you anymore. Oh, wait, is that Snips' voice? Snips is the... Whatever. Yeah! Snails continued taking slow steps backwards. But my mom said you're a bad influence, and we don't want to get in any more trouble. I think I put their voices backwards. Who cares? <clears throat> Both of them proceeded to duck and cover their faces in preparation for Sunset's imminent lashing. She watched them stay like that for a whole minute, honestly thinking whether or not she should hit them one last time. When the beating never came, Snails uncurled himself and looked at Sunset with more than the, more than the usual dim-witted expression. Uh, aren't you going to hit us? No, do you want me to hit you? Snips covered Snail's mouth. No, we're good, he said hastily. All right, then. Sunset stared at them, trying to find the right words to say. She had never really apologized for anything before, at least not her, on her soul-free will. She rolled her head back and looked at the salmon-colored sky, sighing. Listen, you two, I just wanted to say... She mumbled something that was lost on the gentle wind. What? Snips and Stale Snails asked simultane simultaneously. I said I'm sorry, okay? She brought her gaze back to them. It must have been unnerving, unnerving, because both of them flinched again. I'm sorry you guys got dragged down with me. You two were just following orders. None of this was your fault. So... <sighs> I'm sorry. Sunset fought against the urge to gag. The very act of asking for forgiveness made her feel sick to her stomach. But some small part of her... An annoying part that was becoming that she was becoming more and more aware of felt like she at least needed to apologize to the two she had treated as helper monkeys for the past year. 
Both of them gave her stares of incomprehension. They looked at each other, then back to Sunset, then to each other again. Sunset, are you? Snips was cut off by a wave of sun, uh, uh, Sunset's hand. No questions! Just, just know that I said sorry, okay? You don't have to accept it, but it's there. She started walking down the road, past Snips and Snails, who flinched once more. She had reached the corner when Snips called back to her. Sunset! Uh, thanks, I guess. For what it's worth, not all of it was bad. Snails nodded. Yeah, turning into monsters was pretty cool. It was just like Halloween. Ugh, Sunset just shook her head and kept walking. Idiots, she mumbled. Still, she was glad they didn't outright hate her. Under different circumstances, Sunset could have easily manipulated them back into working for her. But now... <sighs> her heart just wasn't in it. She wanted to be cruel. She wanted to be spiteful. She wanted to blame everyone around her and lash out with revenge. But with every passing day, Sunset was finding it harder and harder to deny that she was in the wrong. The fault was hers. Well, mostly. She could still find some solace in blaming Princess Twilight Sparkle and her friends. Well, unfortunately, that solace quickly melted into annoyance when she remembered she now had to be friends with them. It was just one defeat after another. Beaten, cursed, and now forced to be friends with the people who put her in the situation in the first place. Just until I can trick the elements into getting this curse off me. Then I'm going to get my revenge and get as far away from them as possible. She knew it was easier said than done. Tomorrow would be her first test, a whole day at the street fair. She gave an involuntary shudder at the thought. There were about a thousand things she'd rather do than spend a whole day with the five of them. I wonder, if I tie myself up so I can't leave... Gah! Sunset blanched. All right, now I'm just being ridiculous. Sunset awoke to the sound of the repetitive ring of her alarm buzzing against her ears. She took her pillow and slammed it over her head, trying to drown the noise out. Eventually, common sense returned to her, and she reached out to slap the alarm clock, shutting it off. Peaceful silence reigned throughout her room once more. Sunset closed her eyes in relief, eager to get back to sleep. Technically, Pinky never said when I had to be there. Sunset was now inclined to believe that the universe hated her, for at that moment, she could hear her phone ring in her jacket pocket. Don't pick it up. Just leave it alone. You might be able to get out of this one on a technicality. The phone continued to admit its high-pitched ring, persistent on being answered. Sunset matched its persistency with her stubbornness, refusing to move out of her comfortable spot. As the phone rang and rang, the question of how any of them had gotten her number popped into her head. She made it a point to ask them the next time she saw them. After an hour, Sunset was ready to chuck her phone out the window. She crawled out of bed and thrust her, her hand into her jacket pocket, snatching her phone and checking the screen. 157 missed calls. 156 bing! 157 voicemails. 50 text messages, all of them from one number. Th uh, the phone vibrated in Sunset's hand, begging to be answered. Just throw it, Sunset! Rip out the battery! Ignore it! Just for the love of Celestia, don't pick it up! Sunset's thumb unflipped the phone and she held it up to her ear. Hello? Damn it, girl, why? Oh my gosh, Sunset, I was starting to think you were never gonna pick up! Pinky's shrill voice drilled into Sunset's brain. Were you asleep? I bet you were asleep. I mean, it's Saturday. I just love sleeping in on Saturdays, but I love hanging out with my friends even more. And it's 11 anyway, and my granny pie always used to say to me, the early bird catches the worm, which is a weird saying because we aren't birds and we definitely don't eat worms. Oh, but before I forget, we are gonna meet at the corner of 3rd and Hay Street at the noon so we can start spending the day together. I've got to tell you on Thursday and I'd hate for you to get lost. Yes, Pinky, I was asleep. Sunset finally got to answer. Oopsie! Sorry I woke you up, but it's time to rise and shine anyway! Good morning, good morning! It's such a lovely day! Good morning, good morning! Sunset slammed the phone shut, restraining herself not to throw it against the wall. It was decided. She hated Pinkie Pie the most. <sighs> With a loud groan, she stood up and looked at herself in the mirror, noting her horrible bedhead and the bags under her eyes. I should probably get ready before I'm dragged down there, looking like this. She gathered her clothes for the day and made her way to the bathroom. The water felt exceptionally cold that morning. After getting dressed and applying a little makeup, Sunset moved to the kitchen and shoved a hot pocket in the microwave. Just as it dinged, Sunset felt a jolt run through her spine and her legs began moving on their own accord. No! Wait a minute! I'm going to go! Just give me a sec! She reached for her phone and checked the time. It was exactly noon. 
Sunset gripped onto the doorframe, trying to drag herself back into the kitchen to at least fetch her lunch, but the rest of her body wouldn't have it. With a few loud swears, Sunset gave up and marched out the front door, slamming it with extra vice. This is officially cruel and unusual punishment! You're late! Sunset glared at Rainbow Dash as she approached the five girls sitting at a small cafe on 3rd Street. They all gave her a welcoming smile, save for Rainbow, who had simply pointed an accusatory finger. Forgive me, your highness. I wasn't informed of the time until the last minute. Don't give me any of that. Pinky told us she had spent an hour trying to call you, Rainbow sniped. Pinky bobbed her head. Yeah, but I guess I must have killed your battery, because the connection died while I was talking. Yeah, battery died. Uh, that was it. Sunset made sure not to make eye contact. Anyway, let's hurry up and get this over with. <sighs> Rainbow huffed. No need to sound so enthusiastic. Feel free to leave whenever you want. Trust me, I would if I could. Fluttershy put a hand on Rainbow's shoulder. Be nice, both of you. We're here to have fun, remember? Sunset looked down the street to where a plethora of booths and tables had been set up. Small carnival games were dispersed between trinket stands, and Sunset could even see a petting zoo way down at the end of the block. None of it looked real appealing. Yeah, I'm not sure if any of this can constitute as fun. Sunset said with a deep line of skepticism. She felt an arm wrap around her neck as Pinky hooked her into a close embrace. Oh, don't be such a party pooper, Sunset! There's all kinds of fun that can be had at a street fair! Pinky, you're violating rule number one, Sunset said testily. Pinky removed her arm, but the smile didn't leave her face. I really want to see the magic show later! Fluttershy pointed to the end of the street. I'd really love to go see the petting zoo, if it isn't too much trouble, that is. Me and R.D. put on a wager, Applejack said. The one with fewer pri- pri blah, blah. The one with fewer prizes from the games has to come to school wearing the frilliest dress Rarity can make. Rarity looked up from the smoothie she had been drinking. Why hadn't I been informed of this? We're telling you now, aren't we? Rainbow Green grinned. Humph. <laughs> Rarity s stood up from the table and discarded her cup into the trash can. Very well, I'll do it, but only because it'd be absolutely worth it to see Applejack and Frills. Hey, what makes you think I'm gonna lose? Nothing, but a girl can dream, can't she? Sunset massaged her temples, swearing under her breath. Listen, are you just going to sit here and talk, or are you actually going to do something? Because if I wanted to do nothing, I would have stayed at home. Rainbow's grin melted back into a scowl. Why don't you just go home, then? Sunset tried to turn and leave, but found her, bo her boots stuck to the ground. She looked back at Rainbow and growled. I can't. Why not? Sunset waited for her vocal cords to act on their own. Her stomach constricted in fear, and she could feel her heart rate soar. Crap! They'll find out about the curse! I'm doomed! She didn't care if they had good intentions. If they found out they could make her do anything they wanted just by asking, her life would be over. It was bad enough with them involuntarily asking things of her. If they did it consciously... Only... the words never came. There was no force on her throat like there usually was when she was asked a question. Sunset blinked slowly as the revelation dawned on her. I don't have to tell them about the curse. I can lie about that. I don't have to tell them squat. It seemed the elements had been merciful in some small degree. Sunset would have danced right then and there if it weren't for the confused stare she was receiving. She still hadn't answered Rainbow's question. Uh, because I'm just so excited to be spending the day with all of you. Man, it feels good to lie again. <laughs> See, I told you girl she'd warm up to us, Pinky cheered. Rainbow gave both Sunset and Pinky a look of hard disbelief before brushing them off and staring down the street. Sunset sneered behind her. Don't worry, Dash, the feeling is mutual. Not wanting to start a scene, the group departed from the cafe, deciding to explore all of the booths first before taking a break for the magic show and then ending the day with the petting zoo. The booths they all stopped at had various baubles and knickknacks, none of which appealed to Sunset. Whenever the clerk would ask if she was interested in something, Sunset gave a curt, stinging reply of no. Something she probably would have done even without the curse. She spent over half an hour at a small jewelry stand, waiting for Rarity to make up her mind whether or not she wanted to buy something. She put on a pair of expensive-looking earrings, admiring herself in the mirror. What do you think, Sunset? Does this make me look good? Sunset leaned against the counter, the epitome of boredom on her face. Why Rarity was asking for her, her opinion, she would never know. I think it makes you look like a... Ooh, is that a ruby necklace? Rarity darted off to another table. Phew, Sunset breathed a sigh of relief. She would have hated if Rarity had heard the end of that sentence. In the end, Rarity decided that she couldn't afford to buy any of the jewelry on display. 
They all look nice, but I should really be saving my money for the holidays. Well, there goes half an hour I'll never get back, Sunset grumbled to herself. She gave a side glance to Rarity, who continued walking like she hadn't heard anything. They stopped at all the game booths, watching Applejack and Rainbow ja Dash compete for the most prizes. Applejack won the water gun shootout, and Rainbow retaliated by crushing her in the free throw competition. The next booth was a, cl was a classic knock the bottles down with a baseball type of game. Applejack and Rainbow took turns making perfect shots, until finally Rainbow misjudged her throw and left one bottle standing. After claiming her prize of a large stuffed teddy bear, Applejack picked up another baseball and held it out to Sunset. Come on, girl! Why don't you quit being such a stick in the mud and have a little fun? Sunset assumed that was supposed to be taken as a favor, since her hand reacted and took the ball. She shrugged, deciding one game wouldn't kill her. After tossing it up and down a few times to get a feel for it, Sunset took an aim at the stacked silver milk bottles, her face a mask of concentration. If she was going to do this, she was going to do it right. She brought her arm back and then hurled the ball with all her strength, watching it tear through the air, straight past the bottles through the back of the booth's tenting. <laughs> Rainbow Dash burst into uncontrollable laughter, doubling over in tears. <laughs> oh my god, that was horrible! Wow, <laughs> Applejack rubbed the back of her neck. That was... unexpected? Sunset stared open-mouthed at the hole she had made. How on earth how did she miss a throw like that? She felt her eye begin to twitch as Rainbow fell over onto the ground, still laughing at Sunset's failure. The operator of the stand looked from Sunset to the hole and back. Er, uh, would you like to try again? Glaring daggers, Sunset said in clipped tones, Yes, I'd like to try again! He placed another ball on the counter and took a few steps to the side. Sunset grabbed the ball and took aim once more, trying to drown out Rainbow's snickering. She'd have a mind to aim for her head, but she knew she probably wouldn't get any friendship points from that. She let the ball fly from her hand, watching it sail once more, this time straight on course for the bottles. There was a clink and a crash as they fell to the floor, and Sunset whirled around and jabbed a finger at Rainbow. HA! IN YOUR FACE! Still smiling, Rainbow got back to her feet. Oh yeah, you sure showed me! Way to finally knock those over! Sunset wanted to make a scathing retort, but was interrupted by the man behind the counter. Ma'am, here's your prize! He held out a small pink unicorn doll. How ironic, Sunset thought, taking the plushie in her hands. Aww! Pinky materialized by Sunset's shoulder. It's so cute! What are you gonna name it? Nothing. Why would I name an inanimate object? Because it's fun, silly! Sunset rolled her eyes and shoved the toy into Pinky's hands. Then you keep it. I'm sure you two will be very happy together. Pinky shook her head and pushed it back. I can't take that from you. It's your prize. Besides, I'm sure she'll be much happier with you. You two have so much in common. She? Sunset looked back down at the unicorn. It did seem to possess more feminine qualities. Of course, in this world, all unicorns are generalized as feminine creatures. Hm. Fine, I'll keep you. A sinister smile crept onto Sunset's face. I'll call you Twilight Sparkle, and when we get home, I'll show you your new castle. The top of my stove! <laughs> See? I knew you two would get along! Pinky beamed. Come see the supreme and mystical Artemis Lula Moon. Rainbow read off the sign in front of the impromptu stage that had been set up. Lula Moon, Lula Moon... Wait, isn't that Trixie's last name? Rarity nodded. Must be related. Her father, I'd wager. Ugh, Pinky, you really want to see this? Pinky nodded and said, Uh-huh, I hear he's really good. Not like Trixie, who's okay good, but actually good. He was an opening act in Las Vegas. Well, we already agreed to see it, so we might as well take our seats, Rainbow sighed. For once, Sunset agreed with her. This was sure to be another colossal waste of their time. Trixie was dismal at best. There was no way her father could be much better if he was the one teaching her. They took their seats near the front row, Pinky bouncing up and down in her chair with excitement. Looking around, Sunset saw a pretty large crowd had gathered. Poor saps. At least no one had to pay for this. There was a large plume of purple smoke that covered the stage, and from it a man appeared. He was tall with silver hair and a well-trimmed goatee, and was wearing a very expensive-looking blue suit with white shoes and a purple cape. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, he started in the typical showman type voice. Welcome to today's performance of the supreme and mystical Artemis Lulamoon. 
The stage erupted with lights and sparklers, and the crowd began to clap and cheer. That wasn't magic, folks. That was just pyrotechnics, Artemis grinned. A wave of laughter rippled through the crowd. Sunset just blew a stray piece of hair out of her face. Ah, I can already tell! You'll be a lovely audience! He reached into his sleeve and produced a large bouquet of flowers, tossing it into the crowd. Just as some of the other girls in the crowd reached for it, the flowers burst into a stream of bubbles and were blown away by the wind. While the girls looked disappointed, the rest of the crowd clapped in an amazement. Pfft, it's just smoke and mirrors, Sunset muttered, only to be shushed by Rainbow. All right, time for some real magic, Artemis announced, pulling out a wand from his other sleeve. Now with my magic words, I'm going to make... He scanned the crowd until his eyes landed on Pinkie Pie. That young girl right there, lev levitate up onto the stage! <gasps> Pinkie gasped, breaking into a smile that, Sunset believed, shouldn't have been able to fit on her face! Artemis waved his hand. One, two, three, Lola Moon! Pinkie's entire chair instantly began to rise off the ground and float towards the main stage. Everyone began to murmur in excitement. Even Sunset had to admit she was struck with wonder. Magic like that couldn't be possible in this world. Pinky landed on the stage and clapped her hands. That was so amazing! Glad you enjoyed it, kid, but I'm not done yet. For my next act, I'll pull a rabbit from your hair. He reached into the nest that was Pinky's mane, rummaging around for a few seconds before frowning. Well, this is a twist. He withdrew his arm, bringing with him not a white rabbit, but a small green reptile. Is this a baby crocodile? Nope! Pinky smiled, taking the scaly creature from Artemis. This is my pet baby alligator, Gummy! Don't worry, he doesn't have any teeth, see? Pinky pulled back his mouth, revealing only pink gums. Uh, Artemis scratched his head. Well, now that's some magic all on his own. He smiled and the crowd chuckled at his and Pinky's antics. Regardless, Lula Moon! The chair levitated again, returning back to its original spot between Sunset and Rainbow. Sunset stared at Pinky and Gummy, her mouth set in a thin line. Why do you have a baby alligator in your hair? Because fish are too mainstream. Now, Artemis continued, could I please have a willing volunteer come and assist me on stage? Sunset felt her hand shoot up and said, I'll do it. What the heck? That wasn't aimed at me, and he said willing volunteer. The damage was done, however, as Artemis pointed her out and beckoned her up to the stage. All right, Sunset, woohoo! I'm surprised she volunteered in the first place, Applejack whispered to Rarity, who nodded in turn. <sighs> Sunset, Sunset stomped onto the stage, an angry scowl on her face. All right, what do you want me to do? Well, first off, smile more. It'd be a shame if your pretty face got stuck like that, Artemis joked. Not gonna happen. Boy, you're just a ball of sunshine, aren't you? At that moment, a sphere of light appeared over Sunset's head, and the crowd broke into more laughter. At least tell us your name. Sunset Shimmer. Well, Sonny, for my next trick, I'm gonna saw you in half. Sunset's half lidded stare quickly changed into an expression of horror. What? Oh, come on, it'll be fun! He pointed his wand to the curtain behind him, which opened and revealed a long horizontal box. You slip inside, I cut you in half and separate them for the audience to see. Then I'll go out for a milkshake and come back in time to put you back together. Not funny, Sunset growled. Artemis tapped her on the nose. Then you, my friend, need a better sense of humor! He stood up straight. Besides, you already volunteered, so into the box you go! Begrudgingly, Sunset walked over to the box and climbed inside. Artemis closed both sections, leaving only her head and feet exposed. He produced a saw from what looked like thin air and held it over the middle of the box. If I die here, my most notable accomplishment will have been almost taking over Equestria. That's a sad thought. Sunset had heard this type of trick was performed all the time, but she always thought the people who volunteered knew beforehand and that there was really just some dummy in the second half of the box. Now she was lying up there. Sunset realized she was seriously dealing with the idea that she was about to be cut in half. Now, children, I ask that you don't try this at home. Are you ready, Sunset? No, and I think you're out of your mind! Artemis shrugged. I've been told worse. Lola Moon! With that, he brought the saw down, cutting into the indent that marked the separation of the two halves of the box. Sunset closed her eyes, waiting for the teeth of the blade to begin cutting into her. I hope you're happy, Elements. I'm going to die, and it's completely your fault! After a few minutes, Sunset opened her eye and wondered why she wasn't feeling excruciating pain yet. Artemis was staring down at her with a bemused expression. I was wondering how long you'd stay like that. He put one on one hand on each side of the box and shouted, Lula Moon! With a push, he separated the two halves, leaving Sunset with the oddest tingling sensation she had ever felt. What the heck? She wheeled her foot. Her, she wiggled her foot and could see it moving from the other box. This is freaky.
The audience erupted into applause, and Artemis began to bow theatrically. Thank you! Thank you! Twas an easy feat! Hey, do you mind sticking me back together now? Artemis chuckled. But of course, if you say the magic word... Sunset rolled her eyes and grumbled something. Sorry, couldn't hear you, dear. Lula Moon, Sunset said, just loud enough to be heard. She heard the boxes snap back together and the tingling sensation around her middle vanished. She got out of the box and felt around her stomach for any scars. I, I don't get it, she said in amazement. How did you do that? Silly, Sonny, a magician never reveals his secrets. Sunset crossed her arms. That's just something amateurs say when the answer is really obvious, but well hidden. Amateur, you say? Artemis clapped his hands and was quickly enveloped in purple smoke. When it dissipated, in his place was a rabbit chewing on a carrot. I just turned myself into a rabbit. The rabbit's mouth moved in perfect sync with the words Sunset heard, but she refused to believe it was actually the rabbit saying them. Can you turn into a rabbit? I didn't think so. No, but I could turn into a demon and eat you in one bite. There was a pause, and then the rabbit burst into laughter. It looked up at her and said, I like you, kid. You got jokes. There was another puff of smoke, and the human Artemis returned with a bow. Please, give my lovely assistant a hand. He gestured to Sunset, his own hands having popped out from his sleeves and began clapping on their own. The audience gave a loud round of applause, though none of them outdid Pinky in her wild cheers. Sunset felt heat rising to her cheeks and tried to hide her blushing with more scowling. Artemis patted her head and spoke into her ear. You know, you really should try smiling more. I've found you get a lot further in life when you smile. Sunset snorted. <laughs> At least he didn't say please. Thanks for the advice. I'll keep that in mind. Good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for today. Come back tomorrow to see more mind-boggling tricks. With that, I bid you adieu! In one last cloud of smoke, Artemis vanished, leaving behind a firecracker that shot into the air and exploded into a shower of light. As soon as Sunset stepped off the stage, Pinky rushed over to her. Wow, Sunset, that was so cool! You really make a good assistant! How did it feel to be sawn in half? Weird. Sunset subconsciously rubbed her stomach. I hate to admit it, but that was pretty impressive. For show magic. After the show, the girls stopped to get something to eat. Try as she might, Sunset couldn't find a stand that didn't sell something that was deep-fried or greasy. In the end, she just settled for a hot dog. Sitting at a small table, Sunset listened to Rarity talk about this year's fall fashions while Rainbow and Applejack counted up who had the most prizes. Rainbow had won by a single spider ring. Applejack groaned and put her face on the table. I hate frills. Rarity patted her on the shoulder. Don't worry, dear. I'm going to make you a dress so dazzling all the boys will be turning their heads when you walk down the hall. Terrific. Sunset smirked. She had to admit she'd love to see that. They moved along, heading for the last destination. The petting zoo. Fluttershy was now chatting excitedly all over the cute animals that were on display, listing off facts that only Pinky seemed to be generally interested in. The animal pen smelled of old hay and droppings, making Sunset wrinkle her nose. Despite the fact that she had once been a pony, Sunset had never had a huge fondness for animals. At least, not the mindless ones in this world. Fluttershy, however, had taken to them like a bee to honey. She ran over to the nearest sheep and began stroking its wool, cooing, Oh, you're just the softest thing ever! The sheep let out a happy ma in response. Sunset wandered around, careful not to step on anything that even remotely looked like animal pellets. While she avoided making contact with any of the animals, everyone else seemed to be enjoying themselves. Hey, look, Sunset! Pinky pointed to a brown pony. It's one of your cousins! Ha ha! Very funny, Sunset deadpanned. She felt something grip onto the back of her coat and began to pull on it. She looked down to see a goat making a meal out of her leather jacket. What? what the Go! Get your own jacket! Sunset started tugging, trying to get the goat to release, but it was merely it merely grunted and continued chewing. Shoo! Shoo! She swatted at it. Fluttershy looked up from the pig she was feeding. Oh, oh dear, um, Sunset, please be careful with him. Let go of my jacket, you stupid goat, or I swear I'll shrimp! Sunset stumbled backwards, falling into the hay that matted the floor, while the goat she had been playing tug-of-war with just chewed on the black fabric hanging out of its mouth. Fluttershy rushed over and held out her hand to Sunset. Oh my goodness, are you okay? No, I'm not okay! Sunset smacked Fluttershy's hand away and stood up, showing off the large tear in her already ruined jacket. That stupid goat just ate part of my clothes! How the hell does it chew through leather? Fluttershy took a few steps back. Oh, well, I'm sure he's very sorry. He's a mindless animal, and sorry's not going to fix this! She gave Fluttershy's shoulder a sharp poke. You just had to want to come to the petting zoo, of all places! This is your fault! 
Rainbow swooped in and shoved Sunset back down into the hay. Back off, Shimmer! This isn't her fault! All you've done most of the day is complain! If you really don't want to be here, then why don't you do us all a favor and leave? Rainbow shouted, GLADLY! With a familiar jolt running down her back, Sunset got up and stormed away from the weeping Fluttershy and fuming Rainbow Dash. Sunset what? Sunset clapped her hands over her ears, not wanting to hear whatever Pinky had to say. She had finally been released from her favor. There was no way she was going back. I knew this was a stupid idea! Chapter 6 Cause it's gonna make a sound. Sunset reflected on the beauty of the settling dusk from her spot on the wooden bridge in one of Canterlot's better-known parts. The bridge overlooked a babbling stream that rippled with the last reflections of sunlight. She always loved the time of day that was her namesake. She put her hands up on the wooden railing and rested her head on top of them. Today had been quite the dismal failure. She had been doing pretty well up until the incident at the petting zoo. Why am I so hung up about this? I should be glad I have them out of my hair. She sighed, blowing on a tuft of hair that hung in front of her face. Of course, I just made it harder on myself to make friends with them. Yeah, that's a pretty big downside. Sunset groaned, shoving her hands in her pockets, only to feel something soft smushed into one of them. She pulled out the pink unicorn she had won at the fair and frowned. Twilight sparkle. The unicorn just stared at her with its button eyes. You know this is all your fault, right? You get to go home and be a princess while I'm stuck here practically torturing myself. I'd drown you in the river if I wasn't dead set on setting you on fire. The unicorn just stared at her. I'm talking to a doll. I've reached a new low. She placed it on the railing next to her and continued to stare into the water, watching her distorted reflection. Why is it that both worlds are so fixated on friendship? All I've tried to do is make it through life without having to rely on anyone else. Is that so wrong? You also tried to usurp the throne by brainwashing students and killing a princess. Sunset slumped against the railing, holding her arms over the side. Okay, I can kind of see how I may have taken things a little too far. But I had a good reason! Sunset frowned. She did have a good reason, didn't she? She was sure she did. She just couldn't recall what it was. Boo! Sunset let out a small shriek of surprise before she whipped around. Ah! She screamed again. Twilight Sparkle stood in front of her, covering her mouth to suppress her giggle of amusement. I'm sorry, I just always wanted to do that. Sunset stared at her for a moment before her brain started to function again. She balled her fists and snarled, What are you doing here? I was just taking my dog, Spike, out on a quick walk. Say hello, Spike. Looking down, Sunset saw a familiar dog sniffing her boot. Spike looked up at her and gave a few happy barks, wagging his tail all the while. Sunset brought her hands up to massage her forehead. They even have the same dog, she groaned. And they both just don't know when to leave me alone. Twilight saw sighed, all the mirth gone from her face. Listen, I know that you don't like me. Gee, what gave you that idea? Which is why I'm even more confused about why you saved me that night. If you don't like me, then why'd you do it? Sunset slumped her shoulders and looked away, refusing to meet Twilight's determined stare. What, you don't know why you saved me? No, I don't. Sunset lied. Twilight crossed her arms. Then that makes me think that you don't hate me as much as you let on. Sunset turned back to Twilight, a burning fire in her eyes. No, Twilight, I hate you, she said in a slow, even voice. I hate you so much it hurts sometimes. Just the very thought of you makes my skin crawl. You are like a recurring nightmare that I can't wake up from, no matter how hard I try. Twilight took a few steps back, pain written in her eyes. Why? What did I ever do to you? The pressure on Sunset's throat returned. It's not what you did. It's what the other Twilight Sparkle did. Twilight stomped her foot, startling Spike into barking at the two girls, raising their voices. There you go again with the other Twilight Sparkle thing. What on earth are you talking about? There isn't another me! Yes, there is. There is another you who lives in another world, and she ruined my life. Twilight rolled her eyes. You don't seriously expect me to believe that, do you? No, actually, I don't. Then why are you telling me this instead of the truth? Because it is the truth! 
Sunset looked down at Spike, who was still barking. Shut up already! Spike folded his ears and ran to hide behind Twilight's leg. Twilight scowled at Sunset and pointed with a finger. First of all, don't yell at my dog. And second, are you crazy? You think there's some alternate world with another me? Sunset brushed Twilight's hand away. No, I'm not crazy, and I don't think there's another world. I know there's another one. Sunset turned and walked halfway down the bridge before stopping. I think I know I can finally get rid of her. She turned around. Twilight, do you really want to know the truth? Because it's going to destroy every fundamental thing you believe in. I can destroy your view of the world right now. Do you really want that? Twilight opened her mouth, then hesitated, biting her lip. She was silent for a moment, eyes darting around the park as she thought, What could you possibly know that could reshape my world view? She asked in a shaky voice. Sunset walked up to her and looked her straight in the eye. Magic exists, Twilight Sparkle. And not the Las Vegas smoke and mirrors kind. Actual magic. With spells and potions and curses. And there's a parallel world out there that can easily harness magic and do things that you can only dream of. Twilight took a step back, her mouth open in disbelief. She stared, mesmerized by Sunset's intense eyes. You're... you're lying. Sunset could hear the doubt in her voice. You have to be lying, or crazy! Magic doesn't exist! Sunset smirked. Yes, it does, Twilight. It's extremely weak here, to the point of non-existence. But there's a world that is connected to this one, where it's so powerful, they have cities made of clouds. The ruler can move the sun, Twilight. Twilight took another step back, almost tripping over Spike. I, I, I don't... That isn't... That can't be... Satisfied, Sunset turned to leave. That's what I thought. You don't want to hear the full truth, Twilight. You aren't ready for it. Go home, forget you met me, and forget what I said. You'll sleep better at night. Sunset stalked off the bridge, a content smile on her face. She didn't bother looking back at Twilight. She knew she would find her with a hopeless, confused, or scared expression. There. I don't think I have to worry about her for a very long time. Rarity sat with her friends back in the cafe where they had started their day at. They had finally gotten Fluttershy to stop crying and were now trying to enjoy the mugs of hot cocoa they ordered. Rarity stirred hers with a spoon, breaking up the swirl of whipped cream on top and blending it into the sweet black drink before taking a careful sip. We were making such good progress, too. Well, maybe not progress, but it was a start. If we just got Sunset to actually enjoy herself, we might have broken through to her. She was jerked out of her thoughts when Rainbow slammed her mug down against the table, having already drained it. This is stupid! Why are we wasting our time with her? She clearly doesn't want to be our friend, so why should we bother trying to be hers? Pinky lipped a dollop of whipped cream off her nose. Because, Dashie, everyone needs a friend, especially Sunset. If we don't try making friends with her, she might go back to being mean to everyone. <gasps> Pinky gasped, or even worse, she might turn into a demon again and start throwing fireballs everywhere. Rainbow put an arm on the table and rested her head in her hand. Yeah, I doubt that's going to happen again. Regardless, Rarity spoke up, we made a promise to try and help her, and we should keep it. And while I'm not too keen on the idea of building a friendship off of a promise, I suppose we have to start somewhere. You can't be serious, Rarity. She practically screamed at Fluttershy, and you still want to be friends with her? Rarity held up a hand. I'm not saying she shouldn't apologize, but we should also consider that she's practically spent the last three years either alone or bossing someone around. We can't expect her to change overnight. Applejack nodded. Rarity's right. Maybe we should try talking to her first. Get to know her a little more. We might be able to avoid situations like this if we start by doing things she likes. Ugh, Rainbow let out a frustrated growl. Fluttershy, you're with me on this, right? You can't seriously want to still be friends with Sunset Shimmer. Fluttershy just stared at her cocoa. Well, um, the goat did eat her jacket. Rainbow threw her up her arms. What's wrong with you guys? Listen, I get you want to keep your promise to Twilight, but this is a lost cause. Sunset isn't going to change. Now that ain't fair, Artie. You can't just judge her off of today, Applejack said. I'm not. I'm judging her off of everything she's done since freshman year. Applejack gave her a stern look. Now listen here, Dash. She apologized for that. Uh, more or less. But that's in the past now. 
We all gotta move on and help her be a better person. Rainbow dropped her head against the table. You guys are hopeless. She raised it again, glaring at all of them. Fine, I'll let it go this time, but I swear if she crosses one more line. Rainbow brought a fist into her open palm. I'm going to give her an early graduation present. Twilight's alarm went off at the time it always did, and she pressed the snooze button, hoping she could get a few more minutes of sleep. Something wet began to tickle her face, and she started to giggle. Spike! <laughs> Stop it! Spike! Okay, okay, I'm up! She rose from her bed, taking Spike into her arms and scratching him behind the ear. First day at my new school, buddy, Twilight said, a hint of longing in her voice. She looked up at her room, everything nice and organized in very specific fashions. Twilight had tried her hardest to replicate her old room as much as she could. Twilight sighed. She really hadn't wanted to move, but her father's promotion at work had required her entire family to have to move for the sake of convenience. She hadn't been happy for her dad. He had really wanted the job, but Twilight had been forced to transfer out of her old private school. Her parents thought it was probably for the best. Twilight didn't have that many friends. Maybe she could make some more at a public school. Putting Spike down on the floor, Twilight got up and proceeded to get dressed, washing herself off in the bathroom and combing out the knots in her hair. She put on her nicest blouse and a long purple skirt, wanting to make a good first impression. Looking herself over in the mirror, she said, Mom is right. I should try and make a few friends this year. She frowned. But what if everyone avoided her or was intimidated by her extensive knowledge of, well, pretty much everything? <sighs> that was what happened last time. For the last three years, she had only one friend, though they had been like two peas in a pod. Well, Twilight gave herself a determined look. I'll make some new friends. That's what she'd want me to do. But first, she'd get some answers from Sunset Shimmer. Twilight grabbed her backpack, rubbing Spike on the head one last time before she headed downstairs. She had spent all of Sunday contemplating what Sunset had said to her, that there was another world filled with magic. It had something to do with another her. When Twilight had looked into Sunset's eyes, she had searched for any sign that Sunset was lying. A nervous twitch or something. When she couldn't find any, Twilight looked for a sign of mental instability. But Sunset had seemed so sure of what she was saying. Twilight had gone through every medical book she owned to find something that she could use to justify any of Sunset's mannerisms or speech, speech patterns as that of a crazy person. When she found none, Twilight was left with two beliefs. That Sunset was the best liar in history. Or she was telling the truth. Twilight was sure Sunset attended Canterlot High, the school she herself was now enrolled in. There, Twilight planned to confront her one last time, to get the whole truth out of her. She didn't care if it turned her whole worldview upside down. Twilight needed to know. Once she tells me everything, I can start logically analyzing it and debunking it. She's only telling me what she thinks is the truth. I hope. Breakfast was a lonely affair. Shining Armor was out on another early patrol, and her mother was probably still asleep after another late shift at the hospital. By the, by the time her dad came, home came down, she had already finished her cereal and apple. Good morning, sweetheart, Nightlight said, kissing Twilight on the forehead. He was dressed in a nice gray suit with a large brown overcoat, his new standard look as an astronomy, astronomy professor at Canterlot University. Big day, huh? Twilight shuffled in her seat. Yeah, I guess so. Nightlight grabbed his keys off the counter. Come on, then. Don't want to be late on your first day. Twilight grabbed her backpack off the back of her chair and headed for the car, trying her best to look enthusiastic. A few, a f the first few minutes of the car ride had been painfully silent. Twilight tried to keep herself occupied by staring out the window, looking at all of the students walking to school. <sighs> Nightlight let out a slow breath. Nervous? he asked. Twilight just nodded her head. I'll be honest. I'm nervous, too, especially after what happened last week. Twilight gripped her hands tight. That had been the scariest night of her life. She had come home quite dazed from how fast everything had spiraled out of control, and the sudden appearance of her savior, Sunset Shimmer. It had taken a few days, but Twilight finally broke down and told her family everything. She had never seen Shining so upset. Don't worry, Dad. It's school. I'll be safe here. Twilight gave him a reassuring smile, but it didn't reach her eyes. No matter how much she tried to play it off, she was still shaken up. I know, I know. School is probably the safest place you can be other than home. I just can't help but worry. 
Everything will be fine, I promise. Nightlight looked at her from the corner of his eye and smiled. I know, you're a tough girl, just like your mom. Just promise me you'll be careful, though. I promise, she repeated. And try to make some friends this year. High school is more fun, and safe, if you have some good friends. Twilight Huff, <laughs> it's not like I didn't have any friends before, Dad. Twilight, you had one friend. Still counts. The car slowed to a stop in front of Canterlot High, where the students were milling around outside, amicably chatting with one another. Twilight could already feel a pleasant atmosphere rating from the campus. She unbuckled herself and leaned over to kiss her dad on the cheek. Have a good day at work. And you have a good day at school. Nightlight kissed her back. I'll be here to pick you up as soon as school ends. Twilight nodded and hopped out of the car, waving as it pulled away. She turned and looked at the two-story building in front of her. Flags and banners proudly bearing the school's emblem decorated the front, while a large marble statue depic depicting the school's mascot stood on the courtyard. She would have started attending Canterlot High last week, but the school had taken the entire week off due to renovations. Twilight had questioned the school's structural integrity when she heard about this. If the school had to take an unscheduled recess for repairs, it couldn't be that well maintained. So, she was pleasantly surprised when she entered the building and found everything gleaming like it was brand new. Wow, she marveled, constantly spinning around to take in everything. She bumped into something and staggered back, almost falling to the floor. Oops! She looked up and saw she had crashed in what appeared to be one of the jocks. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going. Hey, no worries, Twilight, he smiled and waved before walking off. Twilight stared at him. How did he know my name? As she started down one of the many halls, she found that a lot of people seemed to already know who she was. Hey, Twilight! <laughs> What's up, Twilight? Twi, you rock! Twilight wanted to say she was flattered, but in all honesty, she was just confused. And a little unnerved as well. She had never been here before, nor did she know anyone here. Yet they all seemed to know her and treated her like she was their best friend. Oh, Alright, now I definitely need to see Sunset Shimmer. The best way to do that, she decided was to ask someone if she even attended the school in the first place. Twilight would hate to keep searching, only to realize that Sunset went to a completely different school. She walked up to the first girl she saw, who had a massive nest of pink hair, a cheerful disposition Twilight could feel from a yard away. Deciding she was approachable, Twilight tapped her on the shoulder. Excuse me, do you know? The girl whirled around and had blinked at her before she leapt into the air with a loud gasp <gasps> and shot off down the hallway screaming, Twilight looked on in open-mouthed confusion. Well, that was... interesting. Girls! Pinky yelled as she tore down the hall, her feet barely touching the ground. Girls, 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 girls! Pinky wasn't sure if she should be happy or terrified that the other Twilight Sparkles just walked onto campus. But she did know, she did know that everyone else needed to know, and she had to tell them quick. She spotted Rarity having a conversation with some of the fashionistas and stuck out her arm. So then I said to her, What? Pinky! Pinky's arm had hooked around Rarity's and dragged her away from the conversation. What are you doing? No time! We have a situation! I think me! There's Applejack! Applejack was standing at her locker trying to get comfortable in the white frilly ja dress Rarity had made when she noticed Pinky speeding towards her. Hey, girls! What's oof? Pinky had grabbed her by the hand and pulled her along. Come on! I need to tell you something! This is big! Like, super big! Rarity? What is she babbling about? Rarity could only shrug. Quick! Pinky pointed with her tongue, both her hands currently occupied. Grab Fluttershy, Applejack! Fluttershy had just walked into view from an adjoining hallway. When Applejack grabbed her by the wrist and dragged her along for Pinky's ride, Fluttershy stumbled and was hauled across the tiled floor for a moment before she found her legs and started to jog in order to keep up. What's going on? She asked in a panicked voice. Sorry, Sugar Cube. We have no idea, Applejack answered. Pinky led them out the back door to the stadium, where Rainbow was out on the soccer field, bouncing a ball on her head. 97! 98! 99! Rainbow Dash! Pinky yelled as she slammed into her, bringing all five girls to the grass. The soccer ball fell onto the lawn next to Rainbow, who groaned, Oh, come on, Pinky! I was on a roll! Pinky jumped to her feet. I'm super sorry, but we have a problem! Or actually, it's more like a situation, or maybe a predicament. Hmm. Actually, it could be called a Pinky! Get to the point! Twilight is here! Pinky said, flailing her arms over her head. What? They all shouted simultaneously. Rarity paused from her chore of trying to wipe the grass stains off of Applejack's dress. You mean she came back? No, 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 
no, no, no, no, no. Not that Twilight. Our Twilight. I mean, the one from this world. The non-magical one. How do you know, Pinky? Applejack asked. Because she just came up and talked to me in the hallway. Wow. <clears throat> wow. What are the odds of this world's Twilight Sparkle coming to Counterlot High right after the other one leaves? Fluttershy wondered. Pinky tapped a finger against her chin. Pretty high, I guess. She shook her head. But don't you girls see the problem here? Rarity shrugged. Uh, Rainbow shrugged. Not really. Rarity took her by the shoulders and said in a dramatic voice, Rainbow, think about it. This, high, this is high school and teenagers talk. What do you think is on everyone's mind right now? Rainbow's eyes widened. Oh, now I see what you mean. Rarity nodded. If word of what happened at the dance reaches that Twilight's ears, she's going to be hopelessly confused. She'll think everyone around here is crazy or trying to pull some cruel joke on her. Oh my. It'd be even worse if she ran into Flash Sentry or Sunset... Fluttershy looked up with the same horrified expression that everyone else had. They all broke into a run, charging back into the school at top speed with Pinky in the lead again. Hold up, y'all, Rarity, uh, Applejack said in between breaths, trying not to trip in her dress. Maybe we're overthinking this. It's not like Sunset's gonna hurt the girl, right? Rainbow looked over at her and gave her a pointed stare. I was trying to be optimistic. As they rounded the corner, Pinky came sliding to a stop, the rest of the girls piling up behind her. Down the hall in front of her, Pinky could see Twilight walking up to Sunset, who was storing her backpack in the locker. No! Pinky shouted as Twilight tapped Sunset on the shoulder. Sunset turned around and stared at Twilight, then screamed. Chapter 7 Science Fiction Sunset clapped a hand over her mouth to stop herself from screaming. She stared down at Twilight, taking some satisfaction that her scream had at least startled the girl back some ways. Sunset tried to take a few calming breaths, but she could still feel her heart beating erratically. She removed her hand and took an aggressive stance. What the hell are you doing here? She half shouted, half hissed. I go here now, Twilight said simply. Sunset's eye twitched, something she noticed it had been doing a lot more often. Of course, of course you would come here of all places. Dear Celestia, what have I done to deserve all this? And why are you choosing to bug me of all people? Sunset asked in a low growl. Because... Twilight took a deep breath. Because I want to know the truth. The truth, Sunset asked incredulously. Now you want to know the truth. You can't handle the truth. Twilight looked back, to, looked back at her with a, a determined expression that Sunset instantly grew to hate. That's for me to decide, isn't it? Everyone in this school seems to already know my name. One of them even called me Princess, and I want to know why. Yes, I guess the first part is true. Sunset mumbled. She looked around at some of the students who were beginning to gather and stared at the two girls who looked like they were about to break out in a fight. Pointing a finger at Twilight, Sunset said, Lunch, cafeteria, corner table. She looked over to Pinky and the four girls looking over her shoulder. You five, be there. With that, Sunset turned on her heel and stomped away, practically hissing at anyone standing in her path. By the way, Twilight called her, You know there's a tear in your jacket, right? Yes, I am very aware there is a tear in my jacket. The first day back to school was horribly dull fare for Sunset. Class seemed to drag on forever, and it didn't help that she couldn't even hear the teacher, what with all her classmates whispering to each other about what they remembered from the dance, or what they did on their week off. Sunset was actually relieved when the lunch bell rang. She was eager to get this over with, and finally say good riddance to Twilight Sparkle. Rarity fell in step next to her, a worried expression on her face. Sunset, what exactly do you plan on telling Twilight? The truth. Ah, uh, that's what I thought. Rarity bit her lip. Well, while I think honesty is the best policy, are you sure that's a good idea? Sunset stopped in front of the cafeteria door. Do you have something better in mind? Um, no. No, not really. Then shut up and follow along. Sunset threw the doors and marched inside. Rarity put her hands on her hips. Well, no need to be so rude. Sunset grabbed a tray of cafeteria food, making a face of disgust. On a normal day, she would just persuade someone with a good-looking packed lunch to trade with her. Now she was forced to eat, uh, looking at the bowl of green mush, 
since it wasn't sure she wanted to know what it was. She sat down at the table in the farthest corner of the room, Rarity taking a seat next to her. Twilight quickly appeared and sat down across from Sunset. Shortly afterwards, Pinky showed up, scooting in next to Sunset, while Rainbow, Applejack, and Fluttershy all crammed in next to Twilight. Er, why exactly are they all here? Twilight asked. Because they're kind of important, unfortunately, Sunset added under her breath. Hi! Pinky reached over the table and took Twilight's hand, shaking it vigorously. I'm Pinkie Pie! It's so nice to see you again! Again? Twilight looked at Sunset, who simply had a bored expression. We'll explain it in a second, dear. Rarity smiled. She shook Twilight's hand after Pinky finally let go. You can call me Rarity. Rainbow Dash, Rainbow grinned. Applejack tipped her hat. Name's Applejack, if you're wondering. No, I, I don't normally wear dresses to school. I'm Fluttershy, Fluttershy said in a surprisingly clear voice. Hooray, we're all friends here, Sunset said in a sarcastic tone. She drummed her fingers on the table. Now, where do I start? The beginning, silly, Pinky offered. Sunset ignored her. All right, do you remember what I told you about the other world on Saturday? Twilight nodded her head. Wait, Saturday? Rainbow cut in. When did you meet with her? Sometime after I left you guys at the fair. Now don't interrupt me. Rainbow fell so silent, but only after giving Sunset a cold glare. Like I was saying, the other world is filled with magic. It's called Equestria. Its most dominant species are the three most common types of pony. <laughs> Hold on, Twilight laughed. Are you seriously going to tell me there's a world full of sentient magical horses? Yes, and what did I just say about interrupting me? <clears throat> Twilight cleared her throat, suppressing another laugh. <laughs> Please continue. Anyway, before I was rudely interrupted again, there are three main types of pony in Equestria. Earth ponies, which are like the normal ponies here, only they live longer and have slightly higher IQ. Pegasi and unicorns. Then there are alicorns, which are powerful creatures with all three traits. Princess Twilight Sparkle, your other in that world, was an alicorn. She had a crown that had an incredible power source inside of it. Sunset cast her gaze around the unappetizing food in front of her. I wanted it and all the power that came with it for myself. The statue out front serves as a gateway between our two worlds. Only it opens once every 30 moons for three days at a time. When it opened up last week, I snuck back and took the crown. Unfortunately, I wasn't as stealthy as I could have been. There was a scuffle and the crown ended up in... She gave Fluttershy a dark look. Unfortunate hands. Fluttershy hid in her hair and ducked down in her seat. The crown was then going to be used as a prize for the Princess of the Fall Formal. I wasn't too worried about it then. I thought I, w I was certain to win the title like I did every year. Sunset gripped the table hard and clenched her teeth. And then she followed me back here. She was so determined to get her stupid crown back. She barges in here and just ruins everything. Rainbow gave a cruel smirk. You mean by helping the rest of us become friends again and uniting the entire school to stand up against you and making sure you finally lose? Sunset slammed her hands on the table and stood up, Rainbow copying her movements, a challenge in her eye. Both girls stared each other down while the rest of the cafeteria watched on in silence. Yes, Sunset said in a lethal whisper, by doing that. Rarity slowly put a hand on Sunset's arm and pulled her back down to the bench, while Applejack did the same for Rainbow. Please, let's try not to make a scene here, girls, Rarity mediated. Sunset measured the ferocity in Rainbow's eyes. They gave a stern warning, daring Sunset to try something. Though it was tempting, Sunset wasn't in the mood to fight. She finally averted her glare to the back wall and continued her story. Well, as, so, as Rainbow so nicely put it, the other Twilight Sparkle turned the whole school against me. She won the crown, but I wasn't going to go down without a fight. This is the part where it really gets good, Pinky whispered mostly to herself. After a few... underhanded tricks, I finally snatched the crown for myself. When I finally put it on, I... I got all the power I wanted, but... Sunset stopped, unable to find the words to explain what happened next. She had turned into a monster, an experience that still confused and even frightened her. That had not been a part of her plan. What she felt during her time as a demon, all of the thoughts and emotions running through her at that moment, Sunset realized she wasn't ready to talk about it. She couldn't talk about it. 
luckily for her, Pinky interjected. So, basically, Sunset turned into this really scary monster with bat wings and sharp claws, and then she broke the school and brainwashed all of the students before saying, Twilight keeps getting in my way, and now I'm going to destroy her! Rawr! So she makes this big fireball, and she throws it at her, and we were Princess Twilight's friends, because she helped us all become friends again when Sunset divided us, and we weren't going to let Twilight stand by herself, so we all got into a big group hug, which activated some more super cool magic, and we all floated in the sky and shot a super pretty rainbow beam at Sunset, and she turned back to normal, and then we all danced, and Twilight went home. The end! Sunset pointed to Pinky. That just about sums it up. Twilight put her hands together on the table and rested her chin on them. So, let me see if I get this straight. There's another Twilight Sparkle who is a magical pony princess in another world, and you stole her crown so you could have magic powers. But she chased you back to this world and brought the whole school together to vote for her instead of you for the princess of a dance. Only you took the crown anyway and turned into a monster. But the other Twilight and the girls stood up to you and fired some magical rainbow that turned you back? Yep, Sunset nodded. Twilight was silent for a moment. Then <laughs> she burst into hysterical laughter, clutching her sides. That is the dumbest thing I have ever heard! <laughs> you had me worried for a second! You looked so serious back on the bridge! I actually believed you! <laughs> and the fact that you got them all to play along! Wow, you must be dedicated! Okay, okay, I get it. Hayes the new girl. Even I have to admit, that was pretty good! Twilight's laughter came to an end as she wiped the tears from her eyes. She looked around at the faces staring back at her. Only Pinky was smiling. As usual. Twilight's own grin slid from her face. Okay, I caught on. Why aren't you girls laughing with me? Because, Sugar Cube, we ain't joking. Applejack said. But you have got to be joking, Twilight gave a weak laugh. <laughs> you really don't think there's a world filled with ponies and that she turned into a demon, Twilight pointed at Sunset, who now wore an impassive face. Applejack nodded. I do, because I was there when it happened. I know it's hard to believe, but it's the truth. No, it isn't, Twilight said, starting to sound angry. Listen to yourselves. You're, sp you're spouting off things that only happen in in science fiction novels or children's books. Interplanetary travel is still a decade away, at least, and you're telling me there's another dimension that connects to this world? You're all crazy! Rarity looked over to Pinkie Pie. Show me the picture. Pinkie reached into her hair and produced a simple photograph, handing it to Twilight. Twilight took it and her eyes grew to the size of dinner plates. That... that's me! But how? And why do I have wings? Magic. Sunset said. Magic. Twilight trailed off, then furrowed her eyebrows. Or Photoshop. <laughs> Sunset couldn't help but smirk. She's really trying not to believe this. Pinky. Sunset snapped her fingers. Show her the video. Girl, don't you snap your fingers at me, Pinky said, rolling her neck. Sunset slammed her palm against the table, glaring at her. Right, video. On it. Pinky ducked under the table and produced a very pink laptop from her bag. She pulled up the, slen the slander video Sunset had made of Twilight and flipped the computer around. Um, yeah, it's kind of bad. Twilight leaned in and watched the video play. Sunset could hear her own narration, recalling fondly of her impressive video-making skills. She watched Twilight's frown grow deeper and deeper as the video continued, and she slammed the computer shut when it finished. So, Sunset smiled viciously, where's your science fiction now? Twilight put her head in her, in her hands. There has to be an explanation for this. You guys are just pulling a really drawn-out prank, right? She was almost pleading now. Sunset growled in frustration. No, we aren't. Look, Twilight, you wanted the truth? Well, here it is. She leaned back in her chair and crossed her arms. I told you you couldn't handle it. No, it's not that. I just thought... I... I was hoping... That I was wrong. Twilight picked up her lunch, looked very tired. I need some time alone. She walked off to the last unoccupied table, slumping into her chair. Oh my, she looks pretty distraught, Fluttershy said. Yeah, Sunset nodded. Her face instantly brightened up. Well, that was fun! Rainbow opened her mouth, no doubt to give Sunset a verbal lashing, but Applejack beat her to it. Sunset, why do you hate her so much? I don't hate her. I don't? I hate the other Twilight Sparkle. Okay, that makes sense. I just mildly dislike her because they share the same face. Rarity poked her salad. Well, I think it's safe to say we may have scarred her for life. 
They all looked at Twilight, just in time to see Flash sentry approach her. Oh, this should be good, Sunset thought. Flash looked more confused the longer he talked to Twilight. Eventually, she just shook her head and proce proceeded to eat her lunch, trying to ignore the world around her. Flash looked dejected for a moment before he turned and walked towards Sunset's table. All right, can someone please explain to me what's going on? It had to be a general. It had been a general question, but his eyes were locked on Sunset. Why is Twilight acting like she doesn't remember, well, anything? It's simple. Sunset smiled, throwing extra venom into her words. That's not the Twilight Sparkle you fell in love with. Flash's face turned red. Well, I, I don't know if I. Wait, what do you mean that isn't the same Twilight Sparkle? She looks just the same. I mean, your little girlfriend came from another world, and now she's gone. You'll probably never see her again. That one is the version of Twilight Sparkle that actually lives here. I'd tell you more, but you already missed story time, and I don't feel like repeating myself. Flash stared at her before turning to the other girls. Can any of you help me out here? Applejack shrugged. Sorry, Flash, but it's pretty much like some said. That Twilight Sparkle and the Twilight Sparkle from last week are two different Twilight Sparkles. <sighs> All right, Flash sighed and rubbed his head. The only reason I'm going to believe that is because what I saw at the dance still defies explanation. So, I guess weirder things have happened. He shoved his hands into his pockets and walked away, still looking put out, leaving Sunset in even better mood than before. I just destroyed someone's entire belief in science and indirectly broke my ex-boyfriend's heart. <laughs> Today was a good day. Twilight climbed to the top of the stairs and entered her room, exhausted from the long day. It had been a chore lying to her parents about the interesting day she had and meeting all of the colorful people at lunch, who delivered life-altering news. She collapsed onto her bed, shutting her eyes, and even ignoring the loving dog kisses Spike tried to give her. She wasn't sure what bugged her more, the fact that magic existed or the fact that she was a pony princess in another world who stood up to a demon. She reached for her pillow and let out a muffled yell. What am I getting so worked up about? So what if there's another me who has magical powers? And is a pony? It doesn't matter! It's not like we'll ever meet or anything! This doesn't change anything at all! Just because magic exists doesn't disprove science. It just... bends a few rules. So there are other dimensions! That just proves the multiverse theory. See, Twilight? Nothing to get worked up about. Twilight lifted her head and finally acknowledged Spike, petting him on his head. His presence seemed to always calm her down when she went into one of her moods. She flipped up onto her back, letting Spike curl up on her stomach. Okay, so the alternate reality thing does explain some stuff, like how everyone at school already knows my name. And if the whole story is true, then it explains why the school was closed last week. Oddly enough, Twilight was starting to find it easier to believe that her other world counterpart was a pony. What she couldn't believe was... Sunset Shimmer was a monster? Sure, she seemed hard on the outside, cold, mean, and maybe a little spiteful, but a monster? An actual winged beast of some sort? Twilight shook her head. She thought back to the alley and how Sunset had stood up to those two men, how she had easily dispatched them with a rough yet seemingly eloquent fighting style. Would a monster do that? Yes, Sunset gave off the impression that she hated Twilight, but there had to be more to it than that. Sunset Shimmer had saved Twilight's life. And Twilight just couldn't let it go. Chapter 8 Broken System Sunset opened her locker and looked at the small list that had been taped to the inside of the door. She pulled a pen out of her backpack and read through it. 1. Get rid of Twilight Sparkle. Check. 2. Revenge on Flash Sentry. She shrugged. She had done that, more or less. Check. 3. Make friends with the five most annoying girls in school. Sunset grimaced, stuffing her pen away. That one was still going to take some work. While the majority of them seemed to have forgiven her for the incident at the petting zoo, there was still the unwillingness to want to be friends on her own end. Sunset knew she had to make friends if she wanted her life to become somewhat normal again, but it was a hard feat when she still resented everyone. There was also another problem now. Three days ago, Sunset had told Twilight about the other world and her pony princess twin, and while that seemed to have rattled Twilight enough to give Sunset some distance, though she seemed to persist in smiling and waving at her in the hallways, the Canterlot High Five, as Pinky insisted they be called, were only too eager to be friends with Twilight. Since then, Sunset had kept her distance from all six of them. 
while she might be willing to force herself to be friends with those five, being friends with the mirror image of the girl who had ruined her life was... Well, Sunset wasn't sure what it was. She grabbed the textbook she had originally come to get and shoved it into her backpack before slamming the locker shut. It wasn't fair. She desperately wanted to hate Twilight with all of her heart. And she did. Just not this Twilight. This Twilight hadn't done anything to her, other than bug her for the truth. It was a conflict that set guilt upon Sunset's heart. Guilt was a feeling Sunset was starting to experience more of lately. Something that really annoyed her. She had begun to feel genuinely guilty about what she had done to the school and the students, and guilty about hating them when most of them had done nothing to her. So now, it was guilt that Sunset felt when she thought about Twilight Sparkle and any of the nasty things she could potentially do to ruin her life. It wasn't fair to seek revenge against someone who had a week ago been completely ignorant of everything. It wasn't fair to hate her for something she didn't do. That concept, however, only made Sunset hate Twilight for not being able to properly hate her, although it was more of a hollow hatred and it was always trailed by guilt. It was an annoying, vicious, and exhausting cycle. For Sunset, there was only one person in the school she could hate without feeling guilty about it. Rainbow Dash. She made no effort to hide her disdain for Sunset, and the feeling was mutual. Sunset enjoyed it, though. While the rest of the school had simply taken to ignoring her, Rainbow hated her, allowing Sunset to freely reciprocate it, guilt-free. As she walked down the hall, boots squeaking against the polished floors, Sunset thought, Why can't life just be simple? Everyone hates me, I hate them, and we all just go about our day. Instead, she was forced to stop hating and make friends, completely ruining an otherwise perfect system. Until the curse is lifted, then I can go right back to hating everyone. Sunset stopped walking. Something about that seemed... rather sad. Before she could put too much thought into it, the bell for the next class rang, sending students into the usual rampaging frenzy to get there on time. Sunset rode the human current and fought her way out of the tide when her classroom came up. Rarity had already made it in and had seated herself near the front. She gestured for Sunset to take a seat next to her. Sunset rolled her eyes, but complied nonetheless. Hello, Sunset. How are you today? Rarity asked with genuine sweetness. All right, I guess, Sunset replied in a languid manner. Rarity had made it a habit to always ask how Sunset was doing, though Sunset hardly varied in her answers. Besides, if she did have anything to share, she doubted she would share it with Rarity. But again, she supposed that was something friends did with each other. Shared feelings and stupid things like that. Are you doing anything after school today? Sunset dropped her head in her hand. Yeah, detention. Again. Rarity snapped her fingers. Drat! I forgot about your, uh, <clears throat> punishments. How long do you have to serve detention for? A month, Sunset said sourly. Well, Rarity twirled a finger through her purple curls. I suppose that's better than the alternative of getting suspended. Or expelled. Miss Celestia was pretty forgiving, don't you think? Yeah, she was. I'm just glad she didn't ask for a parent-teacher conference or anything like that. The last of the students filed in as the bell rang a second time, signaling the start of class. Sunset pulled out her textbook and began to mindlessly take notes, while Mr. Noteworthy lectured on about some obscure moment in history. History was the only class Sunset actually had to work for her perfect grade. She could never bother to remember all of the dates and who killed who for what reason starting this particular war. Humans seem to enjoy killing themselves. That was the main thing she had taken away from three years of human history. Monster attacks aside, Sunset hadn't realized just how much of a radiant paradise Equestria was until she had come here. Of course there had been wars, but never to the extent the humans had to take things. Thinking of Equestria sent a small pang of homesickness through Sunset's heart. The last time she had gone home, it was only to commit an act of petty theft. It had been so long since she had seen the rolling fields of Unicorn Range, or the pristine, shining buildings of Canterlot. So long since she had seen her mother, or father, or Celestia. Her writing slowed to a crawl as her mind wandered off. She knew time flowed differently between the two worlds, and wondered if anyone would still remember her. Would her parents recognize her? Were they still around? Would Celestia have forgiven her by now? They hadn't pardoned on the best of terms, and while Sunset was still upset with her, Part of her yearned to see Celestia's sweet, forgiving face. Sunset! 
Sunset jerked her head from her notes and looked at Rarity, who had his her name. She was pointing forward to a scowling Mr. Noteworthy. Miss Shimmer, I asked you a question. Are you even paying attention to the lecture? No, not really. Ah. Sunset cringed. It was times like this she desperately missed lying. However, the rest of the class seemed to have gotten a laugh out of her snide remark. Mr. Noteworthy's scowl deepened, and he said, Well then, I guess I'll just have to talk to the principal about adding another day of detention for you. Perhaps then the lesson will sink in. Ignoring the sniggering going on behind her, Sunset sank into her chair. Great. Lunch had started as a tepid affair, with Sunset poking at her meal alone and in peace. She looked over to the table where the counterlot five were sitting, along with Twilight. Digging into her salad, Sunset couldn't help but notice Twilight's happy expression seemed almost forced. Her smile didn't quite reach her eyes, which occasionally wandered around the cafeteria in a frantic, searching manner. Sunset looked down at her food, smirking to herself. What's the matter, Sparkle? Trouble in friendship paradise? Underneath her feeling of glee, Sunset couldn't help but wonder what Twilight was looking so nervous about. She lifted her eyes back to the opposing table. Come to think of it, Twilight often wore that expression whenever she was around any of those girls. Wait a minute. Sunset counted the heads at the table. Someone was missing. Where did Pinky- Hiya, Sunset! Ah! Sunset nearly fell out of her chair at the sudden manifestation of Pinkie Pie. Pinky! Sunset fumed. Don't do that! You nearly gave me a heart attack! Pinky dropped into the chair next to her and gave an apologetic smile. Sorry! I just saw you were sitting here all alone and thought you might want some company. I didn't mean to scare you. She rubbed her hands together in a sinister manner. Then again, it is almost Halloween, which means it's time for me to start scaring everyone! Mwahahahahaha! <laughs> Sunset watched with dispassion as Pinky cackled like a cheesy villain, throwing her hands in the air. You have problems. Pinky stopped laughing and shrugged. My mom says I eat too much candy. She reached into her hair and pulled out a lollipop. But I can stop any time I want to. Uh-huh. Is there a particular reason you came to bug me, or are you just shooting to be extra annoying today? Pinky stuck the sucker in her, into her mouth and frowned. Boy, someone must have woken up with a lemon in her mouth, because you are sour. I just wanted to see why you were alone. Sunset went back to eating her salad. I happen to enjoy eating alone. Why? Pinky asked innocently. Because I dislike spending time with other people. Why? Because I don't like other people. Why? Because people are annoying, and if you say why one more time, I will rip your tongue out and feed it to you. Pinky blinked, still slurping on her lollipop. Has anyone told you you have anger issues? Sunset took a calming breath. It's been brought up before. Pinky leaned in and wrapped an arm around her. That's okay. I used to be sad a lot when I was younger, but then I met friends who taught me always to see the bright side of things. You just need to stop being such a sourpuss and make grumpy pants and make friends and smile more. Definitely smile more. You're the second person to tell me that. Sunset looked at Pinky's arm and then gave her a warning glance. And do you not remember rule number one? Don't talk about Fight Club? Sunset was caught between the urge to slam her face against the table or choke Pinky until she was blue. You are absolutely hopeless. Hey, you're the second person to tell me that! Weird, huh? Pinky took the stem of the devoured lollipop, twisting it into a pretzel shape before sticking it between two fingers. She took aim, sticking her tongue out the side of her mouth, and flipped the pretzel across the room where it bumped into the back of Rainbow's head. Rainbow turned around and glared at both Pinky and Sunset. Sunset locked eyes with her for a moment before turning to see Pinky pointing back at her while looking the other way, whistling innocently. That's strike two! Rainbow called. Strike two? Sunset held up her hands in confusion. What was strike one? Probably yelling at Fluttershy, Pinky answered. Right. Sunset said, clicking her tongue. The bell, ending, the bell ending lunch rang, sending everyone flocking out of the cafeteria and to their next class. Sunset followed the procession, discarding her tray and half-eaten lunch before pushing into the throng of outgoing students. Hey, Sunset, wait! Pinky caught up to her, nimbly weaving through the crowd. You should come to Sugar Cube Corner with us after school. Can't. I have detention. Aw, bummer. What about tomorrow? Sunset looked back at her. Pinky, I have detention for the rest of the month and then some. Jeez, Louise. Well, in that case, we'll just have to have a detention party sometime. Pinky cheered. Nothing cheers up detention like spending it with some good friends. She turned off into another hallway, waving fervently. Bye, Sunset! 
have fun in detention! Sunset kept walking, pushed by the ever-moving crowd. A party in detention. <laughs> she couldn't help but smirk. As annoying as Pinky was, Sunset had to admit she wouldn't mind seeing that happen. The rest of the day went by without incident, and while the last bell marked the end of, end of the school session and freedom for most, for Sunset it signaled the start of another two hours of mind-numbing tasks. Today, she had been assigned to mop all of the hallways around the school, something that made her question the purpose of having a janitor. She, she decided to get to work without making a fuss to Celestia. The faster she finished, the faster she could go home and do... nothing. Well, nothing is still better than this, she grumbled, dragging the wet mop across the floor. Though she supposed it was better than what Snips and Snails were doing, cleaning all of the dishes from lunch. She made quick work of the central hall, before she trailed down the eastern corridor, savoring the sweet silence. Everyone had been so eager to go home, she bet the only people left were the kids on the fall sports teams. At least, that's what she had assumed, until a faint noise brushed against her ears. It was quiet, and muffled, but Sunset could tell it belonged to a human, and it almost sounded like crying. Curious, she halted her mopping and followed the noise, leading her to the girls' bathroom. She paused at the door, weighing her options. Part of her wanted to just walk away and let whoever was in misery work out their own problems. On the other hand, someone was crying, and Sunset had to admit it would be great to make them feel worse, just for old time's sake. Grinning savagely, Sunset pushed the door open, stepping into the black and white checkered bathroom. Upon her entry, the crying quickly turned into suppressed winter whimpers and the occasional hiccup. Her grin faded when she looked down at the bottom of the stalls and saw a familiar pair of boots. Of all people, it just had to be her. Sunset leaned against one of the sinks and crossed her arms. All right, Twilight, come out of there, she said tersely. There was a gasp, followed by the sound of an unlocking bolt before Twilight stuck her head out of the stall, her face streaked with tear marks. H how did you know it was me? I saw your dorky boots. Why are you in here anyway? Doesn't your dad pick you up? Twilight fully emerged from her hiding place, wiping her eyes on the back of her hand. He he had to stay at work today, so I have to walk home. Sunset raised a brow. Why didn't you walk home with any of the girls? She must have found the root of the problem, because at the mention of the five, Twilight bit her lip and avoided Sunset's eyes. A grin began to creep back across Sunset's face. What? Have they driven you crazy already? It's okay. I can barely stand them either. Twilight broke into a fresh wave of tears, instantly wiping Sunset's smile away. <laughs> it's not that! They, they don't want to be my friend! What? Shaking her head, Twilight cried. The way they look at me! They think I'm her! They want to be friends with Princess Twilight Sparkle, not me! I... I I'm just a stand-in for her because we have the same name and, and look alike! They don't want to be my friends! Sunset slumped her shoulders, watching Twilight weep into her hands. It was pretty sad to be thought of as just a stand-in for someone else. And, one, uh, and while Sunset loved the idea of kicking someone while they were down, something inside told her now wasn't the best of times. I'm going to regret this later, I just know it. Twilight, look at me. Twilight lifted her head, staring at Sunset with bloodshot eyes. Sunset made a face of disgust. She reached over and pulled some paper towels out of the dispenser. Okay, first of all, stop crying and clean your face up. You look pathetic. She handed the towels to Twilight, allowing her to wipe up her, twi her tears and, clear her and clean her nose. Now, Sunset's voice softened, listen to me when I tell you that those girls want to be your friend. They want to get to know you. Them replacing you for the other Twilight is all just in your head. But don't interrupt me, Sunset warmed. It's in your head, Sparkle. As much as I loathe to admit it, those are probably the nicest and most sincere girls you're going to meet around here. The last thing they want to do is hurt you or pretend you're just a replacement for someone else. Twilight wiped her eyes again. Do you really mean it? Sunset nodded. Yeah, I do. They barely knew Twilight for three days. You have the rest of the year to make an impression. I guess you're right. <laughs> Twilight sniffled. I just feel like... Whenever they look at me, they're looking for a princess. Yeah, well, she ain't all they make her out to be. Sunset crossed her arms again. Besides, it was a one-time thing. Give it a few weeks and everyone will have moved on or thought it was some really crazy dream. The attention span of a teenager only lasts so long. <laughs> Twilight let out a weak chuckle. 
you're right. Rarity and Pinky and all of them, they all seem like really nice girls. I guess I was just overreacting. If I just be myself, then they'll just come to expect that from me. If you want to simplify it to an after-school special, sure, Sunset said with a shrug. Tossing the napkins away, Twilight grabbed her backpack and slung it over her back. Thanks for talking to me, Sunset. I actually feel better now. Meh. Sunset turned away, waiting for Twilight to take her leave. When she continued to stand there, Sunset asked, What else do you want? A cookie and a pat on the head? No, I was just... A slight blush appeared on Twilight's cheek. I was just wondering if you wanted to walk home with me? Sunset gave her a lidded stare. No. Besides, I have detention. Oh. Sunset couldn't believe how disappointed Twilight looked. Well, I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Twilight pulled the door open and walked down the hall. Hmm. Wait a minute, Sunset thought. Stay here and mop for another hour and a half, or walk this door home and enjoy the rest of my day. Sunset emerged from the bathroom shouting, Hey, Sparkle, wait up! She walked brisk briskly, catching up to Twilight, who had her hand on the entrance door. What is it? I changed my mind. I'll walk home with you just this once. Twilight regarded her with suspicion. But I thought you said you had detention? Yeah, which is exactly why I'm doing this. Walking you home beats mopping floors. And yet is still a punishment in and of itself. Won't you get in more trouble for ditching? Probably. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. Twilight took a turn in crossing her arms. I don't know how I feel about someone ditching detention. Ugh, <sighs> Sunset groaned. Listen, dork, do you want my company or not? Twilight pretended to mull it over a minute before smiling brightly at her. Of course! She pulled open the door, stepping into the fading light of day. I just hope you don't get into too much trouble. <sniffs> They'll just give me another day of detention. Gives Pinky more time to plan her detention party. Detention party? With a shake of her head, Sunset said, That girl will make a party out of anything. They passed the marble statue, gleaming in the light of the sun. Sunset saw Twilight eyeing it. Don't even think about it. Portal's closed for another two and a half years. Two and a half years? Seems a little specific, Twilight mused. I'm pretty sure it's based on the lunar cycle of both worlds. Our moon and their moon have to align while in the fullest phase. Something that only happens two and a half years, I guess. I see. You know, you seem to know a lot about that place. Where'd you get all this information from? From living there half my life, Sunset said matter-of-factly. Twilight stopped walking, staring at Sunset with wide eyes. You mean, you're from Equin... Equa... Sunset stopped and looked back at her. Equestria? Y yes You're from Equestria? Yes. You're a pony. Technically, yeah. I didn't bring that up three days ago? No, not really! Twilight exasperated. Huh. I thought it would have been at least implied, Sunset said nonchalantly. How could you leave something like that out? That's kind of important information, Twilight shouted. Because it wasn't that important at the time, and why are you getting so worked up about this? Well, uh, Twilight quickly went from angry to embarrassed. Uh, no reason, I guess. <laughs> I just feel like that's something important you should tell your friends. Sunset rubbed her temples. What exactly makes you think we're friends? Well, you saved my life, told me the truth about Princess Pony me instead of holding it over my head, and you just comforted me while I was feeling really down. Twilight counted off her fingers. I'm pretty sure those are things friends do for each other. Twilight strode past Sunset, looking pleased with her response, while Sunset just stood there gaping at her. I, I didn't! That's not- You- 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 Damn it! Sunset pulled at her hair. Quick! Think of something to get her to change her mind! Oh yeah! Twilight turned around. I never really said thanks for that, did I? Thank you for being honest with me. She walked up to the confused-looking Sunset and hugged her tight. And thanks again for cheering me up. I knew you couldn't really be a monster. Sunset stood there, stunned by Twilight's embra embrace, her mind jumping into overdrive. Why is she thanking me? Why is she hugging me? Is she crazy? Why in the world does she want to be friends with me? Out loud, she asked the foremost question on her mind. What are you talking about? Twilight took a step back, releasing Sunset from her hug. Well, it's not that I don't believe the story you told me, but Pinky must have been exaggerating when she said you turned into a monster, right? Sunset felt her stomach drop. She put her hands into her pockets and walked past Twilight. No, she wasn't, she said, her voice now hoarse. I really did turn into a monster. But why? Twilight ran to catch up with her. Sure, you're a little mean, but 
you aren't evil. The element of magic was never meant to be worn by someone unworthy, someone who just wanted to use it for power. It's an artifact that is only meant to unite the virtues of friendship and channel them into pure magic. When I put it on, it just channeled all of the dark things that were in my heart and turned me into a reflection of them. Sunset reached up and wiped her face. She clenched her teeth and said sternly, And no, I'm not going to talk any more about it. The less said, the better. Twilight looked at her with sad eyes. All right, then. But I still don't think you're evil. Not any more, at least. There was a moment of silence between them before Sunset asked, What were you doing out so late that night, anyways? Oh, well... Twilight gave a nervous laugh, rubbing the back of her neck. I had gone to the library to do some studying, and I kind of lost track of time. It wasn't until the librarian kicked me out that I realized how late it was. I started walking home, and I ran into those two guys, and, well, you know the rest of the story. You spent all day studying in the library. <laughs> Sunset laughed. Jeez, you are a nerd. Hey, Twilight looked indignant. What about you? Aren't you the smartest girl in school? Yeah, but I don't have to study. It all just comes naturally. Except for history. <clears throat> Twilight snorted. You have a hard time in history? Yes, but it isn't my fault. It's boring and there are too many dates to remember, and all you humans do is kill each other. We do more than that, Twilight argued. Sure, we have our flaws, but we've accomplished so much by working together. I mean, we've put a man on the moon and sent a rover to Mars. Has the pony world ever done that? No, Sunset admitted. But we did lock a mare inside the moon. You... Locked someone inside the moon. Yeah, long story. Sunset waved it off. <laughs> Twilight laughed again. Well, if you're really having trouble, maybe I could tutor you sometime, she offered. Sunset rolled her eyes. Please, I don't need tutoring. The neighborhood they had entered into was a collection of perfectly ordered houses, each with a well-manicured lawn and perfectly trimmed hedges. It looked like the textbook definition of suburbia. In fact, Sunset thought it would have been creepy if the houses hadn't at least been painted different colors. Aside from the paint patterns, personal ornaments, and various cars in each driveway, all of the houses looked the same. Twilight stopped in front of the light blue one with a small fountain in the front porch. She beamed at sunset, blushing slightly. Thanks again for walking me home. Meh. Is that all you say whenever someone thanks you? More or less, sunset shrugged. Twilight shook her head in disbelief. Oh! She lit up and reached into her backpack. I can't believe I almost forgot again. I've been meaning to give this back to you. She pulled out a small pink unicorn and held it up to Sunset. You left this on the bridge. I, um, thought you might want it back? Sunset took the unicorn into her hands, staring at it before looking back at Twilight. Uh, thanks, I guess. You're welcome. See? That's how you respond when someone thanks you. With another roll of her eyes, Sunset turned and started her long walk home. Bye, Sunset! See you tomorrow! Twilight called enthusiastically. Whatever! Sunset held up the unicorn, scrutinizing it as she thought, Perfect. I accidentally made Twilight Sparkle my friend. I hate irony. Almost as much as I hate you, she said to the unicorn named Twilight Sparkle. Yes, she made the unicorn answer in a squeaky voice. But now you hate me as a friend! That doesn't make any sense. Neither does friendship! Sunset turned her head and stared at a curious bystander staring at her. Mind your own business! She snapped, scaring him off. That wasn't very nice, the unicorn said. Yeah, I'm so setting you on fire when I get home. Chapter 9. A Favor for Fluttershy Sunset turned the corner and rested against the wall, taking deep, heavy breaths as she tried to recover from the sprint she had just taken. It was close by. She could still feel it, and it was only a matter of time before it found her again. Sunset wasn't sure how much longer she could keep running, her lungs burned, and her throat felt drier than the San Palomino Desert back in Equestria. Still, she couldn't stay put for long. She couldn't let herself be caught. With a deep breath, Sunset bolted down the hallway once more, leaping out of the way as one of the lockers opened up and a pair of shadowy hands tried to snatch her. The deformed, endless corridors that made up this haunting fac facsimile of Canterlot High twisted on into the darkness, and Sunset could feel herself nearly tripping on the unseen holes in the floor beneath her. Turning onto a staircase that stretched on into infinity, Sunset could hear the flapping of wings growing ever closer as she ran. Come out, come out, little son! I thought you wanted friends! That's arguable, Sunset thought as she began taking the steps three at a time. Just as she finally reached the top, something grabbed her by the leg, pulling her back down several steps. She dreaded what she would find when she turned around and decided to just blindly kick at her target. Her boot collided with something, and it let out a slow moan as it released her. 
When Sunset had safely reached the second floor again, she chanced to look back and saw that she had kicked Applejack in the face. Only, Applejack looked like she had barely registered the kick as painful. In fact, her expression was completely vacant, and when she opened her eyes, Sunset was horrified to see them glossed over with a familiar, teal coloring. Applejack moaned again and began climbing after Sunset, who tore into a run, wanting to distance herself from the zombie as quickly as she could. Unfortunately, as she ran, more and more zombified students began to crop up, coming out from within the lockers and pouring out of classrooms, lumbering after her. The entire school was filled with their bone-chilling groans, making Sunset hold her palms over her ears. Yet the noise persisted, and above the moaning, she could still hear the wing beats of her true predator. She turned down another hallway and was devastated to see it was a dead end. There was only one other door, and it opened up to reveal one more zombie. Flash Sentry. He trudged forward, mouth agape, forcing Sunset back until she remembered the pubescent army marching towards her, locking her in. You know, Flash groaned, they always ask me why I was dating you. I said I thought I might be able to make you a better person. I guess I was wrong. Clenching her fists, Sunset charged forward, knocking him aside and finding sanctuary in the small classroom beyond. She shut the door and dragged the teacher's desk over to barricade it, just as the moans and fists of her stalkers pressed against the other side. Sunset leaned against the desk, panting, This can't be happening. It just can't. Oh, it's happening, all right, a demonic voice whispered into her ear. A pair of claws grabbed her by the shoulders and flipped her around, bringing Sunset face to face with her monstrous other half. Her red skin seemed to glow against the nearly pitch-black background and was complemented by her fiery hair and tail. The demon lifted Sunset up into the air, flapping her wings as they rose higher and higher, revealing her sharp fangs as she grinned viciously. Hiya, sweetheart! Miss me? You know, you can't just run away from yourself! Sunset gazed into her maniacal blue eyes, too terrified to speak. The demon just laughed, then opened her mouth wider. Inside of her throat, gl glowing intensely, Sunset's eyes widened in horror as she realized what was about to happen. Just as the fire erupted, Sunset was able to scream. Sunset shot up from her mattress, drenched in a cold sweat, struggling to choke down a gasp of air. Her entire body shook, both from fear and from the chill wind that had swept through the factory. She hugged herself to try and retain some warmth and to stop her violent shivering. <sighs> Another nightmare. Sunset had been having them on and off ever since the night of the dance, and they were always one or two, one of two scenarios. Either Sunset was being chased by the demon and the zombified students of her school, or she was the demon, killing off students with psychotic glee. As much as Sunset wanted to blame the elements and pass it off as some side effect to her curse, she knew this was probably more psychological than anything. She reasoned that it stemmed from her guilty conscience, giving her more reason to hate it. When, she shiv when her shivering finally stopped, Sunset relaxed her arms, bringing them to her sides, leaning back in a casual manner. Her hand brushed against something soft, and she pulled up the pink unicorn that she had left on her bed hours earlier. Right. You. Sunset had every intention to burn it when she had gone in home. She had just sat down with the lighter and was fully prepared to watch it go up in smoke. Instead, she just sat there, staring at it for an hour before deciding to do it later. She wasn't sure what was stopping her, but she knew whatever it was, she would get over it eventually and burn the stupid toy. Sunset stared at it for a while longer before, hur before hurling it against the far wall. It smacked against it and tumbled to the floor without so much as a peep. Sunset fell back against her pillow, staring at the ceiling, while she rested her hands beneath her head. In a squeaky voice, she said, Maybe you'll feel better if you talk about your problems. She climbed back into a sitting position and glared at the plushie, barely visible in the darkness. Nobody asked you! But I just want to help! I like helping people, even if it's none of my business! Yeah, that's a really annoying trait you have, princess. Sunset put a hand to her head and glanced at her alarm clock. 4.32 in the morning, and I'm talking to a stuffed animal. I may have finally reached rock bottom. On the bright side, you can only go up from here! Yep, I've lost it. At 7 o'clock, Sunset dragged herself out of bed, having gotten only another hour of sleep after tossing and turning the rest of the night. Fighting the urge to project her thoughts onto the Twilight Sparkle toy. After a cold shower and a mediocre breakfast, she was starting to run low on food again. She headed out the door, backpack over her shoulder, and eyes bloodshot. 
It was another cold, crisp autumn morning, and the small tears in Sunset's jacket allowed the cool air to snake through and nip at her skin. She felt she, she could feel goosebumps rise on her arms, and was now grateful she had chosen to wear jeans today. The sun rose over the neighborhood Sunset journeyed through, bathing everything in its fresh light. Gold rays streamed through the red and orange leaves that fell from the trees, coating the ground in a colorful camouflage. <sighs> Sunset let out a yawn, trying to admire the beautiful sight, but it was too marred by lack of sleep to fully appreciate it, though she did enjoy the melodic crunch of the dying leaves under her boots. Drawing close to the school, she could hear the mindless babble of her congregating peers as they gathered together at the front entrance, greeting each other and making plans for the weekend. It was with a frown that Sunset realized she was about to endure another weekend without anything to do. Well, other than burn Twilight Sparkle to a crisp. Walking onto campus, Sunset heard a small, hesitant voice that forced her to stop. Please, won't you volunteer at the local animal shelter? Help those who can't help themselves. Oh, please, would you like to? No? Oh, that's okay then. Crap! Sunset inwardly screamed. She had completely forgotten about Fl Fluttershy's weekly and pathetic attempts to garner attention for the animal shelter. This was normally the time Sunset would walk up to her, mock her for being so fragile and quiet, and then go about her merry day. Instead, Sunset stomped over for an entirely different reason. Approaching Fluttershy, Sunset choked out, I'd like to volunteer. Fluttershy took a small step back, looking both startled and confused. You... you would? But I thought you didn't like animals. Sunset tightened her jaw. Yes, I would. And no, I don't. Then... why are you volunteering? Because you asked. Fluttershy kept the stack of paper she was holding close to her chest with one hand, while she used her other to play with her hair. Well, um, if... if you really want to... Fluttershy gave Sunset a, a look of sad innocence. This isn't some mean joke, is it? Despite all of the mean things she could pen potentially do to Fluttershy at the shelter, Sunset knew she wouldn't stoop that low. She may dislike animals, but she wasn't going to abuse any. She had technically been one. No, it isn't, I promise. Fluttershy instantly brightened up to levels Sunset had rarely seen. Okay, then. She practically squealed. She handed Sunset a flyer. Here are the directions. Do you think you could come by tomorrow around, maybe around eight? Sunset sighed. Yeah, sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're going to have fun. I promise. We'll just wait until you see all the cute baby puppies and stray kittens and... Sunset tuned her out as she walked away, stuffing the flyer in her coat pocket. Well, at least I have plans for the weekend now. The day had progressed in a relatively smooth fashion, which Sunset was fortunate enough to not run into anyone undesirable, at least until she was on her way to lunch. She had stowed her bag into her locker and was following the crowd into the cafeteria when she, when she caught Miss Celestia in the corner of her eye. She quickly tried to avert her attention somewhere else and blend in with the students, but the damage had been done. Miss Shimmer, may I see you for a minute? Damn. Sunset slumped her shoulders and skulked over to Celestia, who was waiting with her arms crossed. Care to explain where you disappeared to yesterday? I was walking Twilight Sparkle home after I helped her stop crying her eyes out. Celestia gave her a skeptical look. Really? That seems... uncharacteristically nice of you. Yes, really, Sunset said moodily, and trust me, it was a one-time thing. There was a tapping noise that came from Celestia's foot as she continued to regard Sunset. Well, I suppose I can let it go this time, since you did help a fellow student. But no more ditching detention, understand, young lady? Yes, Aunt Sunset answered, rolling her eyes ever so slightly. Good. Sunset's face and uh, Celestia's face and voice softened. Now, are you all right, Sunset? Is there anything you'd like to talk about? Sunset looked up into her face, taken aback by the sudden personal inquiry. In that moment, Sunset could see her mentor smiling down at her and making sure everything was all right in her tiny little world. Sunset was almost compelled to break right there and tell Celestia everything. Apologize for the things the principal knew nothing about. Apologize for things that happened in Equestria, hoping that, somehow, her old teacher would feel the apology as well. Sunset was almost compelled. Instead, she shook her head and said no to both questions. Are you sure? Celestia asked. Not really. Sunset pinched the bridge of her nose and sighed in frustration. Forget it. Just forget it. I just... I don't want to talk about anything. Before Celestia could ask another question, Sunset broke into a fast walk, making her way to lunch. 
After grabbing a tray of food and seating herself at her lonely corner table, Sunset closed her eyes and took a moment to gather her thoughts. What was with everyone suddenly wanting to know about our personal life? It wasn't like it was any of their business anyway. Taking up her fork, Sunset absentmindedly picked at her salad, her appetite now gone. People really need to keep their noses out of my affairs. Twilight dropped down into the seat next to her. Hey, I heard you were going to help Fluttershy tomorrow at the animal shelter. That's really nice of you. Sunset looked up at the ceiling. Seriously? Looking back at Twilight, she asked coolly, First of all, what makes you think you can just sit here? And second, what's with your obsession of whether or not I'm nice? Twilight smirked. It's a free school. I can sit wherever I want, she said playfully, matching Sunset's snark. And I am not obsessed. I just said that was a really nice thing of you to do. Sunset made a violent stab at a piece of lettuce. Yep, yeah, don't remind me. Okay, I'm not obsessed, but I am confused. Why do you act like every nice thing you do is somehow a bad thing? Or that you don't want to do it? Because I don't want to do it. Twilight scrunched her face, looking thoroughly perplexed. Then why do you do them? Feeling no pressure on her throat, Sunset grinned, mostly to herself. Let's just say I'm clearing my conscience. Well, okay, Twilight said, sounding more confused than before. Hey, Sparkle, want to do me a favor? Sure, Twilight said brightly. Sunset turned, looking into her shining violet eyes. Go away. Twilight pouted in an unamused fashion, but stood up, taking her tray with her. Fine, but, uh, I'd watch out for Rainbow Dash. She doesn't seem too happy with you. With a nod of farewell, farewell, Twilight returned to the other table where, sure enough, Rainbow Dash was staring Sunset down with a fervent intensity. Gee, I can't imagine why, Sunset muttered to herself, returning to her salad. As the school day came to an end, Sunset found herself mopping floors once more, ordered to finish the job she should have done yesterday. The students had fled from the school faster today than the previous, no doubt because of the welcoming weekend and all of the promises it held. For Sunset, it was just a promised a day of helping the spineless chicken pick up af after an other spineless animals. Fun, fun, Sunset said, her voice oozing with false enthusiasm. She brought the mop back and forth across the hallway, backing up as she cleaned. It was horribly dull work. Hey! A voice cracked through the calming quiet. Sunset turned around and found Rainbow Dash standing at the end of the hall, arms folded, looking like someone had spit in her sports drink. Caution, wet floors, Sunset said in a bored tone. Unfolding her arms, Rainbow marched down the hall, her fists now balled at her sides. She didn't stop until she was inches away from Sunset, who could now smell her disgusting sweat. What are you planning? Rainbow growled through her teeth. I have no idea what you're talking about, Sunset answered calmly, and I suggest you back up out of my face. Instead, Rainbow grabbed Sunset by the arms and pinned her against the lockers, making them rattle with enough noise to wake the dead. Quit lying to my face, Rainbow snarled. I know you're planning something for tomorrow. Why else would you offer to help Fluttershy? Maybe I'm just trying to be a nice person. Sunset couldn't help but grin in a nefarious manner. Bullshit! Such language, Dash. Not very appropriate for a school setting. Rainbow brought her up and slammed her against the lockers again, wiping off Sunset's smile. She glared darkly at Rainbow. All right, I'm done being nice. You have three seconds to let go of me, or I will get violent. One? Their eyes locked once again, each one daring the other to continue with their gambit. Rainbow's grip didn't slacken, and the fire in her eyes never died. Two? Sunset would have loved to kick Rainbow's butt all across the campus, but she wasn't in the mood to get expelled. Had they been anywhere else, Rainbow would be on the ground already. Still, if she didn't let go, Sunset wasn't afraid to use aggression. Just as Sunset was about to reach three, Rainbow released her arms and took a step back, looking angrier than ever. Smart move, Dash. Sunset rolled her shoulders. Pointing a finger, Dash said, The only reason I'm letting you go is because everyone else has some stupid idea about, you g about giving you the benefit of the doubt, and I'd look bad if I'd beat your face in before tomorrow. She took a step forward. But I'm warning you, if you hurt Fluttershy, if you hurt any of them, well, let's just say I won't be going to graduation because I'll be doing time. You won't be going at all. Before, su before Sunset could come up with a retort, Rainbow turned on her heel and stomped away, looking back only to show Sunset she meant business. Impressive threat, Dash, Sunset whispered, leaning against the locker. She frowned. But why? Three weeks ago, Rainbow hadn't been on speaking terms with most of them. Now she was willing to fight tooth and nail for them? 
That made about as much sense as Princess Twilight deciding to defend this world instead of Equestria. Sunset picked up the fallen mop, returning to her task. That doll was right. Friendship doesn't make any sense. Chapter 10. Alpha Dogs Might Go to Heaven Sunset awoke early on Saturday, her eyes lined with sleep dust and her hair a wild mess. She groaned as she sat up in her bed, rolling out the stiffness in her neck and shoulders. Maybe it was just her, but her mattress felt like it was getting more uncomfortable every night. Her clock read seven, giving Sunset exactly an hour to get ready before she would be forced to the animal shelter to help Fluttershy. She shuddered, thinking about all the smelly animals she would have to pretend to care about. Rising from her mattress, Sunset stretched herself out before starting her mor morning routine of bathing and getting dressed. She would hate to be dragged down to the shelter looking like a frizzy-haired troll. By the time she had finished her cereal, it was 7.45. As she put her bowl in the sink, Sunset wondered what would happen if she headed for the shelter on her own accord. Would she still feel that jolt down her spine and lose basic control of her functions until she arrived at her destination? She walked back upstairs to grab her jacket, also curious as to how anyone there would, be res would respond to her wearing leather. On her way out, Twilight Sparkle squeaked, Have a good time! Sunset paused in the doorway and beat her palm against her forehead. Stop it, stop it, stop it! You are not doing yourself any mental favors! She looked back at the plushie sitting on her desk. You're ash when I come home. Butting down on her tongue was the only way Sunset made it downstairs without having Twilight Sparkle comment back. It was another cool day with the wind whistling through the alley outside Sunset's factory home. She shut the door tight behind her and started down the road, pulling out the flyer Fluttershy had handed her. The shelter wasn't too far from where Sunset was, so she decided she'd just walk the distance instead of paying for the bus fare. Kicking an empty soda can as she walked, Sunset felt like it was another day of school, only the street was completely devoid of any other students. She envied them and their good fortune in being able to sleep in on a Saturday morning. An odd tingle crawled down Sunset's spine. Not like the sudden jolt she would normally receive, but like someone was trying to tickle her. Curious, she stopped walking, trying to test the limits of her enchantment. Finding that she wasn't being forced to continue, Sunset tried to turn around and walk back home. Unfortunately, that's when the jolt returned and Sunset was, once again, being dragged down the road, robbed of her free will. Okay, so if I do something preemptively, I can stay in control, but if I try to get out of it, then I'm forced into it. Hmm, I should probably write this stuff down. The animal sh shelter was a square, nondescript building thrown in between two other stores. In fact, if it weren't for her curse, Sunset might have walked right past it. The only thing that, ad that identified it were the words Canterlot Animal Shelter and Rescue Center, printed in the window. Sunset stepped into a rather bland-looking waiting room, decorated with only a coffee table and a few chairs. From the back, however, she could hear the cries of several animals, most notably dogs. She approached the counter and tapped the bell, wondering if anyone could even hear the chime over the dissonance in the back room. Evidently they could, as Fluttershy appeared from the back door, wearing a white overcoat that gave her a very professional look. Sunset! Fluttershy said with surprise. You actually came! You thought I wasn't going to show? Um... Well, not really. Fluttershy grew quiet, looking down at her shoes. Sunset couldn't entirely blame her. She never would have considered ever doing this in the past. She shrugged it off and said, Well, I'm here now. What do you want me to do? Fluttershy perked up, smiling from ear to ear. Oh, it's really easy. We just need to take care of the animals that are here today. Feed them, play with them, bathe them, and make sure they're given some love. Yeah. Easy. Sunset rolled her eyes. Well then, let's get this over with. She made a move to advance, but Fluttershy stepped in her path. Um, are you sure you want to do this? I, I mean, it's great that you're here, but, um, if you don't want to be here... Fluttershy, I said I was going to help, so I'm going to help. Besides, I'm not sure if I can leave anyway. Brightening up again, Fluttershy took Sunset by the arm. Then, let's go! First, you will need an overcoat. Oh, and I should introduce you to my supervisor. Fluttershy dragged Sunset through another door, leading to a small office, overcrowded with filing cabinets and a small desk, where an older woman sat doing paperwork. She had a navy blue skin tone and a sea green hair pulled into a tight bun. On her face was a pair of reading glasses, giving her the appearance of a typical librarian. She looked up at Sunset and narrowed her eyes. Miss Tenderheart, this is Sunset Shimmer, Fluttershy said, missing the cold glare Sunset was receiving. Oh... So this is the girl who sends Fluttershy to me almost every day in tears, she said in a steely voice rising from her chair. Sunset forced a nervous laugh and put on a fake smile. 
She was now aware of her breakfast, churning in her stomach like a raging sea. <laughs> um, well, about that. Miss Tenderheart was advancing on her, wagging her finger in a scolding manner that Sunset normally would have found ridiculous, but the anger in the woman's eyes seemed to make it threatening. Do you know what you've put her through? I can't believe you would show your face around here. Miss Tenderheart, Fluttershy squeaked, and wearing leather of all things. This is some kind of joke to you, isn't it? Well, there's no way I'm letting you anywhere near any of these poor animals. Sunset was backing against the door, feeling incredibly small against Miss Tenderheart's intimidating demeanor. Her tongue was glued to the inside of her mouth, preventing her from saying anything in her defense. Not that Sunset could come up with anything anyway. Fluttershy threw herself in between the two before Miss Tenderheart could yell anymore. Please, Miss Tenderheart! Sunset said she was sorry! She's trying to be a better person now and really wants to help! Miss Tenderheart scoffed and gave both girls a lidded stare. I'll believe that when I see it. She refocused her fiery glare back on Sunset, admitting a small growl before speaking again. Mm, I've got my eye on her. If she puts one toe out of line. She left the threat hanging in the air, returning to her desk. Well, you're not the only one, Sunset thought bitterly. Miss Tenderheart's daggers glared there, thoroughly reminding her of Rainbow Dash. Fluttershy grabbed a coat from the nearby rack and quickly ushered Sunset out the door. She handed Sunset the white lab coat, her cheeks flushed with the same pink tone as her hair. I'm so sorry about that. I, I am... I didn't know she would react like that. Sunset tried to shrug it off, but found something about Miss Tenderheart's words unnerved her. Before Fluttershy could open the back door, Sunset asked, Did I really make you come here in tears every day? Fluttershy he hesitated, her back to Sunset. Oh, no, not every day. Just, well, most days. There was a pregnant pause in which Sunset felt the seconds drag into years. Had she really caused Fluttershy so much pain that she came crying to her volunteer work almost every day for the last three years? Had Sunset truly been that detached from the well-being of those around her? Well, yeah, it's not like anyone else matters in this world. Whatever happens to them is their own problem. Sunset ran a hand through her hair. No wonder Rainbow hated her. She was compelled to say something to Fluttershy, but when she came back to reality, Sunset found she had already gone into the next room. Sunset followed suit and was greeted to a cacophony of dogs barking with a few cat cries mixed in. The room was really just a long hallway, with large kennels lining both sides of the walls. Each kennel was filled with, a, with food and a water bowl, a few pet toys, a bed, and an animal pressing its face against the bars. Fluttershy giggled as she stopped at each cage, unlocking the doors and leading the animals out like the Pied Piper. They jumped and nipped at her heels, begging for her love and attention, completely ignoring Sunset. Not that she had much of a problem with that. So, what exactly is the plan here? Sunset asked, marveling at the crowd amassed around Fluttershy. It was then she noticed some of the animals were adorned with cuts and bruises. There was a dog with its paw bandaged up, and a cat that was missing half of its fur. Looking up from the German shepherd she was petting, Fluttershy said, Well, I'm going to take them all back so they can stretch and exercise. While I'm back there... Could you clean the cages and refill, refill their food and water bowls? Yeah, sure. Of the two, Sunset thought she was probably getting the easier job. Fiery-headed demon! Sunset glared at Fluttershy, who had turned her back to the furry fan club. What did you call me? What? Oh! Fluttershy clasped her hands over her mouth, blushing furiously again. That wasn't me! It was Sunset's evil! Rawr! There was a fluttering of wings, and Sunset felt something slap her face as it flew by, perching it itself on Fluttershy's shoulder. It was bright green, with a yellow belly and a large curved beak. Sunset's evil! Sunset! She's evil! Fluttershy stroked the parrot under the chin. Um, Sunset, this is Peter, Miss Tenderheart's parrot. Of course he is, Sunset deadpanned. Fluttershy fidgeted, doing her usual nervous tell of hiding her face in her long hair. He may sometimes pick up some words, Miss Tenderheart, and I say, I'm sorry. <sighs> Just show me where the food and stuff is, Sunset snapped, not in any mood to hear why even a parrot was bad-mouthing her. After Fluttershy showed her to the supply cabinet, Sunset took the broom and dustpan, watching Fluttershy lead the rest of the stray animals through another door. As she exited, Peter turned his head to look back. Evil demon! Rawr! Sunset clenched her jaw until her teeth hurt. She severely hoped that the bird hadn't heard that from Fluttershy initially, for her sake. Once more, Sunset found herself sweeping up floors and doing other menial chores. 
How has my life deteriorated to this? She thought as she swept dog poop out of one of the lower cages. She wanted to think that it could be worse, but she was hard-pressed to think of a more depressing situation she could be in. How can Fluttershy do this, day in and day out? Trading the broom for the bag of food, Sunset's thoughts turned dark as she reflected on what Miss Tenderheart and Fluttershy had said. She imagined Fluttershy filling up the food bowls with these filthy pets, silently sobbing over the cruel things Sunset had done to her. Out of everyone at Counterlot High, Sunset had been especially vicious and obscene towards her. It wasn't out of spite or hatred or anything of the like. Fluttershy just made it so... easy. Though hardly anyone ever stood up to Sunset, Fluttershy practically rolled over when she had claimed dominion over the school. With their friendship broken up, no one ever came to Fluttershy's defense, and she did nothing but mule in terror whenever Sunset confronted her. Perhaps it was her lack of a spine that drew Sunset towards her. Sunset cringed as she thought of every underhanded trick and bullying act she had committed against Fluttershy. Verbal abuse, borderline physical abuse, lying, blackmail, damaging her personal belongings, crumpling her homework, stealing things from her locker, even threatening to report her animals to Principal Celestia if she didn't follow orders. Sunset's only saving grace was that she had never threatened to physically hurt them. Still, that didn't make up for anything else she had done. Out of everyone, Fluttershy had the most right to not forgive and forget. And yet, she had, just like the others, barring Rainbow. Fluttershy had forgiven Sunset of her transgressions, and welcomed her with open, if not hesitant, arms, though Sunset supposed she had every reason to be wary. Looking down, Sunset realized she was pouring too much food into one of the silver dishes, creating a mountain of doggy kibbles. She sighed and started scooping some back into the bag with her hand. Kindness. That was the element Twilight Sparkle had called out when she had addressed Fluttershy. Is that what this is, then? Is she just fulfilling her role as the bearer of kindness? No. She was always nice, even before that princess showed up. She isn't defined by her element. She defines her element. She's just naturally kind and forgiving, which makes her so easy to walk over. A long time ago, Sunset had, affir had affirmed not to do any favors for anyone unless it had helped her as well. When she'd come to Counterlot High and saw Fluttershy, she doubled her conviction. Being nice to everyone would get you nowhere. However... Being cold and callous had proven to only get you so far, and the fall from the top of the hill had been much harder. As, sun as Sunset continued to ponder over Fluttershy's disposition and her own moral dilemmas, she methodically continued her ordained task, giving each kennel fresh food and water, paying close attention so she didn't make another mess. Lost in her own world, she didn't hear the soft pitter-patter of small paws breaking across the hard floor. So when something wet licked the back of her leg, Sunset jumped a foot into the air, scattering kibbles across the tile. She turned around and glared down at the small dog sniffing her boot. It looked, it looked up at her with large eyes and a twitching nose, regarding her curiously. Shouldn't you be outside with the others? Go on, shoot. Sunset tried to wave it off with her hand, but the dog stayed firmly in place, wagging its tail. Sunset narrowed her eyes, taking note of the creature in front of her. She wasn't sure what type of dog it was, but it looked rather scrawny, like it hadn't had a decent meal in some time. It had a shabby white coat and a brown circle around its left eye. Sunset's heart dropped a little as she looked at its long ears and saw one of them appeared to be torn. She knelt down on one knee, trying to take a closer look, but that was when the dog took a few tentative steps backwards. She eased one hand forward, saying, Hey, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. The dog leaned forward, smelling the kibbles on Sunset's hand, and began to lick her palm scooting a little closer. Sunset reached with her other hand and scratched the back of its neck. See, I'm not a... <clears throat> Sunset's tongue held fast, unable to finish a sentence she knew wasn't true. She was a monster, but maybe she didn't always have to act like one. After the dog had grown satisfied from licking the residue off of Sunset's hand, she gestured to the fallen kibbles around them. So, want to help me out a little? The dog barked and quickly snapped up the stray pieces of food, allowing Sunset to finish her job. Afterwards, Sunset led it through the door at the back and found a large, spacious enclosure, shaded by the two buildings standing on either side of the animal shelter. Toys were littered about across the green grass, which had been flattened in several places from dogs rolling in it. A separate area had been fenced off for the cats and filled with scratching posts and fake mice. To her amusement, Sunset found Fluttershy down on all fours playing tug-of-war with another dog. Upon seeing Sunset approach, Fluttershy dropped the toy from her mouth and jumped to her feet, blushing again. Oh, um, you're all finished? 
Sunset nodded. Yep. She pointed to the small dog that had followed her out. I found this little guy wandering around inside. Fluttershy gasped. Oh, Spot, I was wondering where you had run off to. Spot? Really? Spot wagged his tail at Fluttershy before picking up a chew toy and darting off. Sunset watched him before taking an interest in all of the other strays milling about, either lounging around in the grass or partaking in some activity, like chasing their own tail or playing tug-of-war with another dog. A frown appeared on Sunset's face as she noticed something about a few of the dogs and even a few cats. Why do some of them have bruises like that? Fluttershy sighed and hunched over, her eyes downcast. Some people take their anger out on poor animals. We don't just take in lost or stray ones. We have to rescue pets that are being abused as well. A tear rolled down her cheek. It's not fair. Hurting something that can't defend itself. Why didn't you ever defend yourself, Fluttershy? Why'd you let me treat you so bad? Fluttershy's came out as a hoarse whisper. I thought if I didn't do what you said, you might... You might... Take it out on your pets? Her silence was an answer enough for Sunset. She would have liked to think that her threats against animals were hollow, but after throwing a fireball at five students, Sunset wasn't sure if there was a line she wouldn't have crossed. Fluttershy, I... I just wanted to say... Everything I did to you... I'm sorry. Her stomach churned. Apologizing from her heart still made her feel nauseous. Staring with large, doe eyes, Fluttershy looked at Sunset like she had transformed into a magnificent butterfly. You really mean it? Surprisingly, yes, Sunset said with melancholy. I was pretty horrible to you, even when you compare it to what I did to the rest of the school. I don't know how you dealt with it for all those years. Fluttershy looked away, but not before Sunset saw the grim expression cross her face. She hugged herself and said in a barely audible voice, Sometimes, I didn't think I could deal with it anymore. Sometimes, I didn't want to. The last sentence struck Sunset in the heart, cutting into the conscience she was still just becoming aware of as she fully grasped the underlying meaning in Fluttershy's words. Please tell me you didn't really consider. There was a weak nod, Fluttershy still keeping her back to Sunset. It was never for long periods of time. Just briefly, when I would fall asleep. This, she gestured to the dogs playing in the grass, was all I had to look forward to every day. But it was enough. If I left, who would give them the love and care they needed? Sunset leaned against the back wall, feeling numb. She couldn't decide what was worse. Actively trying to kill six human beings. Or knowing that she had indirectly caused one of them to contemplate doing it to themselves. Fluttershy, she said breath breathlessly. I'm so sorry. I, I never bothered to think how far I, I could have pushed some of you. When Fluttershy didn't respond, Sunset continued, which makes me even more confused on why you forgave me. Out of everyone, why don't you hate me the most? Fluttershy finally turned around, tears flowing down her cheek. Despite this, she put on a soft smile. Because... Everyone deserves to be shown a little kindness. The rest of the day wasn't as bad as Sunset had originally anticipated. She and Fluttershy had ta talked for a while longer, and while Sunset couldn't call her a friend just yet, she was slowly beginning to understand why Equestria, why both worlds, put so much value in friendship. Spending time with someone and just talking about normal things actually felt... nice. It might have felt better if Peter the Parent hadn't been constantly flying around, screeching obscenities at Sunset. Monster or not, Sunset wanted to strangle the bird. After the animals had gotten their morning exercise, Sunset and Fluttershy had proceeded to bathe them, a chore that proved to be both difficult and messy for all involved. Twice, Sunset had been knocked into the tub they had used to bathe the dogs, coming out covered with stray hair and shampoo. When Fluttershy had burst out laughing the second time, Sunset accidentally sprayed her with the hose. From there, everything had quickly dissolved into a full-scale water war, leaving both girls soaked and shivering. When they waited back inside to put the animals back in their kennels and dry off, Miss Tenderheart had handed them towels, eyeing Sunset with a little less hostility. Both girls sat outside under the afternoon sun, wrapped in their towels and cupping mugs of hot chocolate in their hands. Since there were no spare clothes, both of them had to make do with simply drying off naturally. 
Well, Sunset said evenly after taking another sip of her warm drink, I suppose today was not as horrible as I thought it was going to be. Is that just your way of saying you had a fun time? Fluttershy asked. Mm, more or less. Sunset lifted her cup to hide the thin smile crawling along her face. Don't get any ideas, though. This was just a one-time thing. Probably. Fluttershy beamed at her. Well, thank you for all your help, Sunset. I appreciate it. Sunset lowered her cup, frowning her, furrowing her brows slightly. That's what I don't get, though. You and Miss Smiles a lot over there seem to handle everything pretty fine. Why do you need volunteers? Brushing a, sta a strand of wet hair out of her face, Fluttershy said, It's kind of an idea we had. You see, we thought if we asked people to come and volunteer instead of just outright asking them to adopt, they might feel less pressured by volunteering if they get to really connect with one of the animals before taking it home. She let out a content sigh, and it's always nice to have someone split the work with you once in a while. Hmm, I see. Sunset nodded. That brings up my next question. Where are the rest of your friends? Fluttershy blew at some of the steam curled, uh, curling out of her mug. They were all busy today, and besides, most of them already have pets. But they do volunteer every now and then. So does Miss Celestia. Celestia comes here? Mm-hmm. She's a big animal lover. Sunset smirked, reminded of her former, former teacher and the phoenix she kept as his pet. Sunset was finding more similarities between the two personas every day. They sat for another hour, neither of them saying much, opting to enjoy the cool fall sunshine and hot chocolate instead. When Sunset felt her clothes were dry enough to walk home, she stood up and discarded her blanket. Well, Fluttershy, I will be taking my leave now. Again, it wasn't a complete waste of my time. Fl Fluttershy nodded up at her. Thank you for volunteering. I think some of the animals even like you. And, um, thank you for apologizing like that. That meant a lot, too. Sunset turned, scrunching her face. Don't thank me for that. I shouldn't have hurt you like that in the first place. But you realized your mistake and apologized for it. Even that should be recognized. So thank you. Shoving her hands into her pockets, Sunset marched towards the building. I'll see you around, Fluttershy. She made her way through the holding room, glancing at some of the dogs wag their tails while they watched her pass by, barking in joy. She sincerely hoped they would all find good homes. None of them deserved to be alone. Sunset re-entered the front room, heading for the door when a loud cough caught her attention. She looked to see Miss Tenderheart standing in the doorway to her office. Peter perched on her shoulder. Well, Miss Shimmer, perhaps I was wrong about you. Maybe you're not quite as bad as I made you out to be. Pushing the door open, Sunset murmured, No. You're right. I am. Chapter 11. Blue Beating Time was now something Sunset had just a little too much of. It was only the middle of the afternoon when she exited the Canterlot Animal Shelter, hands in her pockets as she trudged down the street. She didn't feel like going home, where the only thing that awaited her was a stupid doll that she had projected her inner thoughts onto and a can of ravioli for dinner. Her heart was still rather heavy from her time with Fluttershy, and she had a feeling that lounging on her mattress would not help in the slightest. Mulling over what a horrible person she was probably wasn't healthy. Still, part of her heart couldn't just let go of the negative impact she had had on Fluttershy's life. How many others had she pushed to the brink of despair? How many had she emotionally scarred? Yet, even when keeping them in mind, part of her just didn't want to care. What was an individual's decision to her? Was it really her fault if they couldn't handle the harshness of life? Why should she care if someone was miserable or not? Because you because you were the one causing their misery. Ugh, Sunset let out a snarl of frustration, rewarding her with surprised glances from those around her. She didn't particularly care, though. She was too busy waging war with herself. For years, Sunset had cared about only herself, never stopping to look at life from another person's point of view. Why start now? Why care about any of them? She stopped and leaned against the light post, raising a hand to her heart. Because... Because... Everyone deserves to be shown a little kindness. Because despite everything I've done to them, they still want to be nice to me. Maybe it's time I really just tried to be friends with them. What's the worst that could happen? You could get hurt. Sunset pushed off the pole and continued meandering down the street, smirking ever so slightly. I'm a big girl. I think I can handle myself. She pushed, she pushed away the rest of her thoughts, tired of her inner monologue. She was just going to try and make friends, and that was the end of it. She was going to be, 
well, maybe not nice, but at least decent for a change. If only so she could look in the mirror and not see a demon staring back at her. Unconsciously, Sunset raised a hand and held it in front of her face. Staring at it, she could almost feel the claws lurking underneath, see her skin turning blood red. She shuddered violently at the memory, wanting to reject it and lock it away in the deepest region of her heart. Away with the part of her that had enjoyed it. Amidst her aimless wandering, Sunset found herself in front of Canterlot High, unsure of exactly what led her there. Familiarity, perhaps, Sunset murmured, stepping onto the campus. She moved in front of the marble, marble statue, looking up at the proud horse positioned at the top, shining in the sun with all of its majesty. Her eyes moved down to the reflective base where she caught herself looking back. Sunset never realized how much disdain and spite was held in her eyes. Out of curiosity, Sunset placed her palm on the cold, smooth surface and closed her eyes, funneling her concentration into trying to see if she could peek beyond the veil that divorced the two worlds. Just one look, just to remind me it's still there. Something. Anything. Yet, no matter how hard Sunset concentrated, all she saw was the darkness of her eyelids. She knew she probably wouldn't be able to see anything since the moon wasn't even out, but it still left a sting of disappointment. Sunset slumped to her knees, sighing heavily. Of all the places her subconscious mind could have led her, it had to be the only link to her old home. She had enough emotions rolling around through her. Now she could add homesickness to the list. She removed her palm from the marble surface, turning it into a fist before slamming it forward. She bit her tongue to stop herself from crying in pain, trying to ignore the throbbing coming from her hand. Thirty more moons, she'd be stuck here. What would she do when that time was up? Equestria would have changed so much by the time she was able to return home. Could she readjust after being gone so long? Subject herself under the new rule of Princess Twilight Sparkle? No. Never. She said, her voice heavy with black antipathy. While Sunset had resolved to at least try and be a better person, there was one being she would never cease hating as long as she lived. It burned far too bright for Sunset to just extinguish it like it was nothing. Twilight had stolen everything from her in Equestria, ruined her plans here, and then left her to languish. And now there was nothing Sunset could do to get back at her. She rose from the spot on the ground, shaking the pain out of her hand. Well, there is one thing I could do to make myself feel better. Sure, it was petty, but Sunset had already established that she was a petty person. <sighs> one more act wouldn't kill her. The sun was starting to set when Sunset finally began making her way back home. She cut through one of Canterlot's many parks, the cool evening hair tousling her hair in front of her face. She parted it out of her vision, only to find a worse sight awaiting her. Across the park in her soccer uniform was Rainbow Dash, bidding farewell to some of her teammates. Sunset's face contorted into one of disgust. She was in no mood to hear Rainbow's accusations or judgmental comments. She turned to leave, muttering to herself, There's no rule saying I have to be friends with all of them. She had only made it ten steps when Rainbow's voice pierced her ears. Hey! Where do you think you're going? I was going home, Sunset grumbled. She turned on her heel to face Rainbow, who, marching towards her like a gladiator entering an arena. Rainbow stopped short a foot away from Sunset, tapping her foot against the ground in an erratic rhythm. Well? she demanded. Sunset crossed her arms. Well what? Don't play dumb with me! Yeah, you're right, I'd probably lose. Watching Rainbow's face glow with volcanic fury gave Sunset an old feeling of satisfaction and enjoyment. Old habits die hard, it seemed. <laughs> Though Sunset argued, it wasn't completely unwarranted. Rainbow took a deep breath, her face regaining some of its original blue shade. Did you do anything to Fluttershy today? And don't try to lie to me! Not possible. No, I didn't do anything to Fluttershy today. I went in, I helped her with some animals, and I actually just talked with her. It was really kind of nice. Really? Rainbow asked skeptically. That's it? That's all you did? Yep. Sunset crossed her arms. Why? What did you think I was going to do? Something horrible, like you always do. Sunset smirked and began to circle around her. Oh, ye of little faith. I wouldn't possibly dream of doing anything that could incur your oh-so-terrible wrath. I made sure I was on my best behavior. Rainbow followed her, making sure Sunset never left her line of sight. Why does that sound like a giant lie? Because you want to believe it is. So if I call Fluttershy right now and ask her what happened, 
She'll tell me the same thing. Yes, yes, she'll tell you we danced and sang with all the little woodland creatures about friendship and whatever. Sunset broke out of her circling and started walking away, tired of Rainbow's attitude and growing bored of baiting her. If I find out you've done anything to her, I'll take you down another peg! Rainbow shouted out after her. Sunset stopped and looked over her shoulder. How about I take you down a peg right now, Miss High and Mighty? And what about all of the things you've done to her, Dash? Wh what? Rainbow looked taken aback. She wildly shook her head. I haven't done anything to her! Exactly! Sunset pointed an accusatory f finger. Where were you when I was pushing her around? When I was knocking papers out of her hand, shoving her into the lockers, and taking her lunch? Oh, that's right. You were sitting with the rest of your jock friends, pretending not to notice so you could fit in with the cool kids. Rainbow gaped at her, her face caught between shock and outrage. An odd noise escaped her throat, sounding like a pained whine. Sunset pressed on. I admit I was terrible to her, but in all those years, I never once saw you stick up for her. Sunset's eyes widened in realization. She spread her, ha spread her hands. Which is why you're trying so hard to protect her now, isn't it? You feel guilty about ditching her like that. <laughs> she snickered. That's touching, really, but it still makes you a hypocrite, doesn't it? Getting mad at me for everything I've done when you did nothing to stop it. She turned her back and started to walk off again. Face it, Dash, you're almost as bad as I am. A sharp burst of pain exploded across the back of Sunset he Sunset's head, and she found herself lying in the grass. Don't you dare compare me to you! We are nothing alike! Sunset slowly pressed her hands into the ground and pushed herself back onto her feet. She rolled her neck and growled, You really don't want to do this, Dash. Turn around so I can beat your face in, Rainbow said filling her voice with as much malice as humanly possible. Rainbow Dash, you're an idiot, Sunset cracked her knuckles. But I've been- but I really been dying to get some aggression out. Sunset dropped down and spun, sweeping her leg out and catching Rainbow in the back of her ankles, sending her to the ground. Sunset then pounced on her like a lion, but Rainbow st stuck up her knees, jabbing Sunset in the gut and throwing her onto her back. Lying on the ground, Sunset saw Rainbow jump to her feet and rush over, her fist reared back, ready to bear down on Sunset. As Rainbow came down, Sunset rolled out of the way, hearing a hand strike the dirt instead. She got to her feet and aimed a kick at Rainbow's head, but it was blocked by the back of her arm. Snarling, Rainbow threw another fist for Sunset's face, but was grabbed by the wrist as Sunset twisted her arm around and forced her to turn her back. Sunset then kicked off, sending Rainbow back to the ground. Is that all you got, Dashy? Sunset brushed off some dirt from her shoulder, looking down at her opponent. Rainbow ripped some grass out of the dirt as she rose back to her feet. I'm just getting started! She moved with such speed, all Sunset saw was a blur before something connected with her nose. She staggered back, but didn't have any time to recover as Rainbow followed up with a swift, a swift punch to her gut. Sunset stumbled backwards into a tree, holding a low branch for support and clutching her stomach with her free hand. She could feel blood beginning to drip down her nose. Alright, that was pretty good. Rainbow closed the distance, aiming a kick at Sunset's side. Sunset twisted around and raised her leg, taking the brunt of the attack with her shin. She then let go of the branch and grabbed her fi and jabbed with her fist, decking Rainbow in the eye. When she raised her hands to put pressure on the new bruise, Sunset grabbed her by the arm and turned her body again, positioning Rainbow behind herself. She clenched her teeth, ignoring the pain coming from her center, and heaved Rainbow over her shoulder, slamming the girl onto the grass. Coughing and holding her stomach, Sunset knelt down near Rainbow, who was groaning in pain. Wiping the blood from her nose on the back of her hand, Sunset could help but be impressed that Rainbow had managed to score some good hits. Then again, she was the captain of at least three different sports teams, so it didn't come off as too much of a surprise. Regaining her breath, Sunset rose, leaving Rainbow on the ground. Nice fight, Dash. Next time I won't go easy on you. Ah! As soon as Sunset had turned her back, Rainbow had smashed into her, tackling her to the ground. The two rolled across the park, kicking and scratching as they screamed at one another. You're just a persistent little gnat, aren't you? Sunset growled, digging her knuckles into Rainbow's cheek. Rainbow flipped them over, pinning herself on top of Sunset. And you're a demon that just needs to disappear! Sunset's eyes widened before they became dangerously narrow. Stop calling me that! She threw Rainbow off and pressed her down on her stomach, grabbing the back of her hair. With a malevol malevolent grin, she raised Rainbow's head and slammed it into the dirt. Once, twice three times before Rainbow freed an arm and smashed her elbow into Sunset's cheek. With Sunset's grip weakened, 
Rainbow threw her off and wobbled to her feet, wiping the blood off of her face before spinning around to give another high kick to Sunset. Sunset caught the foot in midair, briefly contemplated on breaking it. She had grown tired of this fight, and Rainbow in general. She had restrained herself from doing any long-term damage, but was now thinking Rainbow probably deserved it. The only thing holding her back was what the other girls would think. Instead, she yanked Rainbow forward and backhanded her across the face with as much force as she could muster before Rainbow fell. Hoping Rainbow would finally stay down, Sunset limped away, pressing on her nose to try and staunch the bleeding. Get back here. I'm not done with you yet. Oh, for Celestia's sake, Sunset said with a nasally voice. Looking back, she found Rainbow standing again, her left eye already swelling shut, giving her only one eye to glare at Sunset with. Rainbow, please give up before I seriously hurt you. However, Rainbow merely bar bared her teeth and raised her arms in a fighting stance. The two girls stared off at each other, Sunset dropping into a stance of her own. The sun had all but set now, with only a faint wave of pink marking the transition between day and night. Around them, the park had turned dark, a distant light post serving as the only source of illumination. Well, 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 what do we have here? A cocky female voice called from the darkness. Sunset straightened up and turned around, her eyes falling upon a tall, rather muscular girl leaning against a nearby tree. She was tanned like she had spent a little too much time at the beach, and had snow-white hair that was spiked and dyed purple at the tips, matching her eye shadow. She wore a thick brown leather jacket and a white tank top with brown cargo pants to complete her ensemble. Next to her was a lanky boy with darker skin and grayish hair that was cut just above his eyes. He wore a white t-shirt with a picture of a dumbbell. Like the girl, his gaze was mostly fixed on Rainbow. Behind Rainbow, two more boys stepped into the light of the lamppost. One was bulky and orange with brown hair, and the other was short with gray skin and black hair that fell over his eyes, similar to his companion. Rainbow Dash, the girl said slowly, an even smile decorating her face. We haven't seen you in forever. What you doing here? Picking fights? The lanky boy next to her snickered. <laughs> looks like she, looks more like she's losing them to me. Rainbow wiped some of the blood off her mouth. Gilda, she said coolly. Dumbbell, hoops, score. She addressed each of the boys in turn. The hell are you guys doing here? Gilda pushed off the tree, her cocky smile still plastered to her face. We were in the neighborhood, and we just happened to stumble onto the YouTube going at it. Then you started getting your butt kicked, and pretty hard, too. She looked at Sunset up and down before snorting. Come on, Dash, she doesn't even look that tough. How can you be losing here? Sunset rolled her eyes and looked at Rainbow. How exactly do you know these losers? A guilty expression crossed Rainbow's face, and she averted her eyes from Sunset. They were... kinda in the gang I was in for a little bit. You were in a gang? Sunset almost shouted. It was a phase! Damn right it was a phase, Gilda spat. One day she's cool, and the next she's backing out because she thinks we're a bad influence or something stupid like that. Her voice softened to its usual arrogant tone. But hey, once a griffin, always a griffin. Right, Dash? I mean, we're still pals, right? We can help you take care of this little dweeb if you want. Rainbow glared at her. No way, Gilda. This is my fight. Stay out of it. Your fight, Dumbbell laughed. Please, we saw the way she decked you in the face. You should be begging for our help. Hey, wait a minute, Score said, peering closer at Sunset. I recognize her. That's the girl who beat up Needle and Pierce. What? Gilda leaned forward, taking another look at her with her, with her eerie bird-like eyes. Oh, man, you're right. She totally fits the description. They got arrested by that stupid shining armor cop because of you. Sunset cocked her head to the side before the realization hit her. The two gangbangers from the night of the dance. <laughs> so they got arrested. Good. Gilda balled her fist. We should seriously make you pay for sending two of our boys to prison. No way! Rainbow yelled. Back off, Gilda! What? You defend her instead of one of your own? You're not one of my own, Rainbow said, her face turning red again. You guys are a bunch of thugs and thieves. I told you, I want nothing to do with you. Hmph. <laughs> Gilda pounded her fist into her open hand. You always did have a thick head, Dash. I guess we'll just have to beat some of that stubbornness out of you before you can join us again. Sunset and Rainbow retreated until they were back to back with each other, surrounded on both sides. Sunset groaned. Oh, how did I get myself into this? 
You can always run if you want, she heard Rainbow comment. Please. Sunset Shiver is no coward. Good, because I still plan on kicking your butt when this is done. Sunset smirked and put her hands up. Don't worry, Dash. We can still kill each other when this is over. Chapter 12. Working Together Oh my goodness, what happened to you? Sunset had just closed her locker door when Twilight came rushing up to her, eyes frantically looking over the various bruises on Sunset's arm and face. I got into a couple of fights, Sunset said nonchalantly. No big deal. She knew someone was going to ask about her unsightly appearance eventually, but she was surprised it had only taken about five minutes since she had walked onto campus. Somehow, she was not surprised it had been Twilight who had asked her first. A couple of fights, Twilight parroted loudly. Sunset covered her mouth and shushed her. Yes, I was fighting, and can you keep your voice down? No need to tell the whole school my business. Twilight nodded, and Sunset removed her hand. But why? Who were you fighting? What did you do? Are you still hurt? Twilight, I freaking hate you, Sunset thought, feeling the pressure on her throat rise. I kind of accidentally provoked Rainbow into hitting me, so we started fighting until some of her old gang members showed up, then we both started fighting them. Rainbow Dash is in a gang? Twilight shouted. Sunset covered her mouth again. No, she used to be the gang, and if you want to hear the story, I suggest you stop interrupting me. After Twilight muffled what sounded like an apology, Sunset removed her hands again. All right, so from the top, a loud, shrill, metallic sound, trying to pass itself off as the school bell rang at that moment, cutting Sunset's story short. She stuck her tongue out in displeasure. Well, I guess you'll be getting another story time at lunch today. Make sure you're there. As she turned to head to class, she felt Twilight gently grab her sore wrist. Okay, sure, but are you sure you're all right? Twilight asked, her voice filled with pure concern. You still look pretty hurt. Sunset yanked her wrist out of Twilight's grip. Yeah, I'm fine. Jeez, what are you, my mother? Why do you care so much? Because we're friends. <sighs> there was that F word again. Sunset couldn't help but be reminded of Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash, thinking it didn't sound as foreign as it, as it did only a week ago. While Sunset no longer abhorred the idea, the fact that Twilight could throw it around so easily mystified her. And then again, Sunset hadn't done anything to deserve her ire yet, and in return, Sunset had no hatred left to throw in Twilight's direction. Just a dull apathy for her looking like the princess counterpart that had condemned Sunset. Yeah, Sunset murmured, walking off the class. Maybe we are. Rainbow Dash, what in tarnation happened to you? Applejack hissed, taking her seat next to her friend in the back of their math class. Rainbow looked up from, from her absent-minded doodle in her notebook, her other hand self-consciously moving towards her black eye. Oh, uh, well, don't try lying to me. Darn it! Rainbow sighed and set her pencil down, looking Applejack in the eyes. Okay, truth is, me and Sunset may have gotten into a few fights. A few fights! Applejack shouted. Rainbow quickly covered her mouth and was thankful the teacher hadn't come in yet. Gee, AJ, why don't you just tell the whole school while you're at it? Applejack swatted her hand away. Sorry, sorry, my bad, but why on earth were you two fighting in the first place? Wasn't she supposed to be helping Fluttershy on Saturday? Her eyes widened in horror, and Rainbow could only imagine the wild thoughts running up around in her head. Don't tell me Sunset did something! No, Rainbow dismissed Applejack's delusions with a slow wave of her hand. Look, like much of her body, it was still sore and hard to move. No, she didn't do anything this time. Rainbow sank into her chair, looking deflated and absent of her usual gusto. It was... my fault. Well, mostly. Applejack cocked her head to the side. What do you mean? Rainbow took a deep breath, then exhaled as slow as she could, trying to stall from her story. She was ashamed of what had led to the brawl in the park. She had been ashamed since the end of freshman year. But she, had pushed, but she had pushed that shame down and ignored it by throwing herself into sports and outdoor activities, paying them hardly any mind. Just like Fluttershy. It wasn't until Sunset's words had ripped all of those feelings and memories out and dragged them to the surface did Rainbow truly acknowledge them, and found, with great pain and guilt, that Sunset was right. Fiddling with her pencil, Rainbow said, I met Sunset in the park, and she said some things, things that were true, and I got mad, really mad. 
So I punched her, and the next thing I know, we're fighting in the middle of the park. Bringing a hand to her face, Applejack groaned and said, oh, I can't believe y'all would stoop to fighting. Actually, I can, so never mind. But still, what did she say that got you so riled up you had to hit her? The bell signaling the start of class drowned whatever words Rainbow was going to say. As the teacher walked in and began writing on the whiteboard, Rainbow dropped her voice to an even lower whisper, forcing Applejack to lean in close. Gee, well... She reminded me that even though she was mean to Fluttershy, I wasn't much better than her because I didn't do anything to stop it. Applejack bit her lip in a nervous manner, averting her eyes to the front of the room. Aw, oh, well, Sugar Cube, you don't have to say anything. I know she's right, Rainbow said with a depressed sigh, thinking maybe that's why she had been in a blind rage when she attacked. To be called a bad friend was one thing, but hearing it from Sunset Shimmer? That was about as cruel as irony could get. Dash, none of us were really good to each other at that time. We all just started ignoring each other, all because we were too stubborn to talk to each other in person. And, to be fair, we all just kind of left Fluttershy dangling in the wind. It ain't something I'm proud of, but don't think it was just you who made that mistake. Rainbow carefully wiped a tear from her eye. Where had that even come from? Still, I should have been there for her. I've known her since first grade. We're practically sisters. And I just ditched her, like that. Sunset was right. I am a terrible friend. Applejack put a hand on Rainbow's knee and gave her a sympathetic smile. No, you aren't, Dash. You're a great friend. You came back, didn't you? And you're trying to make up for it. Seems to me like those are some things only a good friend would do. Stupid, watery eyes. Rainbow rubbed them again on the back of her hand. Thanks, AJ. You're a great friend, too. Thanks, Sugar Cube. So, uh, if you don't mind me asking, what happened after that? Well... Miss Dash, Miss Apple, Mr. Quantum called from the whiteboard. You two seem awfully chatty this morning. Perhaps one of you would like to solve the equation on the board? Both girls stared blankly at the long algebra problem in front of them. Rainbow nervously cl cleared her throat. Uh, <clears throat> do you have any ideas? She asked Applejack from the corner of her mouth. Uh, nope. For the first time ever, Sunset found herself willingly sitting down at the same table as Twilight and everyone else. Rainbow flashed a knowing smile as Sunset took her seat in between Pinky and Twilight. Rarity looked back and forth across the table between Sunset and Rainbow, eyeing their matching bruises. Sunset could see the gears clicking in her mind and practically heard the light bulb go off when Rarity pointed fingers at the both of them and exclaimed, You two went at it, didn't you? What? Fluttershy gasped. That's how you two got all those wounds? By fighting each other? Pinky nibbled on her carrot stick. Why are you both so surprised? Rarity gave her an incredulous look. Why are you not surprised? Pinky rolled her eyes like it was the most obvious thing in the world. Because Sunset is, or was, the bully, and Rainbow is the jock. Everyone knows that if they aren't working together already, the only way for them to be friends and gain each other's respect is to fight in one-on-one -on -one fisticuffs. Duh! Well, it wasn't exactly one-on-one, -on -one, Sunset said. We had some unexpected company. Whoa! Plot twist! Pinky said, her eyes widening in interest. Now I gotta hear this! Yes, Rarity nodded. Please give us the details of this little bout. Sunset looked over to Rainbow, who gave a simple nod of her head in confirmation. Well, after I said a few things that aggravated Rainbow a little, we started fighting it out. Sunset pointed to the bandage still resting on her nose. And as you can see, we each got some good hits in. Wait, this was a fair fight, yes? Rarity asked. Yes, it was a fair fight, Sunset snapped. At least it was until Gilda and her goons showed up. Sunset leaned to the right, grabbing Score by the arm as he rushed at her. She swung with all her might and pushed him in, in, into Dumbbell, who was coming at her at the same time. Dumble tried to skim, skid to a stop, but his momentum had been too great and the two boys crashed into each other, knocking themselves to the ground. They were only down for a second, however, and quickly scrambled back to their feet. Score rushed her again in a low tackle, while Dumbbell came around from the side. Sunset knew she was pinned, but would not be caught completely helpless. She swung her boot, the bottom catching score in the chest, stopping his forward assault. Dumbbell, however, kept coming, connecting his fist with the side of Sunset's face. She spiraled to the ground, her cheek throbbing painfully. As she tried to stand up, another strike came to the back of her head, rolling her into a patch of dirt. 
Stars st stars dotted Sunset's vision, while the grainy taste of sand mixed with the metallic tang of blood in her mouth. She spit out a mouthful and ran her tongue along the inside of her mouth, making sure she didn't have any broken teeth. All right, time to play dirty, she growled. Grabbing a handful of dirt, Sunset sprung to her feet, spinning and hurling the dirt clawed right at Dumbbell. Even, even she was surprised at how well her aim had been. The dirt hit Dumbbell straight in the eyes, and he wailed in pain as he tried to scrape it off. Sunset jumped forward and brought her legs straight up at a powerful high kick, slamming her foot into his jaw. She heard his teeth violently clash together and watched as he caught some air before falling on the ground holding his jaw. She didn't have time to catch her breath, with Score stampeding after her again with his fist reared back. She grabbed, at, she grabbed it as it flew forward, then grabbed the other one, locking both of them in place as they tried to overpower each other. Sunset felt the wind leave her as Score's foot collided with her stomach. Her eyes widened, and she tried to suck in a breath of air, only to gasp like a dying fish. She collapsed to the ground, ground again, clutching her stomach and struggling to breathe. Another kick to her side made her cry out in pain, Score striking an already tender wound. Thoughts of humiliation and defeat danced through Sunset's head when she looked up and saw Score towering over her, raising his boot to bludgeon her face. She threw her, ans her hands up, grabbing the falling footwear, stopping it just inches from her face. Her arms strained against his weight, her body still trying to recover from the last blow she had taken. Back off, dingus! From her peripheral vision, Sunset watched Rainbow leap in and shoulder tackle, tackle Score onto the ground, allowing Sunset to roll onto her stomach and push herself up. The two girls locked eyes for a second, a silent showing of gratitude passing between them. Behind Rainbow, Sunset could see Hoops lying motionless on the ground, while Gilda was getting back to her feet, blood streaming from her nose. Boy, you really like aiming for the face, don't you? Sunset asked, wiping off her own blood. Rainbow merely shrugged, putting her fists up again as Score and Gilda closed in. Wait, Rarity held up a hand. Who exactly is this Gilda character you keep mentioning? Sunset drummed her fingers against the table, an irritated expression on her face. She's another member of the gang Rainbow was in. There was a simultaneously scream of WHAT from Rarity, Fluttershy, and Applejack, while Pinky sprayed her milk across the table, hitting Rainbow in the face. Whoops! Sorry! When and why did you join a gang, Rainbow Dash? Rarity asked in a hiss. All eyes were now on Rainbow, watching as she tugged nervously on her ponytail. Around the start of sophomore year? After I thought, you know, we weren't friends anymore. I don't know how it happened. I just met Gilda at the mall one day and we just started hanging out. And when exactly were you planning on telling us? Never! I left like a year later and never looked back, Rainbow said heatedly. I didn't think I'd ever run into them again. Besides, it was none of your business. She sulked in her chair, refusing to make eye contact with anyone. Rarity's face softened. Rainbow. I don't want to talk about it, Rainbow said sourly. Sunset will probably get to it anyway. Everyone's attention turned back to Sunset, still st still tapping her fingers on the table in a steady rhythm. She gave them each a lewd glare in turn, pursing her lips in, dis in displeasure. Oh! <laughs> Rarity let a short, nervous giggle. We, uh, interrupted you. Sorry about that. May I continue? Sunset asked in a crisp tone. Y yes, please do. Sunset shook off her wariness, though her stomach still ached from the kick she had received. She and Rainbow stood shoulder to shoulder again, facing in opposite directions. Gilda strode towards them with a devilish grin on her face, and Sunset knew Score was coming from the other side. She knew she was running on fumes, but Sunset refused to be beaten by a couple of punks. With a few short breaths, she readied herself for the next round as Gilda closed the distance. Making the first move, Sunset jabbed out with her fist, only to have Gilda merely block with the back of her arm. Gilda swung out with her other hand, and Sunset ducked low, just in time for Rainbow's leg to swing over her head and kick Gilda in the cheek. While Gilda stumbled back, Sunset spun around and gave an uppercut to Score, who was still reeling from another hit Rainbow had landed moments before. He fell to his knees, and Sunset karate chopped him over the back of his head, knocking him out. Turning back, she followed Rainbow's eyes to Gilda, who was rubbing the side of her face and looking, surprisingly, amused. And then there was one. Sunset smirked, a third wind catching up to her. Heh, <laughs> you got moxie, dweeb, Gilda spat on the ground and stood up straight, still wearing a cocky grin. grin. You sure you don't want to hang with us? Nope, I don't hang around with scum like you. You're one to talk, Sunset heard Rainbow mutter under her breath. Sunset ignored her and kept her eyes on Gilda, who had finally traded her sneer for a scowl. All right, dweeb, let's see how tough you really are. 
She caught both Rainbow and Sunset by surprise with the speed at which she moved. She closed the distance between them in a few short bounds and almost caught Rainbow on the side with the front of her leg. Rainbow just managed to move her arm down in time to deflect the blow, but Gilda followed up with her fist, smashing Rainbow in the chest and sending her back a ways before turning to Sunset and bringing her foot around again. Expecting Gilda to aim for her side as well, Sunset blocked low and was re rewarded with a powerful blow to the head. She crumpled to the ground, a sharp whining noise ringing in her ears and drowning out the world around her. When the next blow didn't come, Sunset got back to her hands and knees and looked up to see Gilda and Rainbow grappling with each other in a flurry of quick punches and occasional kicks. Sunset forced herself back to her feet, giving her head a violent shake, though it did little to alleviate the high-pinched whining. Still, she willed herself to ignore it and rushed back to join the fight, not wanting Rainbow to hog all the glory. As Rainbow blocked a hard swing from Gilda, Sunset moved in from the side and slammed a fist against the side of her face. Was it a cheap shot? Yes. Did she care? Not in the slightest. Rainbow seemed to share the same opinion, for she gave Sunset a half-smile and a nod of approval. They both turned their attention back to Gilda, who mouthed something, but it just came out as in an incoherent garble to Sunset. Gilda then dropped low and swept her leg out, tripping up Rainbow. Sunset managed to react faster and jumped over her before landing and striking her own foot out, hitting Gilda in the waist. As she fell back, Sunset swung her leg again and made contact with the side of Gilda's head, throwing her to the side. Sweet revenge. Much like Rainbow Dash, Gilda seemed to only stay down for a few moments before sp springing back up again. There was a murderous look in her eyes and sh as she charged again, swinging her sharpened nails like claws. She grabbed the arm Sunset had used to block, digging her nails into Sunset's wrist and grabbed her other arm. While Sunset struggled in her iron grip, Gilda reared her head back and slammed it into Sunset, sending stars into her vision again. Her skull throbbed with pain, giving her an intense headache, borderlining on a migraine. Sunset's lack of coherent thoughts was the only justification for what she did next. With Gilda still holding onto her, Sunset jerked her forward, bringing her own head back as she did and smashed it down against Gilda's. The grip around her arms instantly disappeared, leaving Sunset to grab both sides of her head, trying to get the pulsing pain to die down. She cracked her eyes open just a little bit, still wary of Gilda, but she was holding her own head, teetering in place. Sunset blinked once and saw Rainbow in front of Gilda, striking her repeatedly in the face. STAY OUT OF MY LIFE! Rainbow shouted between each punch. With a final knee to the stomach, Gilda collapsed, groaning something that sounded faintly like TRAITOR. Sunset was aware of how quiet the park was now. Other than the sound of hers and Rainbow's breathing, nothing, se nothing seemed to stir in the darkness around them. She fell into the soft grass, welcoming the dark, silent abyss and the solitude it brought. Jeez, I'm dark when I'm exhausted. She was fully prepared to pass out when she felt someone shaking her, sh her shoulder. Sunset! Hey, Shimmer! Come on, get up! Sunset fluttered her eyes open, looking up at Rainbow, who was wearing a mask of concern. Something clicked into place in the back of Sunset's mind, and she slowly pushed herself back to her, onto her feet, holding her fists up in front of Rainbow. Right, right, all right, where were we? <clears throat> Come on, let's well, finish this, Sunset slurred a bit. Rainbow shook her head. Nah, we're done. What's the matter, scared I'll kick your butt? I'm also a tad loopy when I'm tired. Holding a hand up to her face, Rainbow said, Look, maybe, maybe you were right about what you said earlier. Sunset lowered her hands, giving Rainbow a perplexed look. What? She was honestly having a hard time recalling anything at the moment. Rainbow gestured with her hand. Come on, I'll talk about it on the way. Let's just get out of here. Can you walk? No. What? Of course I can walk. Sunset walked forward, making it only a few steps before she fell to her knees. Oh. Okay, I guess I really can't. Rainbow bent down, taking Sunset's arm and hoisting it over her shoulder. The two stood up, Sunset leaning on Rainbow as they limped out of the park. So, what were you mumbling about earlier? Something about me being right? Sunset asked. Yeah, Rainbow was silent for a while. Sunset could see the gears moving in her head, her expression solemn. I was a bad friend. Fluttershy in me. I, Sunset corrected. What? The correct pronunciation is Fluttershy and I, not me. Rainbow stopped walking and gave Sunset an incredulous look. Really? <laughs> Sunset gr grinned sheepishly. Sorry. <laughs> Continue. Thank you. The two proceeded to move down the avenue again. Anyway, Fluttershy and I have been best friends since, like, forever. And you were right. I just sat back and watched while you pushed her around because I just wanted to look cool. Rainbow sighed deeply. 
I don't know what I was thinking. I knew what I was- I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I just buried that part down so I wouldn't have to hear it. And then you go and throw it back in my face. Sunset smirked. Yeah, I could see how that might tick you off. Sunset expression shifted and she frowned in curiosity. But why join them? She jerked her head back in the direction of the park, quickly wishing she had it as it set off her head again. I don't know. After you split us up, <sighs> Sunset felt a knife twist in her heart. I just felt lost. And then I ran into Gilda and she seemed totally cool. I just started hanging out with her more and more. And I just felt like I had some place to belong again, you know? Not really. Oh, well, yeah. That's what happened. Silence returned, leaving both of them to their own thoughts. Sunset found herself once more reflecting on what her actions had caused for other people. She could now add Rainbow's decision to join a gang onto her list. She groaned inwardly, knowing that it was going to haunt her later on. She took minimal solace in the fact that it wasn't as bad as Fluttershy. Still, her own depravity went further than she had even realized. For the second time that day, Sunset felt her heart burn with shame and guilt. She bit, she bit her lip, still fighting the urge to gag as she prepared herself for what came next. Rainbow Dash, I'm sorry. At first, Rainbow didn't respond, and Sunset was afra afraid she might have to repeat herself. Apologizing once was hard enough. Ra then Rainbow turned to her and said, I'm sorry too. Sunset blinked. You're sorry? For what? For not giving you a chance. A real chance. I was just kind of going along with everyone else. I was waiting for you to mess up so I could hold it against you, or use it to justify, well, me beating you up. So? You had every right not to give me a chance. Sunset spoke in a softer voice. I wouldn't have given me a chance. Well, I'm giving you one now. Sunset brought them to a halt, removing her arm from around Rainbow. All right, I think I can walk now. Rainbow backed off a little as Sunset took a few tentative steps forward. Her entire body felt weak and sore, and before she knew it, Sunset was back on the ground. Uh, Sunset, are, are you all right? Rainbow rushed over, helping her back to her feet. She leaned on Rainbow again. Sunset shook her head and said, Not really. She waved it off with a roll of her hand and continued, I don't get it. Weren't we trying to kill each other a little while ago? Yeah, Rainbow nodded. And now, we're friends. <laughs> Sunset scoffed. Friendship is weird. Leaning back in her chair, Sunset crossed her arms in a satisfied manner. And that's pretty much it. After sitting and talking for a while, all Sunset had done was limp home and took a cold shower. So, let me get this straight, Applejack said. You two first fought each other, then fought a bunch of gang members, and now you're friends? Rainbow nodded, more or less. Applejack stared hard at the both of them for a full minute, then shrugged and said, All right, fine with me, just as long as y'all are done going at it like cats. <laughs> really? Rarity scoffed. You're really going to dismiss it just like that? Yep, Applejack nodded. They're both still breathing now, and they're friends. Sometimes, sometimes it takes a little beat town to make a friend with somebody. Rarity dropped her head in her hands. I'm surrounded by unsophisticated nitwits. Fluttershy leaned in carefully and gave Rainbow a warm hug. Don't worry, Rainbow. I never held anything against you. Rainbow frowned at her. Yeah, but Fluttershy, why didn't you ever tell me off or something? Because I wanted you to be happy, and I thought hanging out with the jocks made you happy, so... A few tears fell from Rainbow's cheeks as she returned Fluttershy's hug. No, what really makes me happy is being with all of you guys. Everyone at the tables, save for Sunset, broke out into a chorus of awes while she just pretended to gag. Thankfully, the lunch bell rang, stopping the nauseating friendship fest. They each got up from the table, discarding their trays as they exited the lunchroom. Rainbow and Sunset walked side by side into the hallway. You know, Rainbow said, I kind of feel bad about Gilda. I took some of my aggression with you out on her. <laughs> yeah, Sunset snickered. I noticed. But hey, it meant less bruises for me, so I'm not going to complain. They stopped at an intersection, leaning to go in opposite directions. Well, I guess I'll see you later then, Rainbow punched Sunset in the shoulder as a farewell. Sunset socked Rainbow back. <laughs> yeah, see ya. As they both turned away, Sunset gripped the bruise Rainbow had hit, cursing lightly. I really wish she hadn't done that. She made her way to class, unaware that Rainbow was thinking the exact same thing. Chapter 13 Sweet Melodies 
The garage door slowly cranked open, yawning louder and louder, a beast-like roar emitting from its throat. The sound cascaded down the street, filling the early morning air with its loud, ear-splitting din. To those still waking up, it was an obnoxious blare shattering the fragile morning peace. To Sunset Shimmer, it was a chorus of angels. She sat on top of the black thunderbird, revving the throttle again and again, letting the sound of thunder wash over her. She reached down with her other hand and stroked the newly painted finish, her fingers trailing over the glossy, smooth surface. I can't believe it. She's purring like a kitten, Sunset cooed. She looked down at the oil-stained young man leaning against the wall and looking quite proud of himself. Greaser, I don't know how you did it, but you're a genius. Greaser grinned. Don't tell me. Tell my mom. She thinks fixing bikes and playing in bands is a waste of my talent. He stood off the wall and shrugged. But hey, I'm just glad I could help. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea what this means to me. Sunset rested her head on the dashboard, sighing in content. No more taking public transportation or, Celestia forbid, walking everywhere. She could ride wherever she wanted, whenever she wanted. She opened an eye. By the way, what took so long? Hey, do you know how long it takes to get parts? Greaser tapped his foot against the engine. I mean, seriously, this thing is practically needed an overhaul. Why do you think I charge so much? Sunset rolled her eyes. That had taken a massive chunk out of her accumulated allowance. It was the reason she was living off of cans of ravioli and apples, and why she couldn't afford that leather jacket. Oh well, well, totally worth it. Greaser walked around the bike again, looking pleased with his handiwork. This thing was falling apart when you brought it in. I'm surprised you managed to ride it so long. What did you do? Find it in a drunkyard? Yes, Sunset said pointedly. Well, props for keeping it alive for as long as you did. Sunset pulled on the throttle again, letting her motorcycle roar with fervor. Thanks again, Grease. Walking over to his workbench, Greaser smiled. No problem, Sunset. Hey, Flash Drive is having a gig this weekend. You gonna show? Sunset scooped her helmet off the ground, focusing her gaze on the bright red painting. No. You and Flash still on cold terms? Putting her helmet on, Sunset lifted the visor and said, I don't know what we are, but I doubt he'd want to see me there. See you, see you around, Grease. Not waiting for a response, Sunset slid her visor back down and flipped the kickstand up. With a jerk of her hand, the bike took off out of the garage, hitting the street and leaving a cloud of dust and gravel in its wake. Sunset didn't want to think about the past, nor the future. She just wanted to live in the now. And right now, she was free! She raced down the street, destroying the silence of suburbs as she rode. She could feel her hair whipping behind her, the wind funneling around her body. She turned onto the main road and headed up off the ramp onto the highway, pushing the acceleration further. She weaved in and out of the morning traffic, amazed that her motor skills hadn't gotten rusty. Learning to drive hadn't been the easiest thing for Sunset, but once she got a hold of it, it became the most natural thing in the world. The road opened up in front of her, and Sunset gave her bike another burst of speed. She grinned from ear to ear under her helmet, revealing, reveling in the sense of freedom she felt. She could have just kept on going, leaving everything behind, traveling the open road to her heart's content, not having to worry about anything other than herself. She could be free in the fullest sense of the word. The idea was so very tempting to Sunset that she actually considered it, until images of six certain girls floated through her head, all of them smiling and waving at her. There was a subtle pull in Sunset's heart, like they were calling her to come back. It was a ludicrous idea that, in a previous lifetime, Sunset would have discarded without a second thought. But now that she had gotten to know them, abandoning them seemed... heartless. That, and she doubted she had enough money to pay for food and gas for very long. Over the sound of her engine, Sunset, Sunset heard a wailing siren draw close. She looked in her side mirror and saw a black and white police car dogging her, lights flashing brightly. Aw, oh, crap, Sunset muttered as she pulled off to the side of the road. She came to a stop and took off her helmet, taking a breath of fresh air. The police car pulled up behind her, and out stepped the officer wearing a blue uniform that matched his hair. He had a pale complexion that reminded Sunset a lot of Vinyl Scratch. Perhaps there was some relation? As he approached Sunset, he lifted his shades and asked, Ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? Yeah, I was going about twenty miles over the speed limit. He raised an eyebrow. Well, thanks for not playing dumb with me. License and registration, please. Sunset pulled out her wallet and handed him her license. Uh, listen, Officer Armor, she said, reading the badge pinned to his chest. Armor. 
Armor. I just heard that name somewhere. About that registration thing. Sunset Shimmer? He asked with wide eyes. Yes, is something wrong? She watched him look from the card to her and back to the card, his face m masked in concentration. Listen, he spoke after a whole minute of silence. I'm gonna let you go with a warning this time. Just make sure you obey the speed limit. I don't want to have to pull you over again. He handed Sunset her license back. Uh, thanks, Sunset blinked. When she looked up, he was already walking back to his squad car. As he got in and started the engine, he stuck his head out and asked, Shouldn't you be in school? Yeah, then get back to class, Miss Shimmer. As Officer Armor drove away, Sunset couldn't help repeating his name over and over in her head. I know I just heard it, but where? She started her motorcycle and pulled onto the road, just as the memory hit her. They got arrested by that stupid shining armor cop because of you. Right, Sunset thought to herself. He was the one who arrested those two goons. Still, why did he let me go? Had he learned that it was her who had beaten the two gang members into submission? Even so, it seemed out of order for him to acknowledge that fact and let Sunset go scot-free. Eh, Sunset gave a mental shrug, brushing it aside. Regardless of the reason, at least she avoided getting a ticket. It was lunchtime when Sunset decided to return to campus. She parked her bike in the school lot, shaking her hair out, of, out as a familiar pink face approached her. There you are, Sunset! We were wondering where you went! Pinky's eyes landed on the black motorcycle. Hey! You got your bike back! That's so awesome! Yeah, it is. Sunset nodded in agreement. She struck as quick as a snake, smacking Pinky's hand away. And if you touch it, I'll give you a grand tour of the front wheel. Got it? Got it! Good. She smirked, walking around Pinky and heading for the main building. So, what's new, Pinks? New? Hmm, let's see. Oh, Pound, Pound Cake's teeth are coming in. I know, because yesterday he bit me, and it hurt a lot. And I got to be on my English paper yesterday, and... Why did I ask her anything? Sunset reprimanded herself. Oh, and how could I forget? I'm having a trick-or-treat sleepover party on Halloween next week. You want to come? Not really. Pinky put on a pouty face, her eyes growing as large as dinner plates. Oh, please! Everyone else is going to be there. Fine, sure, I'll go. Not that I have much of a choice now. Yippee! Pinky bounced around Sunset and started doing cartwheels down the hall. You're going to have so much fun! First we'll go get a candy, and then we'll go back to my house and have cupcakes and eat ice cream, and then we'll tell scary stories and roast s'mores. Doesn't that sound like fun? No. Pinky continued rolling down the hall. You say that now, but wait until you're actually there. You'll love it! She wheeled into the cafeteria with Sunset following after her and came to a stop at their usual table. Girls, guess what? Sunset agreed to come to the Halloween party! Rarity looked up from her sandwich. Well, that's good to hear. The more the merrier. She smiled. So, what are you going to dress as? Nothing, Sunset said flatly. Aren't you all too old to be dressing up for this? Oh, of course not, Rarity said. It's all in good fun. And it's free! Pinky said, looking as serious as Sunset has ever seen her. You never say no to free candy! Yeah. Hold on to that philosophy, Pinky. Free candy aside, Twilight said, giving Pinky a skeptical look. It's still fun just to dress up as something. My friend and I used to take props from our theater arts department and dress up in ridiculous con costumes. Twilight smiled, a look of nostalgia on her face. Sunset shrugged, snatching the apple off of Applejack's plate, ignoring the glare she gave. I never saw the point of any of it, even back in Equestria. Pinky gasped. <gasps> they have Halloween in Equestria? Not exactly. See, we have something called Nightmare Night. It's kind of the same thing, except the lore behind it is different. The story goes... <clears throat> Sunset story was cut short by Pinky, who clapped a hand over her mouth and shushed her. No, 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 no. Save it for the party. It'll make a good, scary story. She finally removed her hands, completely unaffected by Sunset's glare. Anyway, Rarity intervened. Are you sure you don't want to dress up with the rest of us? Positive. I don't even know what I would go as. Oh, oh! Pinky waved her hand around. You could totally go as a demon! This time, Sunset's glare did have an effect on Pinky. She lowered her hand and sunk down into her chair, looking very embarrassed. Too soon? Way too soon, Sunset said in a low, in a low hiss. Well, Rarity jumped in again. If you change your mind, I'd be more than happy to help you come up with something. Sunset leaned back in her chair, folding her arms. Thanks, I'll keep it in mind. There was only a squeaking sound to occupy Sunset's thoughts while she sat alone in the school's main hall, polishing the various trophies and medals won over the years. She had spent the rest of the day in a rather sour mood and could only take her frustration out by scrubbing the awards harder than necessary. 
Oh, why didn't you go as a demon? Sunset raised her voice an octave, trying to imitate Pinky. She growled and rubbed the surface of the gold trophy harder. Life is just one big joke to you, isn't it? She raised the trophy, staring at her sparkling reflection. I bet you wouldn't be laughing. If it had been you, she whispered. A demonic face appeared, replacing hers, and Sunset dropped the trophy, letting it clatter to the floor. She held a hand over her heart, taking deep breaths as she tried to calm herself. <sighs> Keep it together, Shimmer. You're just seeing things. With one last deep breath, Sunset climbed to her feet, scooping up the fallen trophy and placing it back in its case. She looked down the row of awards, all of them gleaming under the fluorescent lights. Her work done, Sunset took the polish cleaner and the rag she had been using and then brought them back to the janitor's closet. Kicking the door closed, she wiped her hands on her jeans, trying to get the smell of polish off. As she walked back down the hall, a delightful hum began to sing in her, into her ears. It was a light soprano pitch being sweetly played on soft strings. Sunset had never heard such a wonderful noise before. She moved towards it, drawn in like a siren's call, desperate to know where it had come from. Her search led to a small classroom, that was one that was used by the music department. She peered through the window and was genuinely surprised at who she saw. Twilight Sparkle was sitting alone at the front of the room, a violin tucked under her chin, her bowstring dancing across the chords, making sweet music. Very quietly, Sunset opened the door and slipped in, Twilight completely unfazed by the creaking hinges. Staying against the back wall, Sunset continued to listen to Twilight's solo performance, enraptured by each chord and mesmerized by every arrangement. It was like listening to a piece in a symphony. The melody was so beautiful and pure, Sunset almost wanted to weep. When the last chord faded away, Sunset opened her eyes, unaware that she had been carried off by the music. Taking advantage of Twilight's pause, she said in a hoarse voice, That was... beautiful. Ah! Twilight fumbled with her violin, catching it and holding it close to her chest. She swivel swiveled in her seat, staring wide-eyed at Sunset. Oh, it's you! Uh, how long have you been there? Sunset shrugged. Don't know. Lost track of time. She walked up to the front of the room and pulled up a chair. I didn't know you played an instrument. Twilight looked fondly at her violin. Yeah, I started when I was about six, and my old high school required everyone to participate in some extracurricular activity. So I joined the school orchestra. You're really good. Like, really, really good. Twilight's cheeks burned bright red at the praise. Thanks, but I'm not all that good. Sunset gaped at her. You're kidding, right? Do you hear yourself play? Our school president last year played the cello and got a full ride scholarship to a music school. I think you might play better than her. You really think so? Almost positive, Sunset nodded. Twirling a finger in her hair, Twilight said, I really appreciate that, Sunset, but this is really just a hobby more than anything. I'm not sure I want to go to music school. <laughs> That's a shame. You could be famous. World-renowned, even. Maybe, Twilight shook her head, but I don't want to become famous for music. I want to be a scientist or a physicist. I want to help the world at large. Sunset blew her hair out of her face, rolling her eyes. <sighs> well, whatever floats your boat, I guess. Do you play an instrument? No. Flash tried to teach me the guitar, but... She looked down at her slender fingers. I could never quite get the hang of it. Twilight sighed, shifting in her chair. Every time we talk, he seems... sad. Did... the other Twilight do something to him? Sunset shook her head. The Pony Princess didn't do anything. He just fell in love and got his heart broken when she left. She shrugged. His own fault, really. Oh... Twilight's head fell down cast. So the reason he keeps talking to me is... Listen, I said the girls would never treat you that way, and I doubt Flash would either. But he fell in love with a girl that looks like you and doesn't know what to do with himself. Idiot, Sunset added under her breath. He still has feelings for Twilight's sparkle. He just doesn't realize it isn't you. That's kind of sad when you think about it. Twilight started tuning her violin, testing it with a few strokes but I'm not sure if I could return any of his feelings anyway. Sunset shrugged again. He's a nice guy. An idiot, but a nice guy. She stood up and stretched. Anyway, I just came in here to say I liked your music. You should show the girls. that really set you apart from Little Miss Princess. As Sunset made for the door, Twilight stood and sputtered. W -w Wait! Sunset! Um, do you want to go walk home together again? Nope. I've got my motorcycle back. Walking is for losers. You have a motorcycle? Sunset rolled her eyes. 
Yes, I just said that, genius. Twilight looked down, rubbing the back of her head. Sorry. Um, I guess I'll just see you tomorrow, then. Jeez, why does she look so sad? Sunset watched her sit down and pick up her violin again, playing a few soft notes. She could hear the melancholy in them. Ugh, why am I doing this? Sunset rubbed her temples and said, Twilight, do you want a ride home? Twilight snapped her head up. A ride? On a motorcycle? Yeah, duh. I, I don't know, is it safe? Mostly. Tapping her fingers together, Twilight started to look very anxious. I really don't know how my parents would feel about me riding on a motorcycle. Then don't tell them. Sunset could feel her patience quickly wearing thin as Twilight continued to mull it over. All right, you have three seconds to decide. Two? Okay, okay, I'll try it, Twilight said hastily. Just promise me nothing bad will happen, okay? I promise you nothing bad will happen. Sunset had been forced to say it, but wondered if the forces of nature would comply with that rule. Now grab your stuff, I want to go home already. Without another, without another word, but with a rather happy smile, Twilight quickly packed her, va her violin away and grabbed her backpack. The two left the music room, stopping by Sunset's locker so she could grab her helmet before exiting for the parking lot. This is your motorcycle? Twilight examined the midnight black bike. It suits you. I'll take that as a compliment. Oh, oh, don't worry, it was! Twilight said hastily. So, um, where'd you get it? Flash and I found it in the junkyard a couple of years ago. We fixed it up and he let me keep it, but I guess we didn't do the greatest job as we thought. The thing kept breaking down and finally just stopped working. I let one of his friends work on it for me, and he fixed it up real good. Twilight nudged the wheel with her foot. So it's safe now, right? Yes, yes, it's safe. Just trust me, okay? Where are the seatbelts? There are no seatbelts, Sunset groaned. Twilight looked up at her, tilting her head to the side. Then how am I supposed to ride with you? You hang on to me real tight. Sunset swung her leg over the middle and stuck her key in the ignition, earning her a roar from the bike. Get on, she ordered. After a brief moment of hesitation, Twilight climbed on behind her, wrapping her arms around Sunset's middle. I still don't feel very safe about this, she shouted over the engine. Sunset sighed in frustration and took off her helmet, shoving it onto Twilight's head. There. Now sit down, shut up, and don't fall off. She flipped the kicks in and pulled on the throttle, backing out of the parking lot before putting real power into it. They took off with a jolt, Twilight squeezing herself onto Sunset, her entire body shaking. While Sunset found it amusing to some degree, she really hoped Twilight wouldn't fall off. The wind billowed against Sunset's face, stinging her eyes and making her regret giving her helmet to Twilight. She was grateful, however, that the ride was a short one, as Twilight didn't live too far away from the school. Sunset slowed down a little as she entered the peaceful suburbs, still uncomfortable about the conformity most of the houses showed. She came to a stop in front of Twilight's house and cut the engine. Twilight was still wrapped firmly around her, helmet pressed into Sunset's back. Hey, Sparky, you can let go now. We're here. Twilight looked up, slowly pulling herself off like she was afraid the bike would suddenly start again. She took off the helmet, handing it to Sunset before getting off the bike and taking a few shaky steps towards her, per her porch. Heh, <laughs> that wasn't so bad. <laughs> Sunset laughed at the terrified expression on Twilight's face. Oh, don't worry, you'll get used to it after a while. There was a click, and both girls looked up to see the front door open, and much to Sunset's surprise, Officer Armour stick his head out. Oh, Shiny! Twilight squealed, her fears quickly vanishing. I didn't know you were home! Shining stepped outside, wearing more casual clothes as opposed to the uniform Sunset had seen him in. My shift ended early today. I was actually coming to get you in a minute. But I see you got a ride, he eyed Sunset warily. Sunset smirked at him, mostly out of old habit when someone gave her a look like that. Afternoon, Officer Armor. He walked down the steps, stopping to give Twilight a quick hug. Miss Shimmer? Twilight looked between the two of them. You two know each other? We had a bit of a run-in today, Shining said. Miss Speed Demon was going a little too fast on her ride. Sunset's eye twitched. Shining looked down at Twilight. Could you give us a minute, Twy? Twilight narrowed her eyes. Shining, she said with a warning. We're just going to talk. Honest. She eyed him a few more seconds, then nodded. Fine. She smiled and waved at Sunset. I'll see you tomorrow. Shining didn't speak again until Twilight disappeared behind the door. Sunset shimmer. Sunset raised an eyebrow. She already pieced everything together now. Now she was just waiting to hear it confirmed, and to see what his judgment would be. Nice bike, Shining complimented. 
That hadn't been the first thing Sunset expected to hear. Oh, thanks. She could feel herself still being examined by Shining's critical eye. There was a long minute of nothing before Shining spoke again. Twilight. She speaks highly of you. I honestly wasn't expecting you to be... To be what? Dressed in leather and riding a motorcycle? Sunset asked accusingly. Shining looked guilty, scratching the back of his neck. Well, yeah. Sorry, you just weren't what I pictured. Hm. Sunset reached for her keys until Shining's voice stopped her. But you saved my sister. Ah, there it is. Well, so much for my vinyl scratch theory. She looked over, waiting for him to continue. So, that has to count for something. Twilight thinks you're a great friend. Twilight has poor judgment. So I can't turn a blind eye to that. Look, what I'm really trying to say is... Thank you. Thank you so much. Sunset would have laughed if she didn't catch Shining quickly wiping a tear away. Instead, she just smiled softly and said, Don't mention it. Seriously, don't mention it. She put her helmet on and started the engine as Shining called out to her, Just stay out of trouble, Sunset. I won't let you go next time. Sunset smirked from inside her helmet. Her bike gave off a thunderclap of noise, and she peeled away from the curbside, taking off down the street. You didn't say please. Chapter 14. House Call For the fourth time in that long night, Sunset was jolted awake by her haunting subconscious. Her face pressed into the damp pillow as she gasped for air. She lifted her head up and furiously rubbed her eyes, letting out an ex exasperated growl that rose into a yell. Reaching down, she grabbed the bottle of NyQuil sitting by her bed and threw it against the wall. There was a loud thump that almost masked the sound of plastic cracking. As the bottle hit the ground, a blue stain began to soak into the worn carpet. Sunset sat upright on her mattress, staring at her hands in her lap. It had been this way for the last several nights. Sunset could only manage to get minuscule amounts of sleep before a nightmare overcame her and forced her to awaken. Last night, she had simply been too afraid to fall asleep, resulting in her need for medication in the hopes that it would ease her and let her rest. It hadn't. Sunset didn't know why her reoccurring nightmares were now happening so frequently. She could deal with it when it happened once a week, but now they were coming back to back. It was starting to wear on her. Sunset, dear, are you all right? That's the second time you've fallen asleep in class, Rarity asked. No, I'm having trouble sleeping, Sunset grumbled, resting her head on her arm, eyes starting to droop again. Oh, I experienced that from time to time. Have you tried taking some medicine? Glaring over at the broken bottle, Sunset said, Yeah, great advice, Rarity. That's not fair. She was just trying to help. Sunset's frown deepened, and she reached under her pillow, pulling out the stuffed Princess Twilight Sparkle. Don't you ever shut up, Sunset snarled. Can't you make me shut up? Sunset opened her mouth, then paused, unable to think of a counter-remark. It was technically true. The doll was just a manifestation of some of the inner workings of her subconscious. She could have got it to stop talking any time. Or burned it. I hate you, she deadpanned. Yes, you remind me that every day. You should really come up with some new lines. After taking a moment to strangle it, Sunset tossed the toy back on her desk. She flopped onto her pillow, groaning in aversion. Though her eyelids lay heavy with exhaustion, she feared the idea of sleep dreading what images she would be tormented with this time. She had seen enough to write a screenplay and send it to Hollywood. Still, even the possibility of peaceful rest was enough to make Sunset draw her blanket over her head and curl up. She slowed her breathing to a steady, rhythmic pace, relaxing her mind like she had done in so many magic sessions with Princess Celestia. Merciful mercifully, she managed to clear all of her thoughts. You could have made all the nightmares go away. Sunset couldn't have had her eyes closed for more than a minute when she heard her phone buzz loudly on her wooden desk, vibrating right off the edge. Why? Damn it, why? She instinctively reached for her phone, ready to give whoever was calling her a piece of her mind. She checked the caller ID and frowned. On second thought, I should just let it keep ringing, she said, looking down at the words typed across the front of the screen. Her hand flipped the phone open on reflex. Clearly, I've learned nothing. She held the phone an inch away from her ear, bracing herself for Pinky's high-pitched voice. Hello? Hiya, Sunset! It's Pinky! I figured. Do you know what time it is? Sunset growled. Uh, noon? Sunset looked up and saw a thin line of light coming from around the cardboard square she had fit around the window. Getting to her knees, she looked out onto the factory floor and saw more sunlight trickling in. Oh. 
Wow, you sure like your beauty sleep. I know it's Saturday, but you should really be up by now, silly. No, it's a Saturday, which means I should be asleep. When did I get so lazy? Just tell me what you want so I can go back to bed. Well, actually, Flash and his band are having a gig down at the park today, and me and the girls were wondering if- No! Sunset slammed her phone shut before Pinky could finish her request. There was no way she was going to be dragged anywhere with Flash. Maybe her love for him hadn't been entirely true, but it still stung something fierce when he broke up with her. She could barely stand sharing a school with him. There was no way she was going to waste an afternoon listening to his stupid band play their stupid music. Maybe you're not mad at him, but mad at yourself for leading him on and- Shut up! Sunset threw her phone at the doll, knocking them both to the floor. She wrapped herself up once more in her blankets, shielding herself from the outside world. No! There was a click as the line went dead. Six pairs of eyes blinked at each other before leaning away from the cell phone. The girls gathered around Pinky's phone, standing under the thin shade of a large, shedding acorn tree, most of them wearing unsurprised looks. See? Rarity stood tall and crossed her arms. I told you she wouldn't want to come. Pinky examined her phone, tapping a finger against her chin. Hmm, maybe we should call again just to be sure. Twilight put a hand on Pinky's arm, lowering it. She sounded tired. Maybe we should just let her rest. Aw, but she's going to miss the music! As much as Twilight would have liked Sunset to join them as well, by the way she had looked all week, tired and more distant than usual, Twilight thought it was best Sunset got a little rest. Don't worry, Pinky. I'm sure Flash will have other concerts, Twilight said reassuringly. I know, Pinky said, a hint of disappointment still in her voice, but I wanted this to be our first activity together as the Spectacular Seven. Now I'll have to wait until Halloween. The Spectacular what? The Spectacular Seven! Pinky bounced high in the air, throwing confetti flakes into the air. We can't be the Counterlot High Five anymore, or the Main Six, because we have Twilight and Sunset. That adds together to make seven. And seven is such a spectacular number, just like us. So now we're the Spectacular Seven. Twilight only heard half of Pinky's rant, choosing instead to try and figure out where the shower of confetti had come from. Rarity must have seen the look on her face, for she placed a hand on Twilight's shoulder and lightly shook her head. Right, Applejack said slowly. Well, let's get a move on. Make sure we get a good spot. Rainbow cleared her throat. Uh, no offense to Flash, but his band isn't that popular. I think we'll have an easy time picking seats. The group migrated out from under the tree, making their way down the small slope it rested on. Picnic blankets patchworked the ground in the nearby field, while kites soared through the breezy air. Twilight admired the soft autumn afternoon, feeling bad that she had de decided to make Spike stay at home. She'd have to make it up to him with an extra treat. They crossed the wooden bridge, a particularly cool breeze sweeping through and making Twilight huddle tighter inside her purple jacket. She looked out over the small creek that ran beneath them, remembering her encounter with Sunset, and with it, the revelation of another world. She still struggled with the concept occasionally, her rational brain wanting to dismiss it as the ramblings of an entire group of students. However, spending time with all of them had proven that, save for Pinky, they were all perfectly sane. Being in their presence gave Twilight a kind of warmth she had never felt before. And whenever Sunset was with her, Hmm, what has you smiling and blushing like that? Rarity asked with a coy smile. Twilight snapped out of her thoughts. What? Me? Smiling? Oh, it was nothing. <laughs> Certainly not thinking about anyone in particular. All the girls turned back and looked at her, wearing smiles identical to Rarity's. Pinky sprung over, stopping inches away from Twilight's face. Oh, oh, you totally like someone! Who is it? Who is it? N no, no one! Twilight took a step back, trying to regain her personal space. I was just thinking about the weather! Darling, cloud patterns can't make a girl blush like that, Rarity chided. Come now, you can tell us. Pinky stuck her finger out and poked Twilight on the nose, her mouth opening in a wide smile. You like Flash Sentry, don't you? You do, you do, I can see it on your face! Twilight's nervous grin had turned into a look of apprehension before upgrading to fierce protest. I do not like him. I don't know, Twy. Sounds like you got a crush on him to me, Rainbow grinned. You do talk to him a lot, Fluttershy added softly. I don't talk to him. He talks to me, Twilight said, growing more agitated by the second. He's a really nice guy, but I don't like him like that. Besides, he likes the other Twilight Sparkle. No one was sure how to respond. 
The group lapsed into painful silence until Rarity spoke in, in an encouraging tone. You don't know that for certain, darling. He couldn't be quite taken with you. Twilight shook her head, reflecting on Sunset's words from earlier in the week. She was sure that in time, Flash would think of her as a separate individual. For now, he just wanted the princess. Even if he is taken with me, I don't feel the same way. Well then, who do you have a crush on? Pinky asked. No one! Twilight yelled, her cheeks turning red once more. Applejack stepped over and dragged Pinky away. Come on, y'all. If she don't want to tell us, that's her business. Twilight sighed and slumped her shoulders in relief. Thank you, Applejack. Yes, and besides, there is no business to tell. Even if I did like her, there's no way she'd like me like that. While Rarity shot Twilight a dubious look, she nor anyone else pushed the matter further. They walked across the other half of the park, coming up on a large bandstand where a microphone, speakers, and a set of drums were already set. Around the stage were a few rows of chairs already occupied by a generous amount of people. I thought you said Flash Drive wasn't that popular. Twilight, lo Twilight looked over to the rainbow who just shrugged. Guess his popularity went up when we stopped hanging out in our own circles. Flash and his other bandmates were gathered in front of the stage, tuning guitars and going over sound checks. He looked up from his instrument and gave a warm wave to Twilight, who returned it half-heartedly and with an anxious smile. The girls pulled up seats in the front row, starting aimless chatter while they waited for the show to start. A few more teenagers floated in and filled some of the empty seats, while the other occupants of the park kept in an interested but non-committal distance. Twilight wasn't entirely sure what to expect, either. When she had asked Sunset how good of a band flash drive was, she had only responded, They're all right, I guess, at least by your world's standard of modern music. Your world's. Twilight also had trouble sometimes remembering that Sunset wasn't from here. She was a pony, from another dimension. When did life get so... weird? A guitar riff cut through the air, hunted closely by the crackle of static. Twilight looked up from her scattered thoughts to find Flash at the forefront of his band, microphone in hand. Canterlot Park, are you ready to rock? There was an appropriate round of applause, with few scattered cheers here and there. Seeming unsatisfied, Pl Flash played another riff and yelled, I said, Canterlot Park, are you ready to rock? This time, the majority of the crowd broke into enthusiastic cheers. Twilight even heard Fluttershy give a light yay of excitement, while she herself stuck with just polite clapping. Flash grinned at the crowd's ovation before nodding to his drummer, a student Twilight recognized as Thunder Lane. He started a steady beat, like the thumping of a telltale heart, before close, followed closely by Flash's guitar strumming. The rest of the band soon accompanied the two, and a wave of sound flared out over the audience. Sound. That's all it was to Twilight. Yes, it had rhythm and harmony, a good tempo, and was played fairly well, but there was no purpose behind it, other than wanting to sound cool. It reminded Twilight of all the rock bands Shining would often blast in his room. They were good, but... They never had any heart and soul like the composers of old. Still, Twilight tried to enjoy herself. She clapped along with some of the melodies and cheered at the end of each song. Flash Drive was by no means bad. They just weren't her kind of music. It was then Twilight understood what Sunset had said, and she smiled to herself. <laughs> Guess we have the same taste in music. An hour and a half later, Flash Drive played their last song before thanking everyone and bidding them farewell. Turning around, Twilight saw more people had shown up during the performance, flocking the sound of decent rock and roll. As everyone began to disperse, Twilight and the girls approached the bandstand where Flash was already disassembling everything. He noticed the girls approaching him and gave them all a wave. So, what'd you think of the show? The question was directed to the group as a whole, but his eyes were on, sw were on Twilight. It was very nice, Twilight started. It was freaking awesome, Rainbow cut in. You've got some sweet moves on that guitar. <laughs> Glad you all enjoyed it, Flash said, packing the guitar away. This is the biggest crowd we've had since, well, ever. It's nice to know we left a lasting impression. Yeah, Thunderlane spoke up from his drum set. It only took us three years to get noticed. Well, better late than never, right? Twilight encouraged. Flash nodded. Yeah, you're right. He stood up, a nervous blush rising on his cheeks. Uh, listen, Twilight. I was just wondering, you know, if you aren't busy or anything, do you want to go out and do something tomorrow? Twilight stared like a deer caught in headlights. Was Flash Sentry asking her out? On a date? Her body went rigid while her mind went into overdrive. 
Oh my gosh, what do I do? I can't tell him no, that would be mean, but I don't want to say yes either. Quick, think of something so I don't hurt his feelings! Apparently, Twilight had been standing in silence for longer than she thought, for Flash finally sighed and said, uh, Listen, if you don't want to- No, 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 that's not it! Twilight waved her hands frantically. I just, I have other plans tomorrow! You do? Rainbow asked. Yes! Uh, me and Sunset are going out for ice cream tomorrow! Twilight announced with a broad smile. You are? Flash said with mild surprise. You are? Her friends echoed. I am? Yes! I am! So, that's why we can't hang out tomorrow! No other reason, I just have a prior engagement. Uh, and by that I mean platonic engagement! We're just going out as friends, nothing more! <laughs> yep, Sunset and I, getting ice cream, just friends! <laughs> Everyone gave her an odd stare, and Flash took a tiny step back. Okay, he said slowly. Well, uh, you two have fun then. Don't worry, we will! <laughs> uh, Oh, jeez, what have I done? By Monday, everyone will be asking how the hangout went. Everyone will find out I lied. Quick, think of something else. By that point, Twilight can only think of two options. Tell the truth now, or... She turned to her friends, who were still eyeing her with curiosity. Uh, do any of you know where Sunset lives? Pinky opened her mouth like she had an answer, then stopped, her face changing to deep contemplation. Huh, that's a really good question. Hey, Flash, do you know where Sunset lives? Flash froze in mid-step, having tried to sneak away from the conversation. Uh, yeah, I know where she... lives? He kept his back to them the entire time. Great! Pinky cheered. We could totally go over to her house and cheer her up and stuff, and I can't wait to see all the cool stuff she probably has in her room, and oh, I bet... Listen, girls, Flash said in a neutral tone. I kind of made a promise not to tell anyone where she lived. Rarity frowned. Why ever not? So no one would go egg her out, probably, Rainbow smirked. It's more complicated than that, said Flash. Aw, come on now, Applejack pushed. We're her friends now. I'm sure she'd love a little bit of company. Actually, everyone turned towards Fluttershy, speaking in a soft voice with her eyes towards the ground. If Sunset came from the other side of the mirror, does that mean she lives by herself? All eyes returned to Flash, who slumped his shoulders in defeat. All right. Despite what happened to it between us, I still try to keep my promises. I can't tell you, but... Thunderlane, you got a piece of paper and a pen on you? Thunderlane rummaged around through a backpack and pulled out the desired items. Flash took them and quickly scribbled something before folding the paper up and letting it fall to the ground. Uh-oh. I sure hope no one picks that paper up. They'll find out where Sunset is staying, he said in a fake voice. Rarity mouthed a thank you before snatching the paper off the ground. Five other heads leaned in as she unfolded it, beholding a simple address and a few hastily written directions. But wait, this address is in... Rarity's mouth formed a thin line. Oh dear. Sunset sat cross-legged on her bed, leaning against the wall for support. In her lap was a notebook with complex math equations strewn across it. In front of her was her laptop. She spun her pencil around her fingers, remarking at how much better she could do that now than when she first came to this world. Her other fingers tapped along to the orchestra, her hands swaying to the sound of the violin. The music that came from these classical composers like Beethoven and Bach were really the only genre she enjoyed. A yawn found its way out of her and she rubbed her eyes. I should try falling asleep to this next time, Sunset murmured to herself. She gave a slow stretch of her arms and returned to answering her math problems. She didn't get too far before she was jolted upright by a loud pounding on the door downstairs. But crying out loud! Sunset set her work aside, stood up, and checked herself over in the mirror to make sure she was decent. Pajama pants and a tank top shirt with her hair still a mess. She, she shrugged. She had looked a lot worse. Stomping downstairs, Sunset found herself wondering two things. One, what could Flash possibly want from her, who was the only person who knew where she held residence? And two, why was she coming to answer the door in the first place? Whatever Flash had to say, she was pretty sure she didn't want to hear it. Sunset reached the bottom floor and approached the back door at the end of the hall. I should really drill in a peephole, she said as she gripped the handle. She pulled the door open and stuck her head outside. What do you- Eh? eh? Hiya, Sunset! Six girls cheered. Sunset slammed the door and threw her back against it, breathing hard. Dear Celestia, they know where I live! Sunset! Verity's voice per penetrated through the thick door. Please, open up! We just wanted to see how you were doing! 
<sighs> With a resigned huff, Sunset opened the door again, glaring at the faces smiling back at her. Flash told you where I live, didn't he? Rarity gave her a guilty smile. Well, not in so many words exactly. He's so dead. Oh, come on, Sonny! Pinky bounced up and wrapped her arms around Sunset, squeezing tight. Aren't you happy to see us? Not really, Sunset said, struggling for air. But we're your first house guests, Pinky said, oblivious to Sunset's face turning blue. Besides Flash, of course. Twilight tapped her on the shoulder. Pinky, could you let go of Sunset before she runs out of oxygen? Pinky looked up at Sunset's face, putting her grin against Sunset's fiery stare. Whoopsies! Sorry about that! She released Sunset, who stumbled back and grabbed the doorframe for support while she regained her breath. <sighs> what are all of you doing here? She panted. We told you. We came to see if you were doing all right, Applejack explained. And because we kind of got curious on where it was you lived. Rarity scrunched her nose. Honestly, darling, how can you live in a place like this? I ignore everything that's wrong with it. Sunset folded her arms and gave all of them her usual agitated stare. Besides, it's free, which is exactly in my price range. Well, I like it, Pinky cheered in support. It's like your own bachelorette pad. So you're going to show us around, right? Sunset guessed she didn't have much of a choice in the matter, seeing as she stepped out of the way and let all of them walk through. She slammed the door with as much vice as she could muster and jumped to the front of the line, leading the girls down the checkered hall. Stairs lead up to my bedroom, bathroom, kitchen, closet, factory floor, Sunset said with dispassion. She turned and faced them with a fake smile on her face. And that concludes our tour. Any questions? No? Her smile dropped. Then get out. Oh, wait! Pinky slipped around Sunset and pulled on the door behind her. I want to see the factory floor! Sunset slapped a hand against her face as the girls pushed past her and into the wide, empty space. She couldn't understand their sudden fascination with where she lived. Was this something all friends did, or just the crazy ones? Oh my gosh, this place is so huge! We could totally have an awesome- but No! Sunset stomped her foot against the cold cement floor. You will be having no parties in my house. No shindigs, no hangouts, nothing. This is my personal sanctuary where I come to get away from everything. Friends or not, I need one place where I can enjoy my isolation. She circled around them, herding them up and shepherding them down the hall and out the door. Thanks for stopping by. Please don't do it again. I'll see you all at school Monday. Now get out, 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 out! She threw the entrance open and with a shove of her foot, kicked all five of them out in an orderly line. It wasn't until after she slammed the door shut that she ran the numbers through her head again. Twilight Sparkle, get out here, she yelled. The sound of running water echoed through the hall before Twilight stepped out from one of the doors, drying her hands on her jeans and looking abashed. Sorry, I had to use your bathroom. Is the water always cold? Yes, it is. Now get out, Sunset pointed to the entrance. Ah, uh, right, disturbing your privacy and all that. Twilight looked down at her hands, fidgeting slightly. There's just one thing I need to talk to you about. And I probably won't care, Sunset said dismissively. Could you just hear me out for a second? Twilight pleaded. Sunset pursed her lips, unable to say anything. So, um, well, Flash tried to ask me out on a date earlier today, but I kind of told him I already made plans with you for tomorrow, Twilight said hastily. She gave Sunset a nervous smile. Uh-huh, and I should care because... Twilight pressed her hands into her face. I lied! I'm a liar now! She lamented. Everyone thinks me and you are hanging out tomorrow, and they're going to be asking all kinds of questions on Monday. Or they could not care, Sunset offered. I know I don't. But, but what if they do? Twilight grabbed the sides of her hair, looking frantic. I'm not good at lying! I don't like doing it! I just panicked and- Twilight, skip to the part that involves why you're telling me this, Sunset said irritably. Oh, right. <laughs> Twilight chuckled weakly. Well, I was just thinking that maybe we could hang out tomorrow. That way, I'm not a liar anymore, and you get out of this rundown place for a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah. No. Sunset shook her head and amused smile on her face. I'm not helping you fix your own mistakes, Sparkles. You dug your grave, you pull yourself out of it. Twilight looked devastated. Oh, come on, Sunset! Sunset walked around, starting to force Twilight out the door. Nope. But it'll be fun! Doubt it. Please! Just as Sunset had her had her on the threshold, the horrible word had been spoken. Sunset felt they hated magic kicking. Fine, she said through gritted teeth. Twilight turned her head, a shimmer of hope in her eyes. Really? Yeah, really, Sunset grumbled. But you so owe me. Deal! Twilight bobbed her head in glee. Good. Now get out. 
Sunset opened the door, tossed Twilight out, and slammed it shut, all in one fluid motion before leaning against it once more. And my suffering continues. Chapter 15 Just Can't Win With a loud rumble, the motorcycle slid into a parking space near the front of Canterlot Mall. Sunset removed her helmet and rested her head on the dash, closing her eyes and letting her mind drift. How she had managed to drive herself all the way across town was a mystery to her. Her bike wobbled, jolting her awake before it could topple over. She put the kickstand down and dismounted, placing her helmet on the handlebars. Well, she rolled her neck and yawned. Let's get this over with. Twilight had texted her to meet at the mall around twelve. Sunset checked the time as 11.45 and decided she had just enough time to grab a coffee. She trudged into the mall, hoping the light layer of makeup she wore would cover the bags underneath her eyes. She looked bad enough with her ratty jacket. Unsurprisingly, the mall was crowded with Sunday shoppers. Halloween decorations littered almost every store. Pumpkin cutouts were stuck to windows, bats dangled from the ceiling. Some dress shops had even replaced their mannequins with skeleton models. Sunset followed a trail of black and orange confetti to the coffee kiosk at the, end, at the edge of the food court. As she strode up to the counter, the cashier halted her conversation with the barista and turned to face Sunset, a gracious smile on her face. Welcome to Double Shot Espresso, Two Creams, Three Sugars, Whipped Cream on Top, Make It Snappy. Denied a chance to promote the kiosk holiday beverage, the cashier closed her mouth, her cheery demeanor now inverted. Sunset slapped a fiver on the counter and scanned the area for a free table. You know, you could say please, a voice said behind her. Sunset looked over her shoulder and frowned at Twilight. I've come to hate that word, and don't ask me why, she cut in, seeing Twilight open her mouth to comment. She returned to the counter, drumming her fingers while she waited for the barista to finish her coffee. Here's your drink, ma'am, the disgruntled cashier said, pushing Sunset's drink across the counter. Snatching her drink, Sunset turned fully to face Twilight, trying not to laugh at the frustrated look she was receiving. What? She took a small sip of her coffee, smacking her lips at the bitter taste. I don't get you. You do nice things, but you can be such a... such a... Twilight scrunched her face like she was having difficulty getting the next word out. Since it narrowed her eyes, go ahead, say it. She dared. She raised her drink to her lips again. A big grouch! Twilight stomped her foot. Sunset swallowed her coffee down the wrong pipe, and she began to cough while she laughed, making her throat burn even more. Twilight took a step closer, concern replacing her discontentment. Are you all right? Yeah, yeah. Sunset coughed a few times before laughing again. I'm fine. <laughs> Just remind me to teach you how to use big girl words later. She broke into another fit of giggles when Twilight simply rolled her eyes and started for the nearest vacant spot. They sat adjacent to each other at the round table, Twilight fiddling with her hair while Sunset sipped her espresso, feeling revitalized. They didn't make coffee this good in Equestria. So, what's the plan, Sparkles? I want to get this over with so I can go back home. Twilight gave her a bewildered look. You can't really call that place your home, can you? No, it sucks and I hate it. It feels nothing like a home should feel, but what else am I supposed to call it? Sunset slid down her chair. Besides, it's not like I can go back to my real home. Why did you leave? Sunset slumped further, her eyes downcast. I'm not sure anymore. Princess Celestia showed me the mirror that connects this world to Equestria and asked me what I saw. I told her I saw myself as a princess, an alicorn. But when I pressed her for answers about what it meant, she rebuked me. I decided to find out for myself, so I... I ran away. I wanted answers. I wanted power. She cracked a pained smile. <laughs> Turns out I got both of them in the end. And I hated it. Oh. Lost for words, Twilight continued to run a hand through her, eh, through her hair, her eyes seeming to go everywhere but, sun but in Sunset's direction. I'm sorry. Sunset raised an eyebrow. For what? Twilight finally looked at her. Well, you know, for all the things you've had to go through. I never got that. Sunset shook her head. Why do people apologize when it had nothing to do with them? Because it shows sympathy, Twilight explained, her bewildered look returning. Sympathy? Sunset scoffed and sat up again. So in other words, you're taking pity on me. <laughs> pity is the last thing I need or want. I can handle things on my own. I've done it for years. But isn't the point of having friends to have someone to help you when you need it? Sunset held her hands up. I don't know. I'm new to this whole friendship thing. You tell me. Aren't you some friendship expert or something? 
it was Twilight's turn to sink into her chair, acting as if the floor was much more interesting. Actually, I've only had one other friend. I was pretty introverted before she came along. Even then, when I did try to make friends at my old school, they seemed to want to avoid me. Really? Just one friend your entire life? Sunset fought the urge to laugh again. Well, I don't count my old babysitter because she's practically family, so... Yeah, Twilight said. Sunset reached over and poked her in the arm. Hey, that was one more than me until a few weeks ago. Now look at us, surrounded by girls that will probably drive me crazy before graduation. Twilight smiled warmly. I'll admit a few of them can be a bit rowdy sometimes, but it's really nice having this many friends for a change. She stared at her lap and said softly, Maybe I should thank the other Twilight. She's kind of the reason I met you, after all. She's the reason I'm stuck with all of you. Sunset pursed her lips. I'm still trying to figure out if that was a good or bad thing. Twilight giggled and Sunset said, You think I'm joking, but I'm not. Oh, come on. You can't really say you don't want any friends, can you? Sunset crossed her arms. I've warmed up to the idea a lot, but a part of me likes being alone. Twilight put a hand on Sunset's shoulder. Hey, I used to feel the same way, but then I learned that even having one friend makes life a whole lot better. No one really wants to be alone. People can't hurt or take advantage of you if you're alone. I think we both know that isn't true. Their eyes met for a brief second before Sunset pulled away. She stood up and threw her empty cup into the garbage can. I'm tired of this conversation, she faced Twilight, and you never did tell me what we were going to do. Oh, um, well, we're at the mall, so we could just go shopping or something. Twilight rubbed the back of her head, looking sheepish. I really didn't plan this well at all, which is odd because I'm usually pretty organized. Shopping? Sunset rubbed her chin. Yeah, that's something friends do together, I guess. We can give that a try. Twilight blinked. You really are new to this, aren't you? Sunset headed for the escalator. Yes, I just told you that. Come on, Sparky, keep up. Twilight hurried out of her chair to join her as they ascended to the second floor. Much like the ground floor, it was adorned with festive streamers and paper decorations. The first door they passed made Sunset stop and gape at the display window. There, on sale, was the leather jacket she had eyed a few weeks ago. It hung on a rack in all its silver-studded glory. Sunset was drawn to it until she saw the price tag. Her eye twitched. Two hundred bucks! You call that a sale? She leaned her head a little and saw Flitter slouched against the register. She caught Sunset's eye and stuck her tongue out. I hate you, Sunset mouthed. Sunset, what are you looking at? Twilight had stopped a few paces ahead and was glancing back curiously at Sunset. A leather jacket I can't afford, Sunset growled as she stomped forward. The duo entered the next clothing store they encountered, advertising an autumn sale in the spirit of Halloween. Sunset mindlessly browsed and held a few shirts to see how they looked on her. She wasn't sure why she was doing it. It wasn't like she could afford anything anyway. She flipped the shirt around, looked at the tag, sticking her tongue out at the price. Forty-nine dollars. And that's the sale price. Does the word sale mean anything to anyone? She put the shirt back on the rack and looked over to Twilight, who was modeling a horrible green shirt in front of one of the mirrors. Sunset walked over to her. You know, I don't know much about fashion, but even I know that that is one of the ugliest things I have ever seen. Twilight put it down, looking disappointed. Yeah, I'm not very trendy either. My mom buys most of my clothes for me. Sunset snickered and patted her on the head. Aw, little Twilight Spockle needs a mommy to shop for her. No, Twilight said defensively. She blushed and smacked Sunset's hand away. She never tells me when she does it, she just does. Well, maybe it's for the best, Sunset pointed back to the shirt. They'd laugh you right out of Canterlot High if you wore that, if Rarity didn't murder you first. You're probably right. Twilight reached down and looked at the price tag, making a face similar to Sunset. Yeesh, I couldn't afford this anyway. Sunset's mouth formed a thin line. Wait a minute, if you can't afford anything, and I can't afford anything, then why are we here? Window shopping, Twilight said simply. That's what friends do together. Look at things they can't buy. Sunset scrunched her face in annoyance. That's stupid. Twilight put her hands on her hips and gave Sunset an inquisitive look. All right, then, what do you do for fun? Well, I used to blackmail people and plot world domination, but that doesn't really sound like fun anymore. Nowadays, I just lie around and... do nothing. Sunset pressed a palm against her head. Oh, I need a hobby. Twilight was silent for a moment, her face unreadable. 
just as Sunset thought she had broken her, Twilight blinked twice. Um, yeah, a hobby might be good for you, but I think I have something else in mind you might find fun. What is it? How good are you at chess? Twilight asked with a sly look. It was an intense battle. Both sides had suffered numerous losses, and it was now coming down to the wire. It had been long and drawn out with both commanders out moving and out thinking the other before peace could be lost. Sunset wiped the thin line of sweat off her brow, biting down on her lip as she stared at her remaining soldiers. She paced back and forth on the outskirts of the giant chessboard set up in the mall's center. Twilight stood across from her, critically examining the board as well. Behind her were the numerous black pieces she had acquired from Sunset, while Sunset had her own impressive collection of Twilight's white pieces, none which had been lost willingly. No, Twilight had fought tooth and nail to keep from losing any of her soldiers, while Sunset had been ready to make necessary sacrifices for the greater good of victory. Around the two girls, an impressive crowd had gathered to watch the spectacle, a chess match for the ages. They whispered to each other, making sure not to break either girl's concentration. Some had even taken to recording the match. Remaining on the board was a handful of pawns on both sides. On Twilight's end were both her knights, one rook, one bishop, and her king. On Sunset's end was only one knight, but she had managed to keep both her rooks at the cost of her bishops. It was Sunset's move. Her king was tucked into the left corner, protected only by a mere pawn that faced obliteration in two easy moves. She needed to get rid of Twilight's rook, currently unobstructed by anything else on the board. Sunset knew she was at a disadvantage. The fact that she had less pieces left on the board spoke volumes, but she was never one to admit defeat. No, she would win this match or die trying. Unfortunately, Twilight wasn't stupid. She wouldn't fall for any simple ruse, and every move Sunset calculated seemed to ultimately end in her own failure. However, Twilight was still desperate to not lose any more of her own soldiers. Perhaps Sunset could use that to her advantage. She stepped onto the board, and the surrounding crowd held its breath in anticipation. She picked up her rook and pushed it across the board, stopping three paces under one of Twilight's knights. The other one stood and guarded the king. Twilight frowned, looking between her knight and the rook. As she stepped onto the board, Sunset backed off, smiling, as Twilight pushed her knight out of harm's way. "'Oh, Twilight,' Sunset said, repositioning her rook. "'You're so predictable.' "'Am I really?' Twilight moved her knight again. "'Yes, you are—' Sunset stopped, her rook in her hand as she examined the board again. Twilight was trying to lead her into a trap. Her knight was placed in a spot where, if Sunset placed her rook in front of it, Twilight's last bishop would sweep it away. Oh, well played. She placed her rook back down and walked to the other side. Unfortunately, you seem to have forgotten about this. Sunset picked up her other rook and raced it over Twilight's knight, pushing it out of position and taking it back to her side where the other pieces lay. Twilight stomped her foot. Drat! I didn't see that. She placed a hand over her mouth, concentration written on her face. Minutes passed without Twilight saying anything, let alone moving. Her eyes scanned the board, pausing at certain spots before jumping to another area. She finally raised her hands. I yield. The crowd gasped, and Sunset cried, What? I've analyzed every possible move, and unless you make a really amateur mistake, there's no way I can win. So I yield. Sunset gaped at her. You, you can't just yield. This is a fight to the death. There's no glory in this if you just give up. Twilight deadpan. Sunset, it's a game of chess. Besides, sometimes the best strategy is not to fight at all. Sunset continued to stare open-mouthed as Twilight began returning the pieces to the board. But, but, but... Relax, Sunset, Twilight said calmly. You won. It didn't feel like a victory, and Sunset had half a mind to demand Twilight to play her again, if a group of little kids hadn't rushed onto the board at that moment. Hey, hey! Sunset called, shooing them, uh, shooing them with her hand. We're still using this! No, we're not. Twilight grabbed Sunset by the wrist and pulled her away. Sunset struggled, but found Twilight's grip was surprisingly strong when she wanted it to be. But I haven't beaten you yet! Yes, you did. You won fair and square, Twilight insisted. You gave up! I took my loss with grace. That isn't- Let it go, Sunset! Sunset and Twilight stood back at the food court, in line for the ice cream and milkshake bar. Twilight had promised to pay since she had lost the chess match, though it didn't do much for Sunset's attitude. She stood next to Twilight, arms crossed, and a bitter expression on her face. Twilight looked at her and rolled her eyes. Oh, come on, Sunset. It's just a game. Why does it matter so much? Because that wasn't the way I wanted to win. 
she said sourly. I'm supposed to win using my sheer intellect and superior cunning skill. You're supposed to grovel at my boots, begging for mercy. She had her arms in the air with her fingers curled, her expression that of devilish glee. She tilted her head down, toward, down towards Twilight, who was giving her an unamused look. What is wrong? Twilight pinched the bridge of her nose. It's not what I'd call good sportsmanship, especially with a game of chess. Sunset shrugged. There's nothing wrong with wanting to win. Yes, but you could try winning with grace instead of wanting people to grovel beneath you. Old habits die hard and all that. <sighs> Twilight gave a longing sigh and stepped up to the counter, pulling out a few dollar bills from her pocket. What would you like, she asked Sunset. I'll take a strawberry milkshake, plain and simple, Sunset said. One strawberry milkshake and two scoops of vanilla, please. Twilight t told the lady behind the counter. As she walked away to fill the order, Twilight leaned in towards Sunset and whispered, That's how you ask for something. Sunset rolled her eyes as hard as she could. I don't need politeness lessons from you. Somebody needs to teach, you, teach them to you. The server came back with their milkshake and ice cream, and the two girls made their way over to a nearby booth, sitting across from each other. Twilight took a spoon to her bowl of vanilla richness, taking slow nibbles out of it while Sunset slurped on her milkshake. Opening her eyes from her strawberry heaven, Sunset caught Twilight staring in her direction with a vacant look in her eyes. Sunset looked back over at her shoulder to see if there was anything of interest. All she found were pointless shop decorations and mall goers. She looked back to Twilight, who was still staring into space. Her gaze seemed to fix onto Sunset, misty, purple eyes locked onto Target, a small glimmer with them. It was making Sunset drastically uncomfortable. What? she asked loudly, snapping Twilight out of her reverie. What? What? she countered. What are you staring at? Staring? I wasn't staring! Twilight's face turned beet red. Sunset clicked her tongue. Uh, yeah, you were. No, no, I was just thinking about stuff, she said weakly. Really? What kind of stuff? Twilight gave a dismissive wave of her hand. Oh, you know, this and that, my mind just really goes everywhere. <laughs> this is ironic. I mean, I'm so organized, and yet my brain isn't half the time. I'll just jump from topic to topic. One second, I'll be wondering how bees can fly with those tiny wings, and next, I'll be wondering how big the universe is. She swung her arms out to emphasize the stark vastness of the universe, and collided with Sunset's milkshake. It flew backwards and splattered all over the front of Sunset's shirt before dribbling down to her pants. Sunset stared down in shock, shivering slightly at the frozen treat's temperature. You! You! Oh my gosh! I'm so, 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 so sorry! Twilight squealed. She reached and grabbed a handful of napkins before reaching across the table and rubbing them across Sunset. Here! I can fix it! Sunset smacked her hand away. Hey, you already spilled my milkshake. I don't need you feeling me up as well. Twilight instantly recoiled, her face burning. Feel you up? Oh, no, 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 I would never feel you up. It was an accident. I wasn't even thinking about your boobs. No, not that they aren't nice. I was not thinking about them in the sense that they weren't there, just that the sense that I want nothing to do with them, not that, that they're bad, but that they're better than mine. I mean, up from a scientific point of view, they're very appealing, and from a non-scientific view, I'm sure they're nice as well. Not that I would know, because I totally don't think about girls that way. Actually, I don't even think about guys that way. In fact, I'm asexual. Twilight, Sunset said in a low voice, dabbing at her shirt. Yes, Twilight mewled. Shut up! Twilight sank beneath the table. <sighs> Thank you. Sunset took slow, easy breaths, trying not to blow up at Twilight in public. She furiously scrubbed at the pink stain on the front of her red shirt. Why does this always happen to me? I get dragged someplace, and then something bad happens. Oddly enough, a smile spread across her face. <laughs> Stay at home, and I have nightmares, or go out and be tortured by one of these six girls. I really can't win. <laughs> <laughs> Sunset tossed her head back and broke into a loud chorus of laughter that echoed across the food court. Twilight raised her head up. What's so funny? My life! Sunset laughed. <laughs> it's so ironic! I try so hard to win and I always lose! Something almost always backfires on me now, and I'm so sleep-deprived that it's hilarious! <laughs> Sunset clutched her, clutched her sides and stamped her feet on the floor, earning curious stares from those around her. I'll probably end up crying over it later, but right now it's just so freaking funny. Sunset couldn't remember the last time she had laughed like this. Sure, it was over her own sad lot in life, but somehow it still felt good. She wiped a few tears from her eyes as her laughing fit came to its end. She grabbed her glass and sipped out the last dregs of her milkshake before standing up. Come on, Sparkle. <sighs> Let's get out of here. Twilight slowly slid out of the booth, keeping a wary distance. Wait, you're not mad? 
Oh no, I'm furious, Sunset said in a casual tone. But right now, I don't really care. So, you coming or what? Ignorant of Twilight's answer, she continued on her path for the front entrance. Again, I'm really, really sorry about that, Twilight said, appearing by Sunset's side. Meh, just don't ever mention it again. Ever. Deal. Sunset pushed the glass door open and stepped out into the waning sunlight. Had they really spent an entire afternoon together? So, Sunset pointed over to her motorcycle. Do you want to ride back home? No! Twilight said quickly. I mean, um, no thanks. Shining will pick me up. Sunset smirked. Suit yourself. She shoved her hands into her jacket pocket, groaning as she made contact with syrupy residue. She let out a puff of air. Well, congratulations, Twilight. You're no longer a liar. Happy? Twilight blushed again, pushing a strand of hair back. Listen, I'm sorry I dragged you into this. I just panicked and yours was the first name that came to mind. Yeah, well, it wasn't too bad. I had fun. Sans the milkshake. I'm glad, Twilight beamed. Maybe we can do it again with all the girls next time? Yeah, sure. That could be... Sunset stopped. Hey, wait a second. Why did you single me out? Why didn't you just say we were all going to hang out? Uh, uh, well, that's because they were all standing right next to me, and I couldn't expect them to keep up with my lie on the spot. Hmm, Sunset narrowed her eyes. I'm pretty sure most of them could have caught on. A nervous grin was plastered across Twilight's face. Well, I couldn't take that chance. Better safe than sorry, right? <sighs> Sunset snorted. Wow, you were that desperate to get out of a date with Flash, huh? N no, it's not like that. I just, um... Twilight fell silent. Sunset laughed and gave her a pat on the head. She turned on her heel and headed for a bike. You know, I think I'm starting to like you more and more. Later, Twilight. Twilight gave a weak goodbye that was quickly lost on the wind. As Sunset put on her helmet and mounted her bike, a question popped into her mind that made her crease her brow. Why was she staring at me like that? God damn, you guys have no idea how much I bloopered all over Twilight's blabbering rants. <laughs> You're missing out on some funny bloopers. Chapter 16. Ease on down the road. Without fleeting, sleep had been at home, Sunset had learned a handy new trick, sleeping with her eyes open. It had started with her merely trying to stay awake in the middle of class, snapping her head up when she began to doze off and keeping her eyes open as wide as possible. Eventually, she just drifted off while still managing to stare at the chalkboard, her mind flickering between it and whatever her imagination was conjuring up. By Wednesday, she would have liked to think she had become a master at it. She had gotten through all of her classes without being caught once, and she sat at the front of the class. She would have liked to think she was a master at it. Until she snored in her last period. Hmm. Sunset had been resting her cheek in her palm, arm propped up on her desk. Her mouth was slightly agape, and her eyes were glazed over in a vacant expression. Mr. Noteworthy had been in the middle of another long-winded history rant, his voice faintly buzzing in Sunset's ear like tiny bees. Her snore had been loud enough that she'd managed to wake herself up. She quickly arranged herself in her seat to try and play it off, but the loud yawn that had found its way out of her ruined any chance she had. Mr. Noteworthy gave her a sharp glare, snapping the textbook he was holding shut. Am I boring you again, Miss Shimmer? No, no more than usual, Sunset said in a weary voice. She was so out of it, she didn't realize what she had said until a wave of giggles washed over the rest of the class. Mr. Noteworthy let out a heavy breath through his nostrils. Well then, you can have a nice, long nap in detention. Keep it up, Miss Shimmer, and you'll be serving until graduation. As he turned back to the blackboard, Sunset groaned and buried her face in her arms. He was right. With all the smart answers she had been giving her teachers, she had accumulated an extra week and a half of detentions on top of her original punishment. Someone poked her in the arm. Sunset itched her eyes up to see Rarity giving her a sympathetic look. Dear, are you still having trouble sleeping? Sunset gave a weak nod. Yes. And she dropped her face again. Didn't you take any medicine like I suggested? I did. It didn't help, Sunset growled. Miss Rarity, would you like to join Miss Shimmer in detention? Mr. Noteworthy asked, his back still facing the students. Rarity immediately sat up straight. No, sir! She fell silent resu and resumed taking notes. The class reverted back to its natural state of monotonous lecture and dim stupor. 
Sunset was about to resort to pinching herself to stay awake before realizing there was little point. She had already received her quota of detention handouts for the day. Besides, there couldn't be that much time left in the school day to take a proper nap, anyway. The screeching school bell jolted her upright, and she found everyone around her packing up and heading out the door. Either there really hadn't been that much time left, or she had ma managed to fall asleep without noticing again. She grabbed her backpack and left the classroom, ignoring Mr. Noteworthy's sour look as she walked out. Like usual, the hallways were a flurry of excited students, scrambling to go home. And, like usual, Sunset fought her way through the rowdy crowd, making her way to Celestia's office to receive whatever manual chore the principal had in store for her today. Pulling herself out of the tide of students, Sunset slipped into the office and slammed the door shut behind her. Celestia sat at her desk, filling out stacks of paperwork. Must you always slam the door? she asked, not bothering to lift her head up. Sunset was pretty sure the other Celestia had asked the same question years ago. No, I suppose not. Force of habit, I guess. She leaned against the guest chair, drumming her fingers on the headrest. So, what exciting task do you have for me this time? Well, I was thinking... Celestia looked up at Sunset and frowned, worry lines creasing her normally pretty face. Sunset, you look absolutely exhausted. I haven't been getting great amounts of sleep recently, Sunset confessed, suppressing an unbidden yawn. Would you like to talk about it? Celestia asked sincerely. No. Celestia put the tips of her fingers together and gave Sunset a long, inquisitive stare. Her eyes were soft, but still managed to pierce their way into Sunset's soul. Sunset tried to look elsewhere, but she could feel the eyes on her. The silence in the room only served to make her more uncomfortable. It dragged on for several minutes before Sunset's stubborn pride finally yielded. It's just some bad dreams, alright? It isn't a big deal. Just some stupid nightmares. I'll get over it. I see. Have you tried talking to anyone about your nightmares? I found talking them out is a great way to unburden the negative emotions they carry. No, Sunset shook her head. Forgive me, but I'm not in a mood to spill my heart and soul. Like I said, I'll get over it. Celestia let out a disappointed sigh. Well, I can force you to talk about it if you don't want to. Sunset bit down on her lip to stop herself from laughing. But keeping things bottled up is never healthy. I've seen you surrounding yourself with a nice group of friends. To my dismay, perhaps you could confide in one of them. I'll think about it. Now, can you please just give me my daily chore so I can do it and leave? Celestia smiled. Actually, why don't we just skip that for today? You're free to go, Sunset. Sunset blinked in surprise. Really? Just like that? Yes, I insist you go home and try to rest. Sunset's whole face brightened up. <laughs> you don't have to tell me twice. See ya! With that, she bolted from the office, stopping only for a second to marvel at how fast the school could empty itself of its occupants. She pushed out the front entrance and started her path home. She had foregone riding her motorcycle to school every day, remembering that gas was expensive, and she was practically broke. She had almost made it off school property when a loud, bubbly voice assaulted her ears. Ooh, ooh, Sunset! Wait for me! Sunset didn't slow her pace. Not that she had to. Pinky was in step next to her within a few easy bounds, skipping along down the road. Hey! You're not in detention! Did you decide to ditch today? No, Celestia decided to let me go early. She gave Pinky a sideways look. Now, can I help you with something? Oh yeah! I was just wondering what costume you'll be wearing for the party on Friday! I'm not wearing a costume, Pinky. I've told you about ten times now. Sunset said with an exasperated sigh. Pinky frowned. Aw, come on, Sunny! Everyone else will be wearing one! So, if everyone jumped off cliff, would you expect me to follow them? Pinky fell silent, giving Sunset an absent-minded expression. She, sifted, she shifted back to her normal smile and said, But you'll get free candy! Don't you want free candy? Not particularly. Stopping dead in her tracks, Pinky gaped at Sunset, her eyes bulging out of her head. What? She sped up and grabbed Sunset by the shoulder, spinning her around and shaking her. How could you say no to free candy? Like this. No. Now, I'll give you to the count of three to let go of me. Before Sunset had started counting, Pinky had released her, allowing Sunset to continue her walk home. I'm sorry, Pinky, but I really don't see much point to this holiday. I'm only going to the party because you asked. Point? Pinky tilted her head. Of course Halloween has a point! I mean, other than free candy. I wasn't going to say that! Pinky ran in front of Sunset and halted her. Halloween is the one time of the year where we can dress up as our fears and laugh at them! It helps show that there's nothing really to be afraid of! If we make something look ridiculous, then it isn't scary anymore, right? 
Sunset stepped around her, but began to reflect on her words. Huh. I guess I never thought of it like that before. Pinky caught up again and bobbed her head. Uh-huh! It's like my granny pie always told me! She took in a deep breath of air, but Sunset's quick hand covered her mouth before she could begin. No singing. Sunset deadpanned. She removed her hand, ignoring Pinky's pitiful expression. Pinky, however, bounced back in a matter of seconds and asked with renewed optimism. So, are you gonna dress up now? It's just for one night! <sighs> Sunset sighed. Pinky was right. It was just for a night, and she was supposed to be making friends. Fine, I'll do it. If only to get you to stop bothering- Ugh! Pinky had wrapped her in a tight hug and spun her around a few times. Hooray! You're going to have so much fun, I promise, and I know exactly who you could go as! Oh, no, no, I'm not taking any costume advice from you, Sunset flailed her legs, and put me down already! Whoops! Pinky let her down, allowing Sunset to fix her crumpled jacket. But Sunset, you should totally take my advice this time! Pfft, yeah, and I should totally get a new jacket, but that's not gonna happen either. She gave a forlorn look at her tattered black leather and groaned, oh, I'm perfectly capable of finding my own costume to wear. Hey, with that jacket, you can make a real good zombie! Yeah. Sure, Sunset said dismissively. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to bed. Alrighty then, Pinky gave an emphatic wave. But if you change your mind, talk to Rarity. She'll give you the perfect costume. I bet she will, Sunset thought. She began to whistle a simple tune as she contemplated what she could actually dress as. It was only for one night. What was the harm in playing along? Pinky's words about conquering fear had also struck a chord within Sunset. If facing your fears meant making them go away, then maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to... <sighs> she shook her head. I'm not scared of anything, Sunset said defiantly. They're just some stupid nightmares. That won't go away. Guilty, maybe, but I'm certainly not scared. Sunset constantly reaffirmed this until she had reached the factory door, shoving it open with her shoulder. She dropped her backpack by the stairs and climbed up to her makeshift room, heading straight for her bed. She collapsed onto her lumpy mattress and pulled her pulled her boots and jacket off before drawing the blanket over her. You're going to bed at this time of day? Princess Twilight Sparkle asked from her position on the desk. It's not like I have anything else to do, Sunset grumbled. She looked at her alarm clock. It was only 3.30. With a sigh, she buried her face into her pillow and prayed for a good night's sleep for once. Pain. That was all she could feel. Intense, fiery pain that ate at her entire body. Yet she could feel power coursing through every corner of her being. Pure magic flooded her, drowning her in its burning embrace. It was too much. No, it wasn't enough. Wings, claws, fangs, and fire. So much fire. She was something entirely different now. She wasn't equine. She wasn't human. She was a monster. But she had power. I've changed my mind. This isn't what I wanted. No. Yes, it is. I finally have the element of magic. I'm unstoppable. But it hurts too much. Get over it. I've come too far to quit now. Not when I'm this close. She was flying, towering over all of them, showing off her superiority. They cowered beneath her, trembling in fear. It was so delicious, so satisfying. But she wanted more. I am your princess now, and you will be loyal to me! Brainwashing all of the students, I can't even remember if this was part of the plan either. Just roll with it. We have an army now. There is no way Celestia can stop us. Twilight Sparkle has interfered with my plans one too many times already. She needs to be dealt with. Wait, wait, no! You can't kill them! They don't deserve that! But the ball of fire had already been thrown, set on a direct course for the six girls huddling together. This was the moment. She had finally won. Sunset laughed. The next morning found Sunset wrapped tightly in her blankets, having created a cocoon to shield her from the bad dreams. She extracted an arm to silence her noisy alarm clock before unfurling herself from her miniature sanctuary, still dressed in yesterday's clothes. She couldn't decide which was worse, the night she got no sleep at all, or the nights her sleep consisted of mostly nightmares. She rubbed her face, feeling the dry streaks her tears had made during the course of the night. What do I do to have to make it stop? Sunset looked up at the stuffed toy, but for once it didn't answer. Figures. She huffed. After a long stretch, Sunset hurried through her morning routine. The cold shower helped shake off some of the fatigue still clinging to her. After a simple breakfast of cereal and an apple, she returned upstairs and got dressed, taking a few spare moments to browse her limited wardrobe. 
She was curious now about the options she had for a reasonable costume. She pulled out a nice purple gown with large pink sleeves, holding it in front of the broken mirror. It looked like it might be a little snug, but Sunset was pretty sure she could make it work. Eh, easy enough, she said, folding it up and putting it back in the dresser. I'll just go as a princess. She walked over to her desk and selected one of her many crowns before standing in front of the mirror again with it held over her head. Sunset screamed and threw herself against the far wall while the crown fell to the floor with a small clang. Her knees buckled and she joined it, panting like she had just run a mile. She leaned against the wall with one hand over her erratic heart. Very slowly, she lifted her head up to look at her reflection. Staring back at her was a wide-eyed sunset, differentiating from the original one only by the crack running down the mirror's surface. They both reached for the crown lying at their feet, staring like it was a snake ready to bite. In unison, both of them hurled the crown at the mirror, cracking the glass into hundreds of small shards. Many of them fell to the floor, while the rest reflected the appearance of a hundred disheveled sunset shimmers. You're seeing things. Just get a hold of yourself. It's just some rampant paranoia. <sighs> sunset took a deep breath and pushed herself to a standing position. What will it take to admit you're scared? Twilight Sparkle asked. I am not scared! Sunset protested. Do I have a guilty conscience? Sure, I'll admit that. Am I annoyed that I'm being excessively punished? Yes, but I am certainly not scared. I'm not scared of anything. Sunset closed her eyes, holding two fingers against the side of her head and breathing deeply. She slipped on her jacket and boots and headed down the stairs. Either way, she mumbled to herself, I think I'll put a hold on the princess idea. Maybe I should ask Rarity for some costume advice. She scooped up her backpack and pulled open the front door. But if she says the word demon, I'm punching her in the throat. To Sunset's surprise, Rarity had been absolutely thrilled at the idea of making an outfit for her. Sunset supposed it was just Rarity's instinct as a natural fashionista to want to make clothes for anyone. So after another tedious day of school and detention, Sunset wandered over to Rarity's dress shop, the Canterlot Boutique. For a store she practically ran by herself, it was pretty well maintained. It was a rather large building nestled on the street corner and stuck out amongst the other gray buildings with its white and purple paint. Well-dressed mannequins posed in the full-body window at the front and a bright warm welcome sign was pinned over the entrance. Sunset pushed the door open, the tinkle of a bell echoing over her head. The inside looked far classier than half of the corporate-owned dress stores Sunset had browsed in. The walls and carpet were a calmer purple than the coat outside and were adorned with several works of modern art. Soft couches were gathered around a glass table piled high with fashion magazines. A long black curtain veiled the doorway, separating the waiting room from the rest of the shop. Rarity, are you in here? Sunset called. I'm in the back, darling! Come right in! Sunset closed the door behind her and slipped through the dividing curtain, finding herself in what she guessed was the heart of the shop. A large stage had been set up in the center, flanked on three sides by full body mirrors. Next to it was a work desk, cluttered with rolls of thread and color palettes. Stray mannequins stood around in various poses, some of them fully dressed and others with half-finished designs on them. Rarity stood next to a fully clothed one, fiddling with its plaid skirt. A measuring tape was draped around her neck and a pair of red spectacles were over her eyes. She smiled as Sunset came in. Hello, dear. Sorry for the mess. Things can get a little hectic around here sometimes. It's all right, Sunset said, spinning around once to get a look at everything. So, how are we going to do this? Rarity straightened up and dragged the mannequin off to the side. Just stand on the stage so I can take some measurements and we'll work from there. Sunset complied and hopped up on the raised platform, holding her arms out as Rarity stepped up and started measuring her. Well, Sunset, I must say I was rather surprised when you asked me to make a costume for you. Rarity ran the tape along Sunset's shoulders, stopping to quickly jot down numbers on a clipboard. I really didn't expect you to warm up to the idea this soon. Neither did I. Oddly enough, Pinky convinced me it could be... fun, in some ways and I suppose trying something new won't kill me. Rarity looked over her glasses with astoundment. I'm sorry, did you say Pinky convinced you? Sunset couldn't help but smirk. Yep, don't worry, I'm surprised too. With a shrug, Rarity continued with her measure measurements and said, Either way, I'm glad you decide to join in our camaraderie. Now then, do you have any ideas on what you want? Actually, no. I was kind of hoping you could give me some advice, Sunset said sheepishly. Rarity wrapped the tape around Sunset's waist, humming to herself as she worked. Well, I'm not entirely sure what to tell you, Sunset. People usually go as things they find interesting or something that will really scare people. Maybe you just need to find something you like. Something that relates to you. Sunset looked down at her. And what are you going as? Me? 
Actually, the whole group has decided to dress in a specific theme this year. Sort of a way to celebrate us coming back together as friends. Sunset's eyes found the ceiling and cleared her throat. Right. <clears throat> well, what is this theme? We all decide to be characters from the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz. Sunset tapped her finger against her chin. You know, I've heard a lot of references to that, but I've never bothered to look it up. What is it? Rarity looked at her in disbelief. You've never seen The Wizard of Oz? No, I thought I just made that clear. Right, sorry. <laughs> Rarity walked over to the organized chaos that was her desk and began sifting through color palettes. I guess even with the time you've spent here, you wouldn't be caught up on all of our pop culture references. Still, I can't believe you've never bothered to watch any incarnation of it, or even read the books. So, are you going to tell me sometime today, or are you just going to keep building up suspense? Sunset asked, her tone surly. Fortunately, she couldn't see Rarity roll her eyes. It's a timeless story about a normal girl that gets swept away to a magical and strange land. Sunset took a seat on the platform, getting comfortable. I can relate to that. Rarity pulled up a chair. It's relatable to everyone, darling. It's a really delightful tale that you should look into, and the musical performances are simply stunning. Well, in the meantime, why don't you tell me more about it? A smile graced Rarity's lips. I don't see why not. In the next half hour, Sunset sat in rapt attention as Rarity told her the story of Dorothy and all her friends. She listened to the tales of munchkins and magical slippers, of Dorothy's travel down the yellow brick road and her encounter with the brainless scarecrow, the heartless tin man, and the cowardly lion. How Dorothy made it to the mystical Emerald City, only to be asked by the great and powerful Oz to defeat the Wicked Witch of the West, and finally, how Dorothy beat the witch herself and revealed Oz to be nothing more than a charlatan before returning home. Throughout it, Sunset couldn't help but notice a few parallels to her own, her own life, some less pleasant than others. While the story itself sounded rather ridiculous at some points, she had to admit it had its charms. So, for our costumes, Rarity said after concluding the story, I'm going as the Good Witch of the North, Twilight is Dorothy, Applejack is the Scarecrow, Fluttershy is the Cowardly Lion, Rainbow is going to be Oz, and Pinky decided to beat off the track a little and go as the Queen of Munchkin Land. Sunset was unsurprised by most of these choices. She had to restrain herself from making a comment about Applejack or Fluttershy. So, if I wanted to join you guys, I guess I only have two characters to choose from, really. Rarity nodded. Yes, you could go as the Wicked Witch. Not gonna happen. I figured as much. So that just leaves the Tin Man. Or Tin Girl, in your case. That is, if you really want to. Sunset leaned back on the podium and closed her eyes. She couldn't think of anything else she could go as. Besides, she and the Tin Man had some things in common. Most notably, neither of them had a heart. Well, that's not entirely true. Sunset shuddered as the image of the black, crusted heart drifted through her mind. Still, it beat going dressed as a witch. Sunset was sure she didn't need anything close to that particular image of herself. All right, Rarity. I guess I'll be the tin girl of the group. Rarity jumped out of her chair and ran over to her rolls of fabric. Oh, excellent! Oh, this is going to be so much fun! Mm, it's going to be a challenge, though. Silver does not go well with your vibrant hair, but it will bring out your eyes. Rarity, it's just a costume, Sunset said pointedly. That doesn't mean it can't be stunning! Rarity waggled a finger. No matter the occasion, you must always look your best. She pulled out a bundle of silver cloth. Now, Sunset, I'm going to make you look fabulous. I'm going to regret this. Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood Vera Chan here. I'm kind of ending this chapter a little different from usual here because I'd like to send out a request to you guys to send me uh, your requests for any other fan fiction or, th or things that you think uh, you'd like to hear me read out loud. I really enjoy doing these and I would, you know, love to hear people's recommendations on what they'd like to hear me do some more reading of. So. If you could really, you know, do me a big, huge favor and reach out to me at verochan.tumblr.com. That's V-E-R-O hyphen C-H-A-N dot tumblr.com. And let me know what stuff you'd like to hear. Once again, that's V-E-R-O hyphen C-H-A-N dot tumblr.com. Thanks a lot, guys, and I look forward to seeing you on the rest of Long Road to Friendship by the Albino Corn. Ciao! Long Road to Friendship, Chapter 17 The Spectacular Seven 
Friday of Halloween found Canterlot High decked to the nines in all things spooky and festive. Cobwebs hung in every corner, complete with authentic-looking spiders, to many of the students' displeasure. Orange and black banners draped from the ceilings, and a carved jack-o'-lantern sat on every teacher's desk. Ominous fog drifted out of the lab rooms and coated many of the hallways in a light mist. Some of the students even found a skeleton hiding in their lockers. Sunset had to admit it was all very impressive, but not as impressive as herself. She strutted down the hallway in her new silver boots, relishing every eye that turned her way. The polished boots matched the rest of her outfit. Silver jeans and a long-sleeved silver blouse with a tall collar. A square outline of black thread had been stitched into the front of the blouse to resemble a compartment door, and ball joints had been painted onto the elbows and knees, giving her an authentic, mechanical look. Her hair had even been pinned up and tucked into a silver cap that sat on her head, completing the ensemble. She continued her stroll down the corridor, swinging her hips with every step. The spotlight was on her again, everyone's attention turning as she walked past them. Some of them smiled. A small few even gave compliments. Sunset grinned, soaking in every second of it. It felt like she was in complete control again, dominating the school like she had only a month ago, with everyone staring at her in envy or admiration. She felt tall. She felt empowered. She felt the munchkin queen tackle her to the floor. Sunset, you did dress up! I can't believe it, you went as my suggestion! Oh wait, I never told you my suggestion. <gasps> Pinky gasped, gasped, her entire face lighting up. You were going to dress up this whole time, weren't you? Yeah, you were. You just wanted it to be a surprise. Well, it colored me surprised because it worked. You look as great as the Tin Man. Whoops, I mean the Tin Girl. No, Pinky, this was a last-minute thing Rarity put together for me. Now, could you be so kind as to get off of me? Since it would have pushed Pinky off, but like every other time she had been ta tackled, Pinky had managed to pin her arms down. Pinky hauled Sunset to her feet and dusted her off. Sorry, Sunny! I'm just so excited! Tonight is going to be so much fun! Sunset looked Pinky up and down, scrutinizing her costume. She was dressed in a poofy ball gown with an assortment of bright colors, most of them shades of pink. On her head was a large regal crown, also pink, and in one hand was a short scepter, which, too, was, uh, pink. Sunset scrunched her face, fighting not to throw up at the sight of her. So, what do you think of the school's decorations? Pinky asked, dress gesturing with her scepter. I've been planning this all month! It's very nice. You did a pretty good job, Sunset said. Leave it to Pinky to go all out for an event like Halloween. The bell to start school rang, only instead of its usual shrill cry, it tolled like an old church bell. Slow, even gongs that pounded at Sunset's eardrums and echoed loudly across the campus. She was positive anyone in the surrounding neighborhoods had been woken up by it. How did you pull that off? Sunset asked, rubbing her ears. Pinky smirked a mischievous gleam in her eyes. I have my ways. She lifted her staff and tapped Sunset twice on each shoulder. Now you are cordially invited to have a seat at the table of the Spectacular Seven come this lunch period, Pinky said her in her most royal voice. The Spectacular Seven. Uh-huh, it's our official group name, isn't it, me? Not really, no. Why do we need a group name, anyway? Because making names is fun, and it makes us feel even closer as friends! Come on, don't you feel even closer being in a group with a super cool name? What was the word Twilight used? Uh, oh, yeah! It's like, solidarity! Um, uh, I don't know. I guess so? Sunset doubted naming a little group could create any feelings of solidarity. And yet, just knowing she was being included sparked a small warmth inside of her. It was quickly choked out by the image of a fireball and the sound of maniacal laughter, leaving only a trail of guilt behind and a deep frown on her face. Pinky laughed. Wow! You're really in character, Sunset! She tapped Sunset on the head with her staff. Don't worry, Tin Girl, we'll get you that heart! She turned with a flourish and skipped down the hall singing as she went, Follow the yellow brick road! Follow the yellow brick road! <sighs> Sunset sighed and rubbed her temples. Why does talking to her always leave me with a headache? Even on Halloween, most teachers tried to conduct class as normal, though they spent half of the class time trying to rein everyone in from their conversations and exchange of early candy. Other teachers embraced the spirit of the holiday, dressing up along with the students and having a lax class session. Miss Cheerley had chosen to dress as a vampire this year and was and awarded candy to anyone who could answer her pop culture questions correctly. 
Vice Principal Luna had donned what looked like gothic armor and hidden the shadows or around sharp corners, jumping out and scaring the living daylights out of anyone wandering the halls alone. The lunchroom was a parade of costumes and a bazaar of candy deals. Black cloth covered every table, and the lights had been turned off, allowing the room to only be illuminated by the weak autumn sunlight. Sunset sat at her place at the table, a large slice of pumpkin pie in front of her. To her immediate right was Twilight, dressed in a white blouse and long blue and white plaid skirt. Combined with the ponytail she had tied her hair into, it was a very country look and fit with the mental image Sunset had of Dorothy. Next to Twilight was Applejack, wearing a worn-out shirt and pants, both of them dyed a muddy brown with straw sticking out of the openings. Once again, it took all of Sunset's energy to not comment. Following Applejack along the table was Fluttershy. Her hair was tucked into the hoodie over her head, lined with thick tufts of pink fuzz resembling a lion's mane. She had a long-sleeved cream shirt on with gloves in the shape of paws attached to the ends that she could slip her hands in and out of, and a tail stuck out the back of her furred pants. Rainbow sat next to her. Her outfit consisted of a black blazer with matching pants and cape. Completing the look was a top hat that still managed to complement her multi-chromatic hair. Out of everyone, Sunset found Rainbow's choice to be Oz the oddest, though she supposed that no one else in the story fitted very well and it wasn't as, as if Trixie was going to be joining them any time soon. Looking over to her table, Sunset saw that she hadn't even bothered to dress up. Next was Rarity, sporting a sparkling white dress that shone in multiple colors when it caught the light. A small tiara sat on her head, and she had a wand strapped to her waist. Rounding off the table was Pinky, stuffing her face with pumpkin pie. Applejack! Pinky said, spraying crumbs all across the table. You promised you'd bring more pie to the sleepover, right? Applejack chuckled. <laughs> Don't worry, Pinky. Granny Smith made an extra pod just for you. Oh, boy! Pinky lifted her plate to her face, licking it clean before setting it aside. Her expression became serious, and she reached under the table to pull up a large sheet of paper. Unrolling it across the surface, Sunset recognized it as an outline of the local neighborhoods. Pinky uncapped a red pen and drew a circle around one of the houses. All right, here's the game plan, girls. We start from my house, then we move up along West Oak and make a left onto Crescent. Her hand traced the determined path, dyeing the street with red, red with ink, and marking several houses with dots. In the past years, these houses give out really good candy. Oh, and Mr. Dozer over here always gives out king-size candy bars, but they go super quick, so if you want one, you'll have to run ahead with me. After that, we'll... Sunset eased back against her chair, tuning Pinky out and closing her eyes for a moment. There was that feeling again, warm and tingly. She recalled something similar when she had worked at the animal shelter with Fluttershy. Sunset didn't bother to try and deny she was enjoying it. Yet, she still found most of the girls at the table annoying in some way or another. But perhaps she needed annoying right now. Something. Anything to distract her from her constant string of nightmares. And then we'll come back to my house and count up our hall, and then we'll play games, eat candy, tell spooky stories, and play Monopoly! Pinky, we'll be up until sunrise playing Monopoly, Rainbow whined. That's what you think, Pinky said shrewdly, a glint in her eye. Sunset opened her eyes as the thought dawned at her. She frowned her brow in concentration, trying to remember if what she thought could be true. Twilight leaned into her peripheral. What's wrong, Sunset? Sunset looked at her head. Nothing. I just realized this is my first sleepover. You've never been to a sleepover? Rainbow covered her mouth, snickering uncontrollably. <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Rainbow, don't laugh, Pinky exclaimed. This is a serious matter. She grabbed Sunset's shoulders and looked her in the eye. Don't worry. Now I, Pinky, promise that you will have the best time ever. Cross my heart, hope to die, stick a needle in my eye. What kind of promise is that? Sunset asked, giving Pinky, Pinky an outlandish look. The kind of promise that can't be broken, Pinky said proudly. Three loud gongs singled, signaled the end of lunch, and everyone began to hastily shove candy into their backpacks. The seven girls got up, discarded their lunch trays, and headed out down the hallway, breaking off into their respective classrooms. Remember! Five o'clock my house! Pinky called. And don't worry, Sunset! I'll have a sleeping bag for you! Sunset gave Pinky a simple thumbs up before following Twilight into their advanced trigonometry class. It was a small class size, consisting of only ten other students besides themselves. They seated themselves at the front of the class, and, like usual, Twilight went into what Sunset liked to call absolute focus mode, where she managed to block out everything but the teacher. Not that Sunset ever complained. Pulling out her notebook and pencil, Sunset heard Twilight whisper, 
really like your costume. Sunset <laughs> smirked in surprise. Oh, so she can speak in class. This is news to me. Twilight's cheeks burned red, and she looked forward at the blackboard. Sorry, I just get so caught up in learning. Nerd, Sunset said out of the corner of her mouth. Oddly enough, this got a giggle out of Twilight. All right, now settle down, class, Miss Vector said sternly, scraping the chalk against the board. I don't care if it is Halloween. We still have a lot to cover. Sunset began her dubious scribble of notes, only half paying attention to what was being said. A quick glance over at Twilight showed she was doing the exact opposite, completely enraptured by every word. <laughs> Sunset shook her head in amusement. Not that it matters, she said softly, but I like your costume too, Twilight. For the first time in forever, Sunset found herself actually looking forward to something other than sleeping after her detention session. She swept up the rampant amount of candy wrappers littering the hall, imagining what trick-or-treating would be like or how the sleepover would go. It was more out of curiosity than excitement, Sunset would tell herself, but like with the small feeling of warmth she found sitting next to the others, part of her couldn't deny that she was just a little excited. Just a little. Boo! Ah! Ugh! Sunset jumped a yard back, dropping the broom with a clang. She placed a hand over her chest to still her pounding heart and glared up at her laughing, laughing tormentor. Miss Luna, what the heck? <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Shimmer. Luna smiled at Sunset, her face obscured by an odd blue helm matching the rest of her armored attire. But I saw you were alone and couldn't resist scaring one more student before leaving. I'm surprised at how far you jumped. That's because you nearly gave me a heart attack. Luna airily waved a hand. Listen up, Miss Shimmer. Life is no fun without a good scare. Besides, it's Halloween. You should be expecting such things. She turned, flourishing her cape as she walked away. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Miss Shimmer, <laughs> she said in a ghoulish voice. Sunset glowered in her direction as she picked up the broom again. She wasn't scared. She had just been surprised. I apologize about my sister. Sunset jumped again at the voice behind her. She always takes a shine to this holiday. Sunset, Sunset turned and faced Celestia. She was wearing a slim white dress with a golden tiara on her head. She resembled her pony princess counterpart more than ever. Yeah, I noticed, Sunset said sourly. She returned to sweeping, use a bit, using a bit more aggression to push the broom. Nice costume, by the way. You know, with that tone, I can't tell if you're being sarcastic. Celestia said testily. Sunset softened her voice a little. I mean, it's a nice costume. It suits you. Oh, well, thank you. I like your costume too, Tin Girl. The silver really brings out your eyes. A faint blush rose to Sunset's cheeks. It had been a long time since she had heard it of any sort of praise from Celestia. Thank you, she murmured. Celestia walked around her and picked up a stray piece of paper, tossing it into a nearby trash can. I think I've kept you here long enough. I'd hate to ruin any plans you have for the evening. Sunset leaned on her broom. You know, for the lady who's supposed to be punishing me, you're awfully lenient half the time. Oh, well, if that's how you feel, I could always just contact the authorities and- Did I ever mention that I just love how kind and gracious you are? Not to mention so forgiving and understanding. Celestia smiled in satisfaction. Run along now, Sunset. I'm sure you've had much better things to be doing today. Just try to stay out of trouble. No promises, Sunset said, briskly walking for the exit. Outside, the evening air was cool and crisp. While Sunset was grateful to be wearing a long-sleeved attire, she pined for her leather jacket and the extra warmth it provided, regardless of the multiple tears in it. She thought about it, sitting on her mattress in its forlorn state, and sighed. Here you are, dear, Rarity said, folding the silver shirt and placing it on top of the jeans being held in Sunset's arms. Everyone is going to love it, but are you sure you won't consider painting your face to complete the look? I'm positive, Sunset said flatly. She wanted to dress up, not look like a circus clown. Rarity placed the silver cap on top of the shirt. Suit yourself. Either way, you're going to look stunning. Sunset managed to smile. Thanks, Rarity. And listen, I don't have much money right now, but whatever I owe you... Money? <laughs> Rarity broke into a fit of laughs. Don't be silly, Sunset. You don't owe me anything. This was a gift from one friend to another. Oh, uh, well... Sunset shifted her shoulders, focusing her gaze on a particularly interesting piece of carpet. Th thanks, but I don't have anything to give back. 
that's how this works, right? Rarity gave her a bemused smile. No, Sunset, you don't have to give me anything. Friends give each other things not because they have to, but because they want to. I won't hold this over your head and blackmail you with it. Sunset made a tiny growl in the back of her throat. Rarity's face looked sincere, but she couldn't help but feel that had it been a tiny jab at her own past practices. Regardless, she nodded her head in thanks and began to walk out the door, pausing in the threshold. Um, Rarity, do you think is possible for you to fix... She looked over her shoulder and saw Rarity shake her head. I'm sorry, dear, I don't work with real leather. Very expensive and not really in my skill range, and I'd hate to think what flutters I would say if I did dabble. Oh, was all Sunset could muster herself to say. But I could make you a new jacket, Rarity said hopefully. I have plenty of designs you could pick from. Sunset shook her head. No thanks, you've done a lot already. I feel like I owe you as it is. Rarity clicked her tongue in, in disappointment. Well, very well, if you change your mind, you know where to find me. Sunset unceremoniously dumped the contents of her backpack onto the bed next to her jacket before restuffing it with pajamas, a spare change of clothes, and her toothbrush. She turned to check herself in the mirror, frowning when she saw the fractured glass and her 100 broken reflections. <sighs> Guess I'm using the bathroom mirror from now on. She looked around the room one last time, making sure she had everything, then slung her backpack over her shoulder. As Sunset put her hand over the light switch, she looked back and asked, Aren't you going to say something? No, just try to have fun. And I mean, actually try, Twilight Sparkle urged. No promises, Sunset said half-jokingly. She flipped the lights off and shut the door and headed downstairs. Fun or not, it'll be nice getting out of my own head for a while. Sunset quickly checked herself over in the mirror, adding a little more makeup to the bags under her eyes. When they were a little less notable, she departed from the factory, grabbing her helmet as she walked out the door. She rode back across town to the edge of the suburbs where some of the older houses sat. Parents were taking the younger kids on their rounds for candy while the sun dipped beneath the horizon. Pinky's house was... odd. Odd in the sense that it was completely normal. Sunset had been expecting some bright, bubblegum pink house with pinwheels sticking out everywhere or rooms in the shape of a cupcake or something strange. Instead, it was a dull, gray, two-story house with a patio that looked like it had seen better days. Sunset dismounted from her motorcycle and walked up the stone pathway. On both sides of her, smooth gravel was laid out in decorative patterns, while large gray rocks sat scattered about. A rock garden? Sunset mused herself. Sure, it was weird, but it wasn't pinky weird. Sunset would have thought it to be incredibly dull by her standards. She walked up the patio steps, the old splintered wood creaking under her weight. Sunset was afraid it might snap under her. The only decoration on the porch was also the sole piece of evidence Sunset had that Pinky lived here. It was paper mache ghost hanging from a wire. It had co it had a comically drawn face that made it look more silly than frightening. Other than that, there was a small sign on the door that said, We have candy. Sunset rapped on the door, bracing herself for whatever trap Pinky was trying to lure her into. For all Sunset knew, Pinky was trying to get her to lower her guard and get a good scare out of her. Once again, Sunset was taken by surprise in the way she least expected. When the door opened, she was not greeted with a suffocating bear hug, a shower of confetti, or even an ear-splitting hi! On the contrary, standing in the doorway was a girl Sunset thought was the complete antithesis of Pinky by Aura alone. She had gray skin, straight purple hair, and was wearing the simplest frock Sunset had ever seen. Her very expression, if one could call it that, was that of total disinterest. May I help you? Like the rest of her, her voice was devoid of feeling. Yes, uh, Pinkie Pie. She does live here, right? The girl nodded slowly. Wait here. The door swung closed with a horrible squeak, and Sunset was left alone on the porch for several minutes. She had started to think that the girl had forgotten to get Pinky or was playing some kind of joke. Just as Sunset was about to knock again, the door burst open and Pinky grabbed her by the arm and pulled her inside. Pinky squealed, jumping up and down with the arm still interlocked with Sunset. You came! You came! And you're the first one here! You must have been really looking forward to this! We're gonna have so much fun! Pinky, first tell me, who was that girl that sucked the life out of me? 
Sunset yanked her arm back and rolled her shoulder. Oh, you mean Ma? She's my big sister. Isn't she cool? Sunset winced at what was coming next. No, she isn't. I'm sorry, Pinky. I didn't- Aw, it's okay. Pinky smiled fondly. It takes a while to get through to her shell, but once you do, she's really awesome. She's kind of like you, actually. Great. I've been compared to practically a rock now. Life is good. Sunset pushed past the remark and observed the spacious room they were in. So, this is where you live? All the furniture, not that there had been much to begin with, had been pushed to the white walls which were mostly bare save for a few family portraits. A long table sat next to the window with bags of chips, punch, and pizzas spread out over the top. Next to it were two large speakers with a disco ball hanging over them. Pinky jumped and spun around in the large open area. Yep! And tonight we have it all to ourselves! My mom and dad took my little sisters out for the night. Mom's just here to look after me. Pinky, you're 17. You don't need... Sunset blinked. Never mind, you do. The doorbell rang, and Pinky bounded over and flung the door open, revealing Oz and the Cowardly Lion. Both of them stepped inside, sleeping bags tucked under their arms and backpacks slung over their shoulders. Man, how long has it been since we had a sleepover? Rainbow Dash said. She tossed her stuff into a corner and headed for the snack table. Forever! That's why this one is going to be super awesome! Pinky gasped and ran up the stairs. I almost forgot! She returned to the balcony and tossed something over. Here, Sunset! Sunset quickly stuck her arms out and caught it. Upon further examination, she found it was a rather dusty sleeping bag, and... It was pink. She stuck her tongue out and tossed it in the corner next to Rainbow and Fluttershy's things. Thanks, Pinky, she said begrudgingly. Rarity was next to join them, followed shortly by Applejack with a pie in hand, and lastly, Twilight, who came with Spike huddled in her arms. Rarity instantly went over to gush at him, practically snatching the dog from Twilight. Spike didn't seem to mind at all. Everyone grabbed a quick bite to eat before pulling out pillowcases and flashlights and lining up in front of the door. Pinky marched in front of them, wearing her serious face again. All right, ladies, it's the time of- it's that time of year again! The one day we brave the horrors of the night and search for the sweetest of treats the neighborhood has to offer. It will be a dark, perilous journey filled with unspeakable horrors, teeming with nightmares, brimming with- Pinky, if you don't hurry up, we won't get any candy, Rainbow said, tapping her foot and scowling. Whoops! Sorry! Right then, on with the hunt! She threw the door open and pointed out with her scepter. Forward march! They spilled out into the settling sun, their shadows lengthened by the last of the light of the sun. Sunset stepped out of the house last and found a miniature jack-o'-lantern dangling in her face. Here, Sunset! Pinky shook the plastic container. Now you can get some candy, too! Pinky, I'm not interested in getting candy. I told you that. Pinky rattled the pumpkin again. You know you want to! Sunset snatched the handle. One house. Satisfied, Pinky skipped ahead singing, Ease on down, ease on down the road, come on now, ease on down, ease on down the road. Even as she shook her head in disbelief, Sunset felt the corners of her mouth twitch. One house quickly turned into three, then five, then ten. If only because every time they went up to the door, someone made sure to drag Sunset up with them, preventing her from hiding in the shadows. She was surprised at how quickly her candy pail could fill up. Then again, no one seemed particularly stingy about dishing out candy. By the time they had completed the first block, night had fallen completely, and the streets had been left to the older kids and rowdy teens. Laughter and shrieks of both fear and delight permeated the air. Flashlights and even a few sparklers lit the streets better than many of the lampposts. Myths and monsters, ghouls and ghosts, heroes and vi villains all marched up and down the street with bags of candy in hand. Along with the journey, the girls of the Spectacular Seven ran into many of their classmates. Colgate was dressed as the Tooth Fairy. Rose Luck has, had gone as Medusa. They even ran into Derby, wearing tattered clothes and a paper bag on top of her head. I'm a hobo, she said cheerfully. After what Sunset had estimated to be around their 20th house, house, she had begun to discreetly tip some of her candy into other bags. Her own pail had begun to feel like an iron weight. On a few occasions, she had decided to sample some pieces, having never bothered to try the squirrel's candy before. To her surprise, she found the lemon drops delightfully tasty. She stepped in front of the next house, decorated with a string of orange lights in the bushes. Sunset couldn't be sure in the dark, but the house seemed familiar. Something prodded her shoulder. Go on, Tin Girl! You ring the bell this time! Pinky said encouragingly. Do I have to? It's, it's part of the experience, dear. Be a good sport, Rarity said. 
Sunset humped and marched up the path, everyone else trailing right behind her. She does the she buzzed the doorbell, stuck her pumpkin out, and bowed her head in embarrassment. Trick or treat, she muttered when she heard the door open. Sunset? She snapped her head up at the familiar voice and narrowed her eyes. Oh, great. It's you. Jeez, how could I not recognize this house? I've only been here a hundred times. Oops. Awkward. Pinky whispered behind her. Flash stared at Sunset with an equal amount of disfavor. I thought you weren't into Halloween. I'm allowed to change my mind, Sunset said icily. Flash looked away, dropping a single piece of candy into her, pal into her pail. Well... Your costume looks... nice? Thanks. They both stood frozen in their positions. Sunset glared at him as hard as she could, while Flash kept his stoic face pointed in the other direction. Sunset gave up, resisting the urge to give him a good kick in the shins, and stomped off the porch, letting the others line up to receive candy. Back on the sidewalk, she fished around in her store of candy for another sour ball. She found the yellow ball and popped it into her mouth, clenching it between her molars while she listened to Flash make pleasant conversation with the other girls. Happy Halloween, Flash! Pinky waved back as she approached Sunset a minute later. Sunset jabbed a finger at her. You did that on purpose! Pinky threw her hands up in defense. I didn't! Honest! I forgot this was Flash's house! Sunset puckered her face, and not because the sour ball was getting to her. Whatever. Let's just go. The Spectacular Seven continued their walk, running into more familiar faces and even making a stop at Shirley's house where they had received both a holiday pop quiz and oversized candy bars. Have a good time, girls, and don't stay out too late, she called after them. Carrying on down the street, Twilight fell into step with Sunset, who was lagging behind in the back. Come on, Sunset, you're not going to let one run in with Flash ruin your night, are you? No, of course not, Sunset snapped. She crossed her arms and gave Twilight a smug look. And you're one to talk, who is trying her hardest to avoid going on a date with him? Twilight snapped her mouth shut and turned bright red. Not fair, she mumbled. Sunset laughed, feeling better already. Perhaps it was mean, but she couldn't help it. Part of her just enjoyed seeing Twilight squirm. A scream pierced the veil of night, and the procession of friends came to a stop at what Sunset quickly assessed to be a haunted house. Tombstones and decaying body pieces littered the front yard. Cobwebs were coated around the open doorway, from which mist and a pale light poured out of. From behind a curtain covering the open garage, a young boy dressed as a knight came screaming, looking like he was on the verge of tears. Wow, Rainbow said, trying to get Fluttershy to stop clinging to her. That must be one scary house. Pinky nodded affirmatively. It's supposed to be the scariest house this side of Canterlot Park! But I heard there's super good candy inside for anyone brave enough to go in. Applejack raised an eyebrow. You've heard. Pinky rubbed the side of her head with her staff. I've, uh, never actually tried to see if the rumors were true, she grinned sheepishly. What happened to Giggle at the Ghosties? Rainbow asked, finally prying Fluttershy off. <laughs> Pinky said, her mouth conveniently full of candy. Oh, come on, it's not that scary, Sunset said. Really? Rainbow looked at her, a challenging spark in her eye. I dare you to go inside, then. Alone. Everyone gasped. Sunset shrugged. Deal. Everyone gasped again. Sunset, are you sure that's a good idea? Twilight asked, clutching her sleeve. Yes, it's just a stupid house. She wiggled her arm free. I'll be in and out. Piece of cake. She approached the house, stopping at the open front door to take a deep breath. Inside, she could hear the moans and wails of the undead. You can do it, Sunset, Fluttershy cheered. Sunset steeled herself and marched inside, quickly becoming swallowed by the fog. Cackling surrounded her on all sides while she navigated the narrow corridor that had been set up. As she turned the corner, a series of severed heads dangling on strings dropped down in front of her. She flinched, but quickly caught herself. That's not scary, that's just disgusting. She ducked underneath them and advanced to an open area where more corpses were strewn about the floor. The room was just as cold as the outside and smelled horribly rancid. Well, gotta give them points for effects. Something grabbed Sunset's ankle and she jumped back, almost losing her balance from the hand's tight grip on her. The corpse let go and slowly got to its feet, the others joining it and surrounding Sunset. Swallowing the lump in her throat, Sunset dived through the small opening in the closing circle and jogged down the next hallway the moans of zombies not too far behind. 
Sunset gave the tiniest yelp as a group of animatronic bats swooped overhead, chittering noisily. She came upon a fork in the hall with an arrow telling her to go left. Looking down the other way, she soon knew why. Stumbling towards her was a zombie in a mask, revving a chainsaw. With a small eep, Sunset ran down the adjacent corridor, her heart beginning to drum in her chest. I'm not scared. I'm not scared. I'm not- Wait a second. That chainsaw didn't have any spikes on it anyway. She slowed her running just as she entered a much darker room. The chainsaw and zombie moans vanished behind her, leaving her alone in the black abyss. Sunset squinted her eyes, just able to make out a silver bowl across from her with colorful wrappings in it. She smiled, striding across the room. Jackpot! I'll just grab a few pieces for the girls and leave. A loud sound of buzzing static disrupted the silence and made Sunset's hair stand on end. Well, of course, it could never be this easy. There was a quick flash of light before the room went dark again, but in that brief instant, Sunset saw a figure. The lights flashed again, and it appeared to be closer than last time. With Sunset able to make out most of its features, it had been tall, abnormally so, wearing what looked like a business suit. When it flashed in front of her again, Sunset jumped back, not because of how close it had gotten, but because she had found the last notable detail of it. It had no face. Sunset ran around the perimeter of the room, breaking into a sharp left when another one appeared right in front of her. She made for the bowl of candy again and froze in her tracks when she saw what was standing in front of it. Her hair billowed like fire, and her short dress blew in a non-existent wind. She spread her bat-like wings out wide, blocking the candy bowl from view, and smiled devilishly at Sunset, showing off her pointed teeth. Slowly, she extended a red claw towards Sunset. Sunset's heart nearly stopped as she stared at the demon. Yet when the lights flashed on again, she was gone without a trace. Sunset stood shivering with her arms wrapped around herself, remembering where she was only when the lights flashed, and she saw how close the faceless monsters were to her. They held no fear for her. But she had had enough of this place. She ran forward, grabbed a fistful of candy, and tore for the exit, breaking through the, through the gap in the garage curtain and stumbling outside. She did it! Sunset quickly reconstructed her impassive mask as the six girls and a dog ran towards her. She straightened up and held out her hand, showing off her sweet prizes. See? Piece of cake. I can't believe you made it all the way through, Rainbow said, snatching a piece and putting it in her bag. We didn't hear you scream or anything. Told you it wasn't that scary. Sunset distributed the candy, making sure not to make eye contact with anyone while her heart continued to pound erratically in her chest. Two more blocks and a score of houses later, the Spectacular Seven sat around in Pinky's living room, mountains of candy in front of them. They bartered and traded their hall, dining out on the sugary treats or, or the provided pizza. By the end of it, Sunset had accumulated a pile of various sour candies and a few other sweets she had found favorable. She swept them into her backpack, feeling the noticeable change in weight. When the floor was cleared of candy, Pinky zipped over and turned the lights off, save for one. It hit the disco ball and threw dazzling spots across the room. Music blared out from the speak speakers as Pinky shouted, Woohoo! Dance party! She rushed to the middle of the living room, accompanied by most of the others and even Spike, who darted between their heels. Sunset moved over to the snack table, watching them break out into ridiculous dance moves while she poured herself a cup of punch. You aren't going to join them? Twilight had materialized by her side. Nope. Sunset took a sip from her cup. I don't dance. Yeah. I'm not a very good dancer either. Sunset snorted. From what I hear, the other Twilight wasn't much better. Oh, guess we have that in common too. Sunset saw the downcast face Twilight wore and mentally chided herself. I'm sorry, Twilight. I didn't mean to compare the two of you. Twilight sighed. It's okay. I'm just being too sensitive, I guess. It's not her fault we happen to be... Is dimensional twins a good way to describe us? I don't know. Sunset drained the rest of her drink. But I do know this. With all the amazing things she can do, I'm positive she can't play the violin as well as you can. Sunset snickered again as Twilight turned red, wondering how many times she could make her blush in one day. You really mean that? Of course, I've never heard anyone. Wait, didn't I already praise you? Twilight smiled. Yes, but it means a lot coming from you. I've noticed that you tend to... dislike most things. Sunset raised an objective hand. That's not... Wait. Huh. Maybe you're right. 
Pinky reached over and grabbed both girls by the wrists. Come on, you wallflowers! I want to see you move! P Pinky, wait! Both of them protested as they were dragged onto the dance floor. Sunset found herself in a flurry of moving bodies, being pulled back in as soon as she tried to sneak away. She finally stopped resisting and surrendered herself to the music, moving and swaying in time like everyone else. And to her surprise, she found she actually enjoyed it. After a long hour of dancing, the girls sat around in a tight circle, an empty pie dish in front of them. Pinky was practically vibrating against the floor from all the sugar she had eaten thus far. Sense it, sense it, sense it, sense it, sense it, sense it, Pinky! Truth or dare? <sighs> sense it rolled her eyes. You dared me to steal some of Maud's bras last time, so I'm picking truth. Okay, then... Hmm. Oh, you remember when you said we couldn't ask you questions about Equestria? Yes, since it widened her eyes. Wait, you remember that, but you can't remember the simple rule of don't touch me? So tell us something about Equestria! Ooh, tell us about your version of Halloween! There was an excited murmur of agreement, and since it slumped over, sulking. Fine. Stupid game. She straightened up and made herself comfortable. <sighs> Alright, so- No, 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 no! You gotta tell it like a scary story! Pinky got up and turned the last light off before tossing Sunset a flashlight. See? Now you've got the right atmosphere! Pinky, I'm not- Please! Sunset flicked the light on and brought it to her face. I'll get you for this. Long, long ago, she began in a low, eerie voice. There were two royal sisters who ruled over the land of Equestria in harmony. The older sister raised the sun, while the younger one raised the moon. Wait a minute, Twilight interjected. They raised the sun and the moon? Even with magic, that's totally impossible! I'm telling a story, Sunset continued in her spooky voice. Don't interrupt me. Right, uh, sorry. Anyways, the sister raised the sun and the moon because magic works like that, and kept balance in Equestria for many generations. They're immortal, Sunset added, seeing Twilight's hand raise in the air. But over the years, the younger sister noticed how many ponies played in the day and slept through her night. She began to feel unappreciated. One morning, when it was time to raise the sun, the younger sister refused to lower the moon, claiming that her beautiful night would last forever. Sunset turned the flashlight off and plunged the room into darkness. With the power of darkness, she became a terrifying mare known as Nightmare Moon. She turned the light back on, having placed herself right in front of Fluttershy, who fell back with a loud eep! Sunset grinned wickedly. Her older sister tried to reason with her, but the younger sister refused. With no choice, the older sister was forced to use the elements of harmony to banish her only family into the heart of the moon. Sunset switched the light off again. But some say not all of her went to her prison. Nightmare Moon's shadow stalks the land, searching for ponies to snack on. She crept around with cat-like with cat tread and ran a finger down Pinky's spine, watching her shoot into the air. It's said in the dead of night she wanders into town and gobbles up small foals unless she is given an offering of something equally sweet. If she is not satisfied, Sunset leaned next to Twilight's ear, she eats you. <coughs> Twilight jumped back, tossing Spike into the air. He thankfully landed safely in Rarity's lap. Sunset fell onto the ground, holding her sides. I was wrong! <laughs> That was amazing! You should have seen some of your faces! She laughed. And that's why we have Nightmare Night. You are all for candy so Nightmare Moon doesn't come to eat you. Psh, that wasn't so scary, Rainbow said, once again trying to get Fluttershy off from around her waist. The bead of sweat running down her face told Sunset otherwise, but she was too satisfied to comment. Are you kidding? That was a great story! Pinky said from a position on the second floor balcony. Good job, Sunset! Oh, and it's your turn again! Sunset moved back into her position in the circle. With all the excitement, she had forgotten they were playing Truth or Dare. Mmm. All right, then. Rarity. Truth or Dare. Rarity tapped a finger against her cheek. I'm feeling brave right now. Dare. Sunset rubbed her hands together maliciously. She pointed to Spike. I dare you to let Spike give you a nice, wet kiss on the lips. What? But, but... Rarity looked down at Spike, who picked a good time to lick his underside. That's just so... unsanitary. Actually, dog mouths are supposed to be cleaner than humans, Twilight said factually. I seriously doubt that, Rarity grumbled. She lifted Spike up and held him at arm's length. Okay, then, just... don't get any ideas, Buster. Spike wagged his tail. 
Rarity puckered her lips and brought Spike in close. Spike immediately leaned in and fervently licked every inch of Rarity's face he could get at. Ah! He got it in my mouth! Sunset and the girls roared with laughter, while Rarity had run over the punch bowl to rinse her mouth out. Yes, yes, she said bitterly after spitting back into her cup. Laugh at my expense. But it's my turn now. Twilight! Truth or dare? Twilight took a pleased looking spike into her arms and stroked his head. Dare. Rarity groaned. Darn it, why do you keep picking dare? Oh, no reason, Twilight said aloofly. Well then, I dare you to tell us who your crush is. Twilight narrowed her eyes. That's not a proper dare. That counts as true. Does not. Does too. Does not. Does too. The sound of creaking stairs ended their argument as everyone turned their attention to the figure descending out of the darkness. Maud flipped a light and blinked once. May I have my bras back now? After returning Maud her personals, Twilight had called an end to Truth or Dare, suggesting they play a fun game like Monopoly instead. Sunset only agreed because she didn't want to hear Twilight and Rarity argue again. The game itself had only lasted an hour, ending when Sunset had gone bankrupt and lost to Pinky, who owned everything on the board. It's mine! It's all mine! Ha 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 ha! Pinky cackled maniacally, pulling the money towards her and throwing it into the air. All hail the Munchkin Queen! <laughs> Sunset slouched in her seat. Next time we're playing Risk. With Pinky rolling around on a pile of fake dollars, everyone decided it was a good time for bed. They unrolled their sleeping bags in a circular formation, with Sunset in between Rarity and Twilight, mostly to stop them from fighting again. Pinky sat on top of her sleeping bag, crossing her arms and pouting. How can you girls go to sleep at a time like this? Pinky, Rainbow said, having come out from changing in the bathroom, it's almost one in the morning. So? It's Saturday, which means we should be partying, not sleeping. Who's with me? Oh, I know, let's grab our flashlights and go play hide and seek outside. Or, or, I have cards. We can play go fish or poker. Come on, who wants to win their money back? Bring it on, plebeians, the munch queen queen is ready to... Sunset looked up from her pillow to see Pinky fast asleep, still dressed in her costume. Thank goodness, I was worried she'd go on for another hour before clocking out. She and everyone else got comfortable in their bags, leaving Pinky to snore in bliss. With a relaxing sigh, Sunset eased back into her pillow, closing her eyes. All in all, it had actually been a pretty good day. As much as she might have denied it at one point, hanging out with these girls was pretty fun. Definitely beat sitting in a factory all day. Bone-chilling cold bit into Sunset's skin, and she could see her breath with every puff of air she released as she ran. Running. Why was she always running? She turned the corner sharply, nearly tripping on the corner. She couldn't afford to fall, not if she didn't want to be caught. She kept running through the foggy corridor, swatting away spider webs and avoiding long, gnarly branches that grabbed at her. Behind her, Sunset could hear the moaning and stumbling in her wake, growing ever closer mixed in between their moans with the sound of beating wings. Come and play with me, Sunset. I'll be your best friend. Like hell you will! The air around Sunset heated up to blistering degrees. She dived to the right, narrowly avoiding the screaming blaze. She rolled across her stomach and slid down a steep hole, tumbling head over heels while familiar faces flashed in front of her. When Sunset opened her eyes again, she was standing in a grassy meadow, the sky overhead boasted an endless blue, calm and gorgeous sunlight. A lone figure stood in the distance, her arms outstretched, like she was wel like she was welcoming the warm light. Sunset stepped forward, and the sky darkened instantly with grim clouds. A heavy wind kicked up, ripping chunks of rock out of the very ground, yet both Sunset and the figure remained in place. Cackling erupted behind Sunset. Turning around, she saw an army of zombified students marching towards her, led by a shadow that sped across the ground. Sunset tore into a sprint, desperate to reach the girl in the distance like she was her only hope. As Sunset drew closer, she recognized the green skirt and flowing pink hair. Fluttershy! Sunset shouted. I'm so tired. Fluttershy's voice was soft, yet Sunset could hear it louder than any chorus. I just want to go to sleep. Maybe forever. No one can hurt me anymore. No, Fluttershy, don't! Sunset reached an arm out, but Fluttershy was still too far away. With her arms spread, Fluttershy stepped off the rocky cliff, falling into oblivion. Sunset screamed, just having reached the edge. She looked over and saw the front lawn of Canterlot High. Her zombified army stood in front of the rubble that was the remains of the entrance. 
Five girls stood in opposition to her as she floated down on her devilish wings. Stand aside, Twilight Sparkle. You've been a thorn in my side, but I'm willing to overlook that if you bow to me, Sunset hissed. We'll never bow to you, you monster! Wrong answer! Sunset lifted her claws over her head, two fireballs blinking into existence. Stop! Don't hurt them, please! Sunset begged. But this is what you wanted, Sunset. What we wanted. Power. And now it's time to show them who's really in charge. Not like this. I I, I don't want this anymore. Aw, oh, what's the matter, Sunset? Do you not want me to hurt your friends? Is that it? That's what you want to call them now, isn't it? Your friends? Leave them alone. <laughs> you miserable weakling! Watch what I do to your friends! With a menacing screech, Sunset hurled the fireballs down at the girls, watching them huddle together and cower. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Harmony will protect them. The fireball made contact, exploding in a plume of smoke and fire. They'll come out and stop me now. When the smoke cleared, it was only dust. What a shame! If they were really your friends, you would have done something to protect them. Yes, we are just a heartless monster after all. Sunset threw her head back and laughed. Her eyes snapped open and Sunset jolted upright, throwing a hand over her mouth to stop her from screaming. Or throwing up. She sat up in her sleeping bag, heaving for air, shivering and drenched in sweat. She quickly scanned the room, checking that everyone was still there, sleeping soundly. They were all accounted for, even Spike sleeping by Twilight's neck. Like a ghost, Sunset got up and slipped into the kitchen, groping around in the dark until her eyes adjusted. She fetched a cup out of the pantry and filled it with tap water. When it was full, she raised it to her lips, downing only a small sip before trembling hands dropped it into the sink with a loud clatter. She struck her hand out to stop it from making any more noise, but she was sure the damage had been done. She pressed herself against the sink, waiting for someone to come in and ask her what was wrong. After several tense seconds, where no one did, she allowed herself to breathe easy. It was only after that she heard the soft pitter-patter of paws. Something soft brushed against her foot before something wet licked it. Ugh! Spike! Sunset whispered, her voice quivering. G go back to sleep, please. Spike gave a small bark and rubbed himself against her leg affectionately. S stop it! S stop being nice to me! Sunset? The singular light over the sink momentarily blinded Sunset. When she blinked the spots out of her eyes, she found Twilight standing in front of her with concerned curiosity. Are you okay? You look pale. No, I'm not. Sunset chewed her away. F forget it. Just go back to sleep. But you just said something was wrong. Why would I leave you here? Because. Sunset bit down on her lip, trying to keep herself from bursting into tears. Her throat constricted at her hesitation, and she blurted out in a strangled cry. Because I don't deserve your sympathy. She turned from Twilight and gripped the lip of the sink until her knuckles were white. I don't. I don't deserve any of it. Tears fell like waterfalls from her face, and her shoulders shook from the force of the sho sobs she was holding in. Sunset, Twilight rested a gentle hand on her back. It's not true. Please, talk to me. What's wrong? Sunset held her breath, wanting so bad for Twilight to just leave rather than spilling out emotions to her. But as always, her enchantment proved to be stronger. I told you about that night, how I turned into a... A monster. Sunset squeezed her eyes shut. She could feel the power surging through her. The claws, the wings, the fire. All of it. I hadn't planned that. I didn't think the elements would do that to me. But part of me enjoyed it. Twilight stared at her, stared at her, her own eyes reflecting Sunset's pain. Really? Yes. No. Yes. I don't know. Sunset covered her face with her hands. It was being torn in two! I had all the power I ever wanted, but it hurt so much, and I wasn't in control anymore. I, I mean, I was, but it wasn't me. It was like watching a play I had written out. Everyone had forgotten their lines and just started improvising, but I didn't try to stop it. I wanted to see what would happen. 
I wanted to not be in control, acting on that impulse. It felt... Sunset wildly shook her head, muffling her cries behind her hands. Her legs gave out and she sank to her knees, Twilight quickly joining her while Spike continuously brushed against her tenderly. I have nightmares, Twilight! They were infrequent at first, but now they're every night! I can't sleep and I think I'm losing my mind! I keep seeing the demon everywhere now and she won't leave me alone! I don't know what to do! Do I still have to apologize? I'm sorry, alright? I'm sorry! I'm sorry for ruining so many friendships and driving everyone away! I'm sorry for the blackmail and the threats! I'm sorry for lying and stealing! I'm sorry! I'm sorry for being a monster! <laughs> Sunset, you aren't a monster, Twilight said firmly. Sunset finally lifted her head. <laughs> I've seen it, Twilight. I've seen my own heart. I picked to be the Tin Man for a reason. It's so dark. So black. I might as well not have one at all. Sunset. No, Sunset, look at me. Twilight grabbed her by the shoulders. Listen to me, Sunset. I may not have known you back when you did all those things, but I know you have a heart. No, this time you're not going to interrupt me. Stunned by her forcefulness, Sunset could only listen as Twilight spoke. Everyone has done things they aren't proud of, and sure, you may not have the best of morals until recently, but look at you now, Sunset. All the nice things you've done, all the friends you've made, even these tears proves that you're trying to change, that you're trying to be a better person. Sunset emphatically shook her head. No, 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 all, all of those things I've done, they weren't... I didn't... Sunset paused and soaked in Twilight's words. At first, she wanted to write off all those kind deeds as just circumstances she was forced into by her penance, but when she really thought about them, she hadn't been forced to be nice to Twilight when she was crying in the bathroom or practicing in the music room. And in the instances she had been forced to do something, no one had told her to enjoy it. In fact, in all three cases of the animal shelter, the mall, and even this party, Sunset could have made lives miserable if she wanted. But she hadn't. All three times she had enjoyed herself and behaved decently. Twilight smiled at her, seeing the realization in Sunset's eyes. See? You have a heart, Sunset. You just needed some friends to help you see it. Friends. Sunset remembered the vow she had made to herself. She had resolved to make friends then got into a brawl with Rainbow not an hour later. But Rainbow had called them friends afterwards. That warm feeling she had felt during lunch. Was that what friendship felt like? Had she felt it before and not noticed it until then? Friends, Sunset whispered, feeling the word on her lips. After all this time, it still felt weird to say it so genuinely. I have friends. They weren't just the girls or the others. They were her friends. They were the Spectacular Seven. Sunset threw her arms around Twilight. I, I, I have friends, she sobbed. I had them the whole time, but now they're here, in my heart. I, I've been alone so long, I've forgotten what that warm feeling was. It's so small, but it's there. Twilight returned the hug, leaning into Sunset. And we'll always be here, Sunset. I'll always be here. Thank you, Twilight. Sunset rested her head on Twilight's shoulder, her eyelids growing heavy. I'm still so tired, though. I'm still scared. Go to sleep, Sunset. I promise you won't have any nightmares this time. A small idea danced through Sunset's head. It was ludicrous at best, but maybe, just maybe it would work. Twilight, say please. What? Sunset raised her head. Ask me to go to sleep and, and to have a good dream, like it's a favor. Please do that for me. For the fifth time that day, Twilight blushed a deep red. Um, okay. Sunset, please go to sleep and dream of something nice? Like that? Sunset felt her mind grow foggy as she slumped into Twilight's arms. She closed her eyes, smiling in satisfaction. Yes, like that. 
The tin girl stood tall next to her friends as they stared down the Wicked Witch of the West. Give me those slippers, she hissed at Dorothy. No, Dorothy yelled. Her faithful dog Toto growled from his spot on her shoulder. The Wicked Witch stepped forward, flexing her claws. Then I'll just take them from you. The cowardly lion and the scarecrow stepped in front of Dorothy, holding their arms out. You'll have to get up through us first, the lion said. Very well, that can be easily arranged. A ball of fire appeared in the witch's hand, and she hurled it at the girls. Duck! the scarecrow shouted, tackling her friends to the ground. The tin girl got up first and saw the wicked witch making another fireball. Not too far from her was an unassuming bucket of water. The tin girl ran over and grabbed it. Hey, witch! The wicked witch spun around. What? Are you going to stand there again, cowering while I destroy your friends? Sunset shook her head, staring the demon in the eyes. No, because I'm not scared of you anymore. She threw the contents of the bucket at the witch, watching her scream as she dissolved onto the floor. No! I'm melting! I'm melting! Ah! Dorothy rushed over and hugged the tin girl. You did it! I knew you could do it! You saved all of Oz! Ding dong! The witch is dead! The witch is dead! Hooray! The munchkin queen sang, dancing around the group. All right, now where's that Oz wizard? The tin girl asked. I believe she owes us some things. There was a rainbow puff of smoke, and the mighty Oz appeared, coughing and waving the cloud away. <coughs> Too much magic dust. She looked around the throne room. Wow, you actually beat the witch. I'm, I was betting that you'd lose. The tin girl crossed her arms. Well, we didn't, so hand over that heart you promised. And I'd like some brains, please, the scarecrow said. And, um, some courage. Um, if you don't mind, that is, the lion added. Oz wrung her hands together, sweat gathering on her brow. Uh, yeah, about that. Seems I've run out of magic for the day, so you'll have to come back later when I've stocked up. Dorothy narrowed her eyes. What do you mean you've run out of magic? You're Oz, the great and powerful. You can do anything, right? Hmm, actually, if you can do anything, why didn't you beat the witch yourself? All right, you fine, you caught me, Oz said, throwing her hands up. I'm not really an all-powerful wizard. She reached behind her neck and pulled a zipper, revealing herself to be Trixie. Trixie is just a stage magician, a great and powerful stage magician, but still, I only know simple tricks. Everyone stared at her with open mouths. So, you lied to us? the scarecrow asked. Lying is such a harsh word, Tw uh, Trixie said, twiddling her fingers. Trixie would think of it more as... Conning us, Dorothy said heatedly. Well, that makes it sound worse. The lion fell back on her rump, looking like she was on the verge of tears. So we did all that for nothing? Of course not, darling, a heavenly voice sang from the ceiling, descended the good witch of the north, Glinda. You helped save the entire land. That alone should be commended. But all's lied to us, the scarecrow said dejectedly. How are we supposed to get the things we need now? Darlings, don't you see? You've had those things all along, she pointed at the scarecrow. You were smart enough to duck when the witch attacked you, she moved to the line. You were willing to defend Dorothy to the death, if necessary. She looked lastly at the tin girl, and you stood up to face her for the sake of your friends. Wow, I guess you're right, the tin girl said. She placed a hand over her metal chest. You can feel something warm beating inside. See? Twilight smiled at Sunset. I told you there was a heart in there. Sunset fluttered her eyes open, warm sun hitting her cheek. Even with the morning grogginess clouding her senses, she could tell something was different. She actually felt rested. That had been the best sleep she had gotten in weeks. Her eyes shrank to pinpricks when she realized where she had fallen asleep. Her face rested against Twilight's chest. Her arms were wrapped around her middle. Likewise, Twilight was resting on top of Sunset's head, holding Sunset close. Ah! Sunset threw herself away from Twilight and scrambled to her feet. What were you doing? Sunset demanded. Twilight rubbed her head, having bumped it on the floor tile. I was sleeping, she said warily. No, I mean, why were we sitting like that? What, you don't remember last night? Yes, I, I do. Even as she said, the memories of her tearful encounter with Twilight resurfaced in her mind. Right. Sunset felt her own cheeks heat up. About that. 
It's okay, Twilight said, an equally red blush on her face. I won't tell anyone. Thanks. They stood apart in the kitchen, pretending to be distracted by various objects. Sunset was deeply interested by the microwave, while Twilight focused on the coffee machine. So, Twilight broke the silence. Did you have a nice dream? Yeah. It was the best sleep I got in a while. That's good. Um, we should head back to the other room. Y you know, before anyone gets any ideas. Twilight laughed and pulled out her ponytail. Yeah, we certainly don't want that. <laughs> Sunset led Twilight back to the living room, pausing when she saw everyone was still asleep. She spun around and gave Twilight one more hug. Thank you. Twilight had been caught off guard, but quickly recovered and said, You're welcome. Maud watched the whole spectacle from her seat at the kitchen table. She blinked slowly, chewing her cereal. What an interesting display of affection. Hi everybody, Vera Chan here. I'd like to end this chapter on a little postscript here. I wanted to send a shout out to Albino Corn for making this chapter an hour long. Jiminy Crickets. I don't know how long it took you to write it, but it's an hour long in recording. And trying to record it was a nightmare. <laughs> So thank you, Albino Corn. I hope I did justice to such an important scene. And uh, I'll see all of you in the next chapter. Ciao, bello!